challenges in real situations, helping students to understand how architecture can play an important role in shaping the way communities live. The drawing board is all about collaboration, excellence, and friendship. This initiative was conceptualized by Sanjay Mohe sir, partner at Mindspace, and Suhas Lunkat sir, chairman and managing director of Rohan Builders. Both of them are amongst us today. Shweta and her team from Mindspace and Rucha Lunkat and her team from Rohan Builders have converted their vision into an awesome event and bringing together so many stakeholders of this industry on one platform. The drawing board has grown from strength to strength over the years. We started with about 700 registrations from only Pune region in the first edition to almost 2,800 registrations from 24 countries and over 55 cities of India in this edition, making this one of the most sought after competitions in every architecture student's calendar. Thanks to the support of our partners and associates, not to mention the eminent jury with Professor uh, Durganan Balsavkar, architect Henry Comrie, and architect Sachin Akshikar raising us this year as the jury. We will have presentations by all of them, adding layers of value to the participants and making this competition a repository of knowledge. Even just listening to the comments given by the jury to each finalist in itself is a great learning for everyone here. Just to brief you on the process, the competition is held in two stages. In the first stage, the drawing board announces an open call for entries with a set design brief and problem statement. We encourage practitioners, alumni, academicians to assume the role of mentors for the participating students. At the end of the first stage, an evaluation is held over a two to three day process to carefully go through and deliberate on the appropriateness and the credibility of the submitted entries. The selection panel does not have the names, the college names or which city they come from when they are shortlisting at this stage, making it a completely unbiased process. A shortlist of eight teams is then announced and invited for a presentation to the jury, which is why we have all gathered here today. And from this, we will have our top three winners by the end of the day. I want once again thank all of you for joining us today. Let's begin. I would like to call upon the host for the day, dear Dost, architect, Professor Mahesh Bangar sir, to please take stage and begin the proceedings for the day. Over to you, Mahesh sir. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I would uh, really hope uh, we uh, have a wonderful day and uh, enjoy this process. So welcome to the most important segment of this competition, that is the jury day and the master class that is going to start soon. And uh, under the drawing board banner, this is the seventh edition, like Abhishek mentioned, and it is a pleasure being a part of hosting the fifth one now uh, and the third in person at BNCA. Uh, on behalf of uh, Team TDB, I would like to uh, uh, formally welcome you and tell, uh, give away some instructions so that uh, we are all on the same ground while we go through the proceedings of the day. We'll have a question and answer session at the end of the day. Uh, after all the uh, three presentations are done, we will have one session and another question and answer session after the presentations of the students are done. But I'll come to that uh, after uh, about 11.30 maybe. Uh, we would appreciate that the audience remains with us uh, all throughout the day, uh, enjoying the proceedings of the day and uh, learning and absorbing what is being shown, presented by not just our masterclass architects, but also uh, the students who have made it to the top eight amongst so many hundreds of entries across 25 countries. Uh, and uh, we've ha we've, we have a team that has qualified from Poland as well. And to tell you that uh, the TDB received uh, more than 1,200 registrations this year, which is uh, quite, uh, quite an achievement, I think deserves a round of applause. Uh, 
25 countries is you no know, mean task to reach out to so many countries also is a big achievement um i'm go not going to take away much time right now because uh, we we are here for one um, main segment of our day uh, is the uh, master class by the architects but i thought i would just uh, brief you about the past editions of uh, tdb a little and also tell you about our uh, uh, partners for tdb uh, over the uh, this year and over the last few years as well uh, in the last six editions uh, students have gone through some uh, uh, interesting design processes in terms of radically answering uh, real life challenges uh, this year we made a difference we didn't directly choose a real life scenario or a site we looked at uh, celebrating the legacy of uh, uh, late architect charles coria i'll be briefing about the design brief to you just before the student presentations but uh, it's it's a journey that started in 2016 with uh, first edition that was organized in two, uh, 2016 at uh, uh, offline event and there have been so far five, 59 finalists and uh, 18 uh final winners uh, at the uh, seven uh, three teams each year in the six editions so far and this is where we are at the seventh edition about the partners uh, i think uh, we cannot do without having support of uh, partners no no event becomes successful stand alone and uh, for each partner to come together and celebrate as a team uh, and perform like one uh, it needs uh, a synergy that only mind space and rowan builders could build i have seen it growing over the years now uh, we were at a small gathering yesterday and i realized how highly everybody talks about the drawing board competition reaching the stature that it has reached in just 6 years of its existence and consistently receiving those many number of registrations those many number of uh, entries and then uh, that sort of representation across the country and the, from the globe i think uh, the ecosystem partners have done their job wonderfully well in terms of reaching out to people uh, so team tdb is thankful uh, to each of the ecosystem partners uh, matter from goa has been our partner who has helped us come up with a wonderful coffee table book uh, uh, of the past six editions and i'm sure they've been sent out to colleges principals architects and uh, they've received uh, they've received great reviews as well as uh, i would also like to thank the partners for uh, this year's edition of uh, the drawing board competition uh, amazing architecture world architecture community arts and skills audio gyan um, archi voice competition archi uh, livadis anuj is here uh, anuj and his team is uh, here uh, they make some wonderful comics and storytelling for us and uh, of course uh, i would also like to put on record uh, uh, bnc as venue partners uh, uh rucha has been a product of uh, bnc she has uh, studied her architecture here and uh, bnc takes pleasure in being the venue partners for uh, the tdb uh, 2022 now uh, in our past editions we've received great support uh, from intact pune chapter uh, prayash print uh, we also have campus times media with us today uh design pataki 24 adp venus traders and so many of our well wishers last year we had mashal ngo uh working closely for us uh, for the brief uh we wish to receive same wonderful support from all our media partners and ecosystem partners uh the industry tie ups ac academic institutes and individuals as well in our future editions too so thank you everyone uh just to brief you of the flow of the day we have uh, uh, the first presentation by architect sachin akshikar uh and will be followed by a presentation by professor durganand balsawar and will be followed by presentation by henry combri so without further ado i'll introduce to you our first speaker of the day sachin akshikar studied architecture from sir jj college of architecture university of mumbai now mumbai then bombay and was awarded the gold medal in 1991 for his final year design thesis before setting up his own practice in 1999 he worked with architect charles coria for 8 years that's where his uh, primitive formative years of uh, architectural design decision making come from he further worked as an associate uh, to charles coria on the cancer research center in lisbon Uh, the r&d center for mahindra and mahindra and the extension to the kala academy and of course now the ayuka 
So I welcome you, Sachin, and the stage is yours. Round of applause, guys. Just have a few more instructions to give. Uh, we are streaming this uh, entire event live, and uh, it's available on the YouTube channel of uh, Rohan Builders. Uh, I'll share the links with uh, everyone, and also the uh, student volunteers. Also, we have a student choice award uh, for the rather the audience choice award uh, at the uh, end of the day, which will be declared uh, at about uh, during the valedictory ceremony. Uh, don't forget to log on to the drawingboard.in and vote for the one you think uh, deserves to get this uh, uh, audience choice award. So uh, I will uh, put, again read out the link. It's the drawingboard.in where you can vote for the audience choice award. And lastly, don't forget to visit the social media pages of uh, the drawing board and also our ecosystem partners. Thank you very much. Over to you, Sachin. Can we have the presentation? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Rowan Builders and Mindspace, for inviting me today. And it's a real honor for me to share the stage with uh, Henry and Durgan. Um, yeah. So, whenever I'm designing a building or a project, uh, I always uh, focus on scale because I feel or I believe that uh, scale is something which a lay person can understand. You know, basically a human brain is tuned to understand the height or width or the depth. So scale becomes a very important part of architecture. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is a project where I had no control on the, the width of the building or the height of the building and it was right in the middle of a city. And it was also one of my first projects. So, you know, it was just heading towards disaster. And uh, the only way to save this project was by creating an optical illusion. Uh, and that is why I'm calling this uh, talk uh, architecture and optical illusion. Um, it is, it was, uh, the project is a municipal market in uh, Panjim, Goa. It was um, initiated uh, by uh, the chief minister of Goa, uh, Mr. Parikar. And uh, the project was given to uh, uh, a firm called Frishman Prabhu, who were basically uh, an engineering firm and they were doing a lot of infrastructure projects for the government. So they had a very small team of architects and uh, which they thought was not enough. So they asked me if I could help them with the project. Uh, I had never done a, designed a market before and uh, I had not even been to a market before. But I thought it wasn't a difficult project, so I, of course, agreed. So uh, uh, the idea was to uh, demolish uh, an existing market and then give them more space and proper space, uh, a proper building. Um, so the existing market looked like uh, this, which is on the left over here. Okay. So the existing market was something like this, which was a ground story structure and um, uh, you know it wasn't looking too big. But I had no idea that uh, it was just sprawling all over like a slum. And this is the view from the top. So from outside, you can't make out that there were around 1,000 people sitting inside selling all kinds of stuff. I mean, they were sitting in the corridors, the veranda. They had, there were some shops also. And it wasn't just vegetables. They were selling everything. So basically, we had to rehouse them. And um, the go so this, this is the plot, which the orange one is the existing plot where that whole market was. And uh, the government gave us uh, an, a similar size plot on the left hand side and uh, another some more space on the back. And uh, this was a road, which was an internal road. And there was a uh, sort of a main road on this side. And there was this lane which was connecting the two. 
and the bus stand and everything was on this side. So people used to walk through this uh, lane, but uh, the government said that, okay, you can take over the entire plot and you know, we'll just block this. And the idea was to build phase one over here, uh, shift these people over here, and then demolish the market and build phase two, and then later on phase three, which never got built. But the phase one and two were basically for the uh, vegetable market, and phase three was meant for fish market. So, uh, so when I started working on it, I thought, uh, you know, we cannot ignore that lane which we, which the government said we could uh, just take over because uh, it was some sort of a shortcut for people to cross over before they go to the bus stand. So I had made up my mind that I would allow people to walk through the market, you know, and uh, in a way it would have helped because b before they go home, I mean, they could buy some vegetables and then catch the bus and go home. So it seemed to work. Uh, so that was my initial idea. And having seen the amount of site area which we had, I mean, the additional area, I thought, my initial thoughts were like, this would be a nice ground story structure with, you know, a few courtyards and it would be a nice experience to walk in and all that. But we, when we did the vendor count and we realized that there were around 1,200 people inside and uh, we also had to provide most, you know, additional uh, shops and spa uh, uh, platform spaces uh, to add more people and uh, giving them proper aisles and proper platforms and uh, again the leaving setbacks, uh, loading, unloading, substation. Um, rickshaw stand, all those things when they were all added, I realized that not only I need the entire footprint of the building, forget the courtyards, I also had to go one floor higher. Now imagine this is a, this is a public building, a vegetable market where there are no escalators, it's, you know, it's a very uh, a simple building. Um, and uh, nobody likes to climb up to the first floor, but we were forced to go one floor higher. So, uh, and there was no way we could, you know, reduce the numbers because everybody had to give, give in proper space. Like, you know, how you have in the slums, whoever has occupied space has to be given space, prop a proper space. So, so we had to accommodate everyone. So, uh, keeping this, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, keeping the, uh, this uh, arrow, which was a shortcut in mind, I thought we'll create a central aisle which could help people to walk over. And uh, we decided that we should keep the perishable goods, which are like the vegetables and all, uh, you know, on the lower level, which is the ground floor. And the non-perishable, like the plastic or steel and all those stuff could be on the first floor. And uh, we reluctantly, of course, uh, uh, agreed to use the first floor because we had no choice. And then we placed the shops around uh, the boundary with an arcade all around. So the orange squares are the shops, proper shops. And uh, this central space was left open for the platforms. Now, uh, the problem had not ended over here. The existing shops had a mezzanine floor not shifting. Yeah, can somebody? Yeah. Okay, this, the existing shops had a mezzanine floor which had a proper headroom. So the existing shops, I mean, uh, I mean, I thought were actually three meters, and I thought maybe climbing up three meters wasn't so difficult, uh, since we were moving some of the shops upstairs. But the existing shops had a mezzanine floor which had proper clear height of 
another two and a half meters, which means my first floor had gone up by almost two floors. So my fear of climbing one floor was, you know, aggravated and we, we were so people are supposed to climb two floors now, which was not going to happen. And on top of that, my roof was going to start an, after another three meters, which means from outside, the building was going to look like a three-story building. So, so this was one major problem I thought had to be resolved because how do, how do people climb up to the first floor? And um, so the only way to do it was to, to raise the central aisle. So we, we, gradu we make people climb up gradually um, as, they, as they enter the market and they climb up by almost two meters and also the floor, the first floor was dropped down by another 600. So the gap between the ground and the first floor was reduced by, you know, on to up to 3.6 meters, which was the maximum we could have, uh, or the minimum we could have. Um, and uh, that I thought was okay, I mean, reasonably good to climb up the first floor. So this is one way to uh, resolve. I'll take you back to the plan because uh, it will just show you how it was done. So you can see over here, as you enter, there are steps, few steps going up, and some you are somewhere in between. You are, you know, almost two meters higher from the road level, and from here you get a nice view of the platforms, and you can almost decide where to go. And then you take this flight up to go to the first floor, and also to break the the length of the building, which was like almost 100 meters. Um, I tried to make them look like two separate buildings, as you can see over here so that by, by recessing this and um, giving it a different roof altogether, we have skylight over here, which, uh, you know, so it looks like an open street. And these two facades look like two separate buildings. So in a way, we had sort of managed to uh, reduce the length of the building by making them two, look like two separate buildings. And we also painted them in different colors. So the first problem about climbing up was resolved in a way by raising, it, raising the central aisle. And this is what the section looks like now, um, where you can see the staircases are going up on either side. And the first floor was recessed so that you have the entire volume you know, flowing into the second floor. It's, it, the first floor doesn't start over here. It was recessed intentionally. So the, it's a nice big volume inside. And uh, this is the skylight, which allows natural light inside. And we had asked them to keep this vacant so that, you know, it's always people would um, we'll be walking over there, but now they have encroached that space as well, uh, if you see the real, I mean, if you see the market now. But anyway, uh, so th these were the platforms. And when you're standing here, you can look down on either side and decide where to go. Uh, we also got some additional space because of the sloping roof, which they were had to, they wanted to use for uh, their own offices and stores and all that. So. I thought, okay, now that one problem of climbing was climbing up was resolved, but my next problem was the, the scale of the building from outside, from the street, and what is it going to do to the street? And there was no way I could reduce the, the height of the building. Now, if you see this, um, uh, or when I speak about scale, I mean, uh, the only way we can gauge scale is by comparing something, you know, like our mind basically compares uh, uh, let's say the door, the height of the door and the, the size of the window with the rest of the structure and then you decide whether this is a big structure or a small structure because generally you know that a door is say seven feet uh, tall or uh, a window is around four feet by four feet. So you think that okay this is, this is a small structure you know, because you're sort of comparing uh, an element which you can recognize. Now my building was looking something like this, where the height had increased and the width has also increased. So it looked like a big structure. So the only way to change this uh, was to create an optical illusion, like I said. And I thought that if I increase the size of the openings, it starts looking back like the, the sketch on the left hand side because you are comparing it with the size of the door in the window, which you are assuming is, you know, seven feet or four feet, and you then think that okay, it's proportionate, uh, or it looks like a ground, sto ground story building. And this was a trick which we tried to use in the building. So 
if you see, this is the elevation of the building, a part elevation, I mean, where I have increased the size of the openings to two meters by two meters. Those windows are like two meters by two meters. And the door on the left is like three meters in height. And the arcade is like four meters in height. So, the, I mean, this brought back the scale of a ground plus one's building. But this wasn't enough because there was a huge gap between this opening and this opening because of the mezzanine floor. You know, generally you don't have so much of gap in between. So there was something uh, to be done, something more to be done. And if you see, if you see in the buildings in Goa, I mean, generally the, all the openings have a border around it, like a white border, which is of a standard width. Uh, so I thought, okay, let's make use of that border but we will not keep it constant, we'll vary the width of the brand. So basically the intention was to reduce the gap between the openings on the lower floor and this floor. And this is how it was done. So when you see this, it automatically, you know, it has reduced the gap between the two openings, uh, also because the col color change and all that. And then it was time to stop because I thought that, okay, we have achieved maybe visually, but it has still achieved that scale of a building which had to look like a ground plus one, if not physically, but at least visually. And this was repeated all over the facade. And uh, so even though the uh, facade has just simple openings which are in a row, you know, all those openings are in straight line. I mean, because of the change in the width of the band and whatever the size of the openings, it has a nice pattern on it, and uh, this is how it looks, the building from outside. It looks like a ground plus one building, but it, uh, it, like I said, I mean, the roof starts three stories above, and this is the central aisle, the central portion, uh, where you walk in uh, to take the shortcut to go to the other side, to the bus stand. And uh, we also changed the color of the building. One is orange and the other one is red. And this is how it looks from outside. I can see the change in the bands. It's, it's really, uh, you know, it has uh, made this building look a little more exciting. Now, this is a photograph from inside and it's clicked from the first floor. Now, uh, I wasn't really worried about what's happening inside because uh, the space was beautiful. I mean, it was just rising and it was, not a, it was not affecting the street outside. In a way, it was nice that it, the volume was quite large inside and uh, probably the hot air was going up and it wasn't too hot on inside on the lower level. And uh, we have, we stopped the RCC columns up to a certain height and then we took the uh, struts, uh, metal struts to hold the trusses and we've added a few branches so it, it also looks like a tree. You can see over here. And uh, I thought it was not required to change the width of those bands again and, you know, repeat the same trick inside. I mean, it was, uh, I, I somehow liked the largeness of the space, so we kept it uh, as is. And uh, there was this huge wall, which is like 13 meters by 6 meters, which I had reserved uh, for a mural, which I thought was, uh, would be nice to, you know, to animate the space inside, because this is just a market, and uh, maybe with this mural, it would have looked a little different. And, um, and I spoke to uh, the cartoonist Mario Miranda, who, um, and asked him if he would be interested in doing a mural year and which of course he agreed and the chief man minister also agreed and he thought it was a good idea to involve him. So he uh, saw the space and this is exactly just below the staircase. I mean when you are climbing up you look towards this wall and uh, this is what he has drawn over there and uh, what happened next was quite interesting. Now the space was looking huge initially without the mural. And when this was done, suddenly the space started looking a little more intimate, a little, little you know, uh, smaller. And the reason I realized was because of the figures which he had drawn were also one and a half times bigger than the <laughs> normal human size. 
And now we were comparing the space with the height of these human beings which he had drawn. So this, uh, after seeing the effect of this mural, I requested him, uh, though it was not in his scope, the, so I asked him whether we can do another small one which was at eye level, which was on the first floor because we had a lot of space there. Uh, and I explained to him what was happening and what was done outside and he was also quite excited. So he said, yes, let's do another mural. So this is what it looks like uh, when you're climbing up the stairs. And um, then he drew this one. And this was, I mean, he knew that the figures had to be large enough. So this was done at a lower level and uh, when you climb up. So you can actually compare the height of the building with these uh, figures which are at the, the same level where you're standing. And uh, that made a lot of difference. And uh, of course, everybody was so excited that uh, he, he drew another one, <laughs> which was on the other side. So these are all complementary. And uh, so this, uh, this is why I'm calling this uh, talk as um, architecture and uh, optical illusion, because there were a lot of illusions which have been you know, uh, tricks have been played over here, which probably the Goans don't uh, realize. But uh, I thought this was probably not the best way, but at least some attempt was made to save the building from looking huge. And uh, it seems to have worked over there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Sachin. Uh, he promised me, uh, he told me uh, I wouldn't need 30 minutes, I'll finish in 20 and it's 20 minutes exactly, I'm amazed. Um, honored enough, uh, I in 2018, uh, uh, 19, uh, for a conference in uh, Goa, Professor Sharve Dongri and myself, we visited this place, we were staying right opposite the market and uh, we were amazed, we, we spoke about the project, we said wow, wonderfully, uh, uh, made and uh, a marketplace didn't look like a marketplace we absorbed the t uh, space we went around we climbed up the steps and now that when you tell us the story we realize yes it was g plus two and it was it wasn't i kept believing it was g plus one uh, until today when now i look back i realize that no the scale you actually made uh, tricked us into believing it so uh, and i'm not making this up this actually happened if sharvia sir is here he'll uh, confirm this to all of you and um, Wonderful project. Thank you so much. Uh, we uh, won't uh, stop for questions right away. Like I said, uh, we will take all questions after the end of all the three uh, talks. So I'm going to uh, move on to uh, the second presentation, Masterclass of the Day. And um, I've been uh, instructed not to read, out, uh, read the whole of the bio because it's quite illustrious and interesting. But I'll uh, try and keep it to minimum. Uh, Professor Durganand Balsavar. Uh, Grew up in Goa, graduated from SSEP, Ahmedabad, with an exchange studio at the ETH Zurich. After working in Zurich and Paris, uh, Balsavar was invited as the visiting faculty at uh, SEPT and the atelier of Professor Doshi, uh, B.V. Doshi. Balsavar has been a faculty uh, for several studios across the globe, including the studios at Bartlett, uh, Helsinki School of Architecture, involving diverse cultural contexts, He's been invited for various talks across the globe and he's founded a collaborative called as the Artist Roots Collaborative, which has been nominated as best practices for participatory housing by the UNDP, the United Nations Development Program. And um, I would request uh, Professor Balsavar to take the stage and uh, talk to us about the praxis. Thank you. Thank you everybody and uh, Sachin that was an amazing optical illusion. I think I have to travel there. Wonderful, wonderful beginning for the day. So thank you for the invitation and uh, maybe th I have to begin with saying that this is my first visit outside home after social distancing and uh, so this is the first time I am in a group with more than two people. Uh, I know the world moved ahead, but I was a little slow in catching up. 
and I have to thank uh, architect Mohe for this. I was wondering how to get back into the world. I was enjoying this whole, uh, and then I got a call from architect Mohe, and uh, <coughs> of course thank Rowan Builders, uh, Lunkerji. The the presentation. I think there's a whole thanking to be done because it was it was just simply amazing with Rowan Builders, then Mindspace, Shweta was there, Rucha, Projakta so many others all involved and to to have the f i would just say the opportunity of having sachin and uh, henry very short notice henry came down from uh, south africa we've been very close friends virtually and just met in physical now but uh, it it really looked as if we met each other for a very long time and so was also with rucha and many of the others so it's been a wonderful uh, experience. <coughs> this theme, I'll just go broad. I'm just going to say something. And if it sounds a little vague, bear with me. Uh, that's how we are taught and set. So Gandhi Ashram. Yeah, this is where I, my formative years began at set. And took some time to understand this building. It appears simple. It took some time to understand this building. And so when architect Mohe called me, and I think he mentioned that Shweta and a few others had kind of put this together, I was looking back at uh, the fact that maybe the two years of pandemic was a very, very deep inflection in human civilization itself. You know, I'll come to that a little later. Though when you land in Pune, you think you over intensified your or you've been hyper intensive because it's as if nothing happened in the last two years but from where we are even now masks are checked and e-pass and all that we've come to Pune I wonder whether there was any pandemic you know, that is how I'm looking but that's how it was but the manner in which they framed this context this initiative I don't want to call it competition uh, this initiative was that it was specific enough to give us some idea of where we want to go and yet open-ended enough for diversity of freedom. And that's how I've seen uh, architect Charles Correa's work. And I've had the good fortune of knowing him for a very long time because I was from Goa also. That there is a certain specificity, there's a certain rigor and discipline, but with that there is an open-ended freedom. You know, And I think it's a profound architecture. Each time I go back I see that it's not a frivolous something, but it's, it is, you know, built over time, there's a rigor and yet escapes the rigor. And I think that's what uh, most of his, almost all his projects convey. And I think architect Mohe, his team, Shweta and all of them managed to capture that idea in the idea of a memorial. And which is the one reason I accepted this, because there were many layers for me also to get back into the world. One was that I grew up in Goa, I'm from Goa, knew Korea well in various forums. And uh, this kind of a memorial, I, I didn't see it as a memorial per se, but it was really a question of remembrance and context. So I'll try to kindly, it's all single sentences from now on. I'm just giving a brief. So remembrance and context, it's straightforward written there. Why do we need to remember? That's how when I, I take history and studio and uh, for the last 30 years it's not separate. History is part of studio as one subject. I've taken it that way. Um, so history and studio. So I, when we talk to students we ask or why talk to ourselves first then the student overhears. Uh, why do we need to remember? Can we not forget the past? Is this not a completely new future? You know, we have metaverse, we have augmented <coughs> reality. So what really is the role of remembrance or history or heritage? So these are all questions that uh, one kind of thinks. But then you ask, what is the role of continuity? Uh, how does continuity work? Where you remember the past and yet respond to the... And I think these are areas or these are the nodes in which uh, architect Charles Correa had a very deep, he would call it the deep structure, a very deep engagement of, and yet there was 
uh, amazing humor. You know, there was always like, there was a humor in the work despite that kind of a rigor. And I think that combination is something um, <coughs> which has always drawn me back to his work. So this is the kind of landscape I grew up in. And uh, it somehow resonated with, with the design competition. And so there, is, there was the sea and the openness at one level. You just see the sea and you see the horizon. You see infinity. At another level, you are in these small towns which are looking like carved out. So you don't really see any object as architecture. You, these are carved out spaces. So suddenly the void, the public space, becomes as important, if not more important, than the building. But our education generally pushes us to think of the building, you know, building in a site, building. And so we are all the time thinking building, but I think this is my surmise. Architect Charles Curry was thinking of the void, what is not there. And in trying to make what is not there, the building would kind of come in, maybe support the system. You know, it was more, it was a complete inversion of architecture. Now, this is my interpretation and I speak whatever I want. I wouldn't request you to accept what I speak. So there is a void, you know, that architecture is the celebration of that void where nothing happens. So if you look at Jawar Kala Kendra, I see only the central courtyard. The rest I see, okay, if I have time, I would go around. It is always the void that generates that celebration. And between where I grew up, this was the street where I grew up, and <coughs> the company was, uh, of course, there were students also, but in this picture, there are only buffaloes, and you know, that was the kind of company. Uh, we would play football, and uh, and within an hour from where we went, so you can see this is this is where I am right now, again, between Chennai and Oroville, uh, a very similar landscape in certain ways. But if you see, and I think uh, Sachin's presentation in a way invoked this in, in a very, without stating it. But uh, in all my conversations with Charles Correa, I found that the breadth of, he was into art, he was listening to music, cricket commentary, because when he grew up, there was only these small radios. And if I spoke to Charles Correa about 60s and 70s cricket, there was no TV or anything. He he would remember every commentary on the uh, small transistor set that he had. So you imagine, it, it makes an architect now imagine the entire game. So you have to have a very good commentator because nothing visual. And you are listening to the radio, I, that's, what, that's how we grow up and I'm sure architect Mohan all realize that the commentary, so you start visualizing inside the mind. And painters like Shiriko had a deep impress. From here, I'm just coming to the idea of construction and material, act of making, you know, some clay, lift a brick, coconut, just making. This is after the Gujarat earthquake, and uh, where we are located, we have invited several uh, crafts people, craft communities, who come and so all our projects were making our own flooring, tile. Many times the client itself on a Saturday, Sunday is making the tile for his room. So he feels he did the whole thing. So we're doing this with which we think are traditional crafts, but we're not doing it with an idea of tradition. We're doing it as it's a living culture. And if one reads uh, Charles Correa, he he's very clear because something new came today, a new technology, doesn't make what is existing old. We think it is old. It is not of our time. If it is living, it is living. If we go into Rajasthan or something, these are living cultures. So as architects, how do we explore the coexistence rather than look at a sequential time? You know, and that's something I... But if we work, we tend to think, if I use terracotta, I use something, the materials start conveying meanings. I think we've been trying to re-examine, are those meanings real? Or are those meanings... Uh, imported from the Bauhaus. I have nothing against the Bauhaus, but uh, have they been imported from Europe, which we are borrowing? When in India, I think we are living simultaneous cultures. Uh, in the morning, I wake up and I meet a person from the third century sometimes. 
I have lunch with a person in the 12th century. And in the evening, I'm, I'm maybe 21st or 22nd century because someone is into augmented reality. And all this is happening in a single day, several centuries. So I think that's the quality in which India is living, as I see. So material, so many choices. You know, yesterday at the dinner, Lunkarji was showing flowers, you know, nature and flowers. How many varieties? And I was asking, can my mind even attempt to imagine the varieties? So to me, these varieties, you know, the flowers we saw there at the farm and then the materials you see, to me are as amazing, if not more amazing than metaverse and augmented reality. Simply amazing, you know, that if you open it, it's a metaverse unto itself. So nature is already busy, actually not busy, very relaxedly doing its metaverse. And that is how materials happen. So most of our work, and this is for the last 30 years, so we've had a difficulty explaining that that could also be within the realm of architecture, though it's catching up now. Most of our work was uh, constructing homes with different remote villages. We must have constructed about 50 or 70,000 homes now for the last 25 years. But working with communities, uh, studying what technologies or what building construction has happened over centuries, and then maybe introducing them to Oroville at times, introducing them to Laurie Baker, kind of uh, collaborated on our projects quite a few times, and we were honored by that. So these are all uh, village communities that we were, and we, were, we built about 30 or 40,000 houses. Each house costs at that time, this is 10 years ago, about 90,000 rupees, you know, and all the bricks were made there, all. So that's the kind of, uh, even the planning, the village planning, the water, the rain. So you'll see the trees are all intact and the houses move. And a lot of animals who are part of the family. So the whole imagination of what is home, imagination of how do you do a plan, how do you do an urban plan, happened in a very accurate manner. And one did have a little difficulty explaining it. I'm probably explaining it now for the first time in 20 or 30 years, because I myself was not sure how to explain it. I was quite sure this may be a way of looking at an architecture without architects, but not too sure how to uh, discuss it. So if we see Gandhi Ashram and Laurie Baker, and I think <coughs> this is again my personal opinion, among architects, I think Charles Correa had one of the most profound understanding of Gandhiji and from which I have uh, deeply kind of ingrained and understood on how to understand this connection with materials. You know, it's almost like a Japanese carpenter. You meet a Japanese carpenter, he can hold wood, close his eyes and tell you which part of the wood is root, which part was bark when it's cut from the tree. Now imagine that kind of a conversation with materials. It takes time and I think Gandhiji understood that uh, quite deeply, you know, and uh, Laurie Baker, of course. Whom so this is the kind of, when we go into the village, this is what we see, uh, centuries of knowledge. So we were finding it very difficult to come with our Ahmedabad knowledge. I have nothing against Ahmedabad knowledge. Uh, and come and place it on a village or place it on, we found we had to invert that. So this inversion is happening very slowly, but uh, I think it's fine. So when the pandemic happened, I'm coming to the inflection, when the pandemic happened, I asked my students, pre-pandemic, uh, if there was a Saturday, Sunday, where were you? So we would go trekking, we would go to Oroville, we would go this, so I exaggerated it a little. I said pre-pandemic, our home was completely empty, and the cities were crowded. You could see the traffic jam. So the homes are completely empty. They're there. Uh, this is not a pre-pandemic home. I'm just showing it for the Villa Savo by Kobuzia. But the homes were empty. Cities were full of people. Never in history did the entire civilization sit in the home isolated, having the city empty. Never. Imagine the... So our home became... So the last two years of my online... Uh, conversations became, how can the home become a market? 
how can the home become a conference room how can the home so home was requested to carry the whole world for 2 years so i changed the curriculum and i told my students home as the universe let's see what happens and we started discussing and because it was online the classroom changed my students in assam meghalaya grandmother would come and now sit out of curiosity uh, kerala grandmother starts conversing and i changed the curriculum as discover the home of the pandemic so whatever they did in the home had to be part of the curriculum nobody can fail because we are just saying discover the world in the pandemic so it changed completely but this is what we understood that the home is being uh, requested to take on functions that it was not prepared for and that's why i feel there is a new way of looking at it has affected us deeply we may not understand it so the other day i was hearing a podcast on and for that i have to since i said podcast i think audio gun is here and there was an amazing conversation on that podcast uh, with audio gun nimkar is here and uh, i was listening to another podcast and the psychologist said i don't please take everything what i am saying with statutory warning i'm i'm just saying what i heard i have no proof or evidence so he said that the human race is moving into a new zone and at some level i did feel maybe you wake up maybe with a high feeling of optimism now we have to do something at the same time the world outside is saying armageddon somebody is saying it may end third person is saying asteroid will hit fourth person is saying have you packed your bags because tomorrow evening we have to go to mars you're listening to all that you know at one level uh, at another level you're thinking no optimism you know, that is true and at the third level you're thinking if all this is happening why should i work maybe i can relax a little now these three emotions are coming at the same time because of the pandemic now this is what a psychologist said i know it's come often for me also but i handle it with a coffee or a tea uh, i don't go to the doctor but i am saying these emotions come it can lead to a depression it can lead to anxiety it can lead to all kinds so we need to understand now as human beings how are we going to cope with a very high level of unpredictability and instability can we cope i think we can it's about resilience and how we handle that resilience so this is the street i grew up in in goa i'm going to history because history more as memory you know i won't say much about it these were the kind of places we traveled so history doesn't come from ppt or google history comes from travel i'm very clear about it ppt and google can make me feel i must travel that's all but i think history is not google and ppt so that's another thing which i learned this is the street in which i lived and grew up and my father had a kind of a shop office this last so when i went back i just thought i'll document this and so this is the kind of street we grew up it used to lead to the station and within half an hour we would come into the western ghat so my growing up was pune uh bombay mumbai bombay goa and my father would take us in a ship from um, goa it was called konkan seva to bombay so we would always go by ship so every time i go back to charles korea's work i cannot avoid these memories getting provoked because he's pulling the memories from that same kind of a context and this is the formative context now it is set again where my architectural journey began and in those days i was a project architect for some extension of iim and i think mo is doing an amazing uh, <coughs> initiative and design in growing iim and these were the kind of references we had i had measured drawn the pattern step well with uh, professor basauda again who has an amazing uh understanding of gandhi ji as well as charles kore so i i i would say professor basaud has a very deep understanding of so this was the kind of formative context but this is also the formative context for indian architecture at some level you know i'll run through this quickly we ask why our cities are hot and i think we know all these statistics you can just read any undp report whenever you have time and so i come to the public realm so our interest 
it just happened that now our interest has gone into the public realm and one leading to other, nothing planned. So we've been now working with cities of Barcelona, Berlin, Paris to a small extent, but more Barcelona, Berlin, Zagreb, uh, and Chennai, sometimes Orville, on this void. What does this void do? How do human beings inhabit this void? And amazingly what's happening is that I you all wonder why I'm called to Barcelona or Paris or this. It is because they've forgotten how to walk. So we've called it walking cities. Everyone now wants to go away from the car and the pattern and the habit of walking is vanished. And which is why now European cities are re-looking at this and that's the kind of initiatives we're doing. The Roots Dialogue, next week we have another dialogue with uh, Professor Yuhani Palazma. All these dialogues are free. I would request you all to log in. Uh, more because of the generosity of the people who are, and I have no reason, I don't understand why, but there's a generosity to dialogue. They come on and they, they prepare and come, prepare for months and come, and I think I, I kind of respect the fact that they feel they need to prepare, come and talk for an hour or two or, and their time is very valuable, they're busy and still they come. So I would request you that this is a kind of a forum we may have ignited and initiated, but it cannot happen without the generosity of, uh, I would say, reflective practices, thinking practices, and we're thinking and trying to share it, you know, and that's, that's why it's, these are some of the publications we've been involved in. Environment and ecology has become an uh, important aspect and that's because of our closeness to Oroville. So we are trying to uh, grow forests with about 15 universities on fallow land. So the Saturday Sundays go in that. These are actually very simple tasks. I don't want to put any, it is just you do it, you plant, you come back, you see something happens to you. Um, War and peace, we got drawn into this by uh, mistake, I think. We were working on the tsunami in Nagapatnam and the Sri Lankan war grew up. So since then, in the last 11 years now, we've been uh, responding to war refugees. I remember architect Charles Korea asking me, how is this? Why should an architect be involved in war and peace? Why should an architect be involved in tsunami rehabilitation? So there was a certain uh, perception of architecture, you know, that, that this architecture which is ephemeral, you're just tying some bamboo or you're doing something like that, why it should be the realm of an architect. But we continued because we needed to understand and today suddenly everybody is discussing the transitional city, ephemeral city, walking city. But 20 years when we were going back, I know that many of the architects even within the office were wondering whether this is an architect's role. But with climate change, I think this is becoming important. And for th so then these are a few of my, few of our projects which we have done. It's like Tata Steel had an ad which said we also make steel, you know. So I wanted to say we also are involved in projects and we make buildings. And, uh, but we are a very slow practice. So if I do a project and it takes four years, I just do one project for four years. If it takes eight months, then eight months, one project. Rarely two projects unless a close friend is really pressurizing me and his emotions are uh, changing, then I take. But otherwise, it's a very slow practice. This is a resort for the Taj groups done along with Dean de Cruz. It's near Mahabalipuram, very simple building. And there we took, I took the inspirations of Golconda House. So we thought let's do a five star kind of a place without fan and without air conditioning. And with my rural background, the, I think the client said, let's remove this architect because he doesn't understand that a five-star hotel needs air conditioning and AC. And we managed 30%, no fan, no air conditioning till today. And um, the rooms have fans. Now in a five-star hotel, you don't have fans. I put that, insisted. And it is working. And the whole structure is in steel because they came one day and said, if it has to be concreted, I have to sign some huge bombing of the entire uh, campus because there were boulders and I said I cannot allow bombing of a campus. So we had to redesign and the soil test that we had got from the university was wrong. We found that there were boulders and then our structure engineer said 
we can actually start placing the steel light steel structure on the boulders so this was one of our first projects in steel and on the boulders and so this is the kind of and this is the monastery i did in bangalore in bangalore east this was my first project and so it's a monastery where walls are half uh, it was a monastery for a acc group and now we are doing a theological college there these are some of the residences we did many residences one is a elderly retreat it's under i mean going to get going to begin and the other is a home for a pilot which recently was demolished again no this home for a pilot had no rooms actually it was just a pavilion because they were just husband and wife children were abroad so i said why do we need rooms so we had no rooms and so you'll see that there is absolutely no walls it just walked and they had memories of their kumbakonam home so i try to see whether we can capture the light of the kumbakonam so i'll end with this i call it the end and the beginning it is like vinayak chaturthi you have the and professor doshi often talks to me about it you know the sarjan visarjan the cycle so it's really the end and every time is think of an end and if next time someone discusses armageddon and all these kind of you know that there is a beginning there uh, that is our uh, that is our region and our subcontinental culture that there is no end it will just keep going of course my talk has to end right now but it there is always a beginning you know and if you look into the horizon these are the history models that first year make within the first 3 weeks of joining the uh, campus I know it's quite a controversy but uh, they make it still and I continue to make them make it um, they say it's too early are you making them mature before they have understood I said there's nothing which is wrong you know if you're making so they make it they make parts they break it they 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 will understand it in the level that they want to understand it in fourth year they may come back and say so you what you spoke 5 years ago just now it struck me I said that's how I also grew up what something was told in first year yesterday i realized what was told to me so that is the way memory works and let us celebrate that memory there's no time sequence and the pandemic has told us if we as a group can handle something as intense in the pandemic a lot more we can handle and i again thank ron builders and architect mohe i was sitting still in the pandemic this is the first time i'm coming out and i saw pune has no memory of the pandemic you know they are moving forward so thank you again and i see that as the end and the beginning thank you very much thank you professor balsawar uh, he had told me that give me a cue when i am exceeding time and uh, quite honestly i i didn't look at the time i thought uh, it was a very interesting narrative uh very interesting to listen to what uh, you were trying to bring home as a point uh, it's uh, <clears throat> to celebrate home and then to celebrate architecture both simultaneously uh, so thank you for enlightening us with the end and the beginning uh moving on to the third presentation of the day i'm going to invite uh, architect henry comrie here uh, who's a minimalistic architect uh, likes to be called one and is an urban designer who enjoys working through complex problems to arrive at simple and logical solutions to hold wide appeal this skill has been demonstrated in a series of awarded and internationally published projects that range from the modest individual houses to uh, city precincts as well he was listed in the tashkent's 40 Ar architects under 40 and wallpaper magazine's design directory both representing reputable and independently weighted international shortlists of recognizable design talent I welcome you Henry and we're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Okay, um well thanks a lot for the introduction. Um it's also my first time out of the cage after the pandemic and it's wonderful to be in India. It's not even in South Africa where I'm from. and uh, just in terms of the the talks that we had before before I go to that thank you very much for the invitation the the hospitality has just been amazing the generosity and the 
few hours that I've been in India, uh, it's uh, unsurpassable. Um, so to the organizers and all the parties that have been thanked before, uh, a huge thanks and, um, and, and let the, the discussion continue. Uh, just in terms of the previous talk, talks, both of them, uh, what I've always appreciated in my contact with, with India and the fraternity of architects here is the skill to, to distill things and to be storytellers and to communicate things in a very simple, accessible manner. Um, so the term minimalism in my context is actually reducing complex things to the essence. Um, so the project that I'll be showing today as an as a example of my work, coincidentally after I was invited through Professor Balsawa, uh, we were shortlisted for the World Architecture Festival um, in the educational category. Um, so the, the, the project is really uh, a small demonstration of our work, a uh, small practice with three, four people, um, and we share that sim similar culture of we, when you get a project, you do it properly, and you do it with a sense of wonder, and you, uh, you immerse yourself in the meaning of that. Um, and that sense of wonder around building uh, is something that is something to hold on to as a student of architecture too. It's one of the things that I find as an architect, the older you get, the, the longer you've been involved in architecture, the more fascinating it becomes. So the thing about reflective practice, comparing your work, my work in South Africa to what I've seen happening in India, lots of parallels, but there's always more to learn and to absorb. Uh, my first visit to India was more than 20 years ago. It was in Goa. I saw Korea's work then was inspired by it usually, uh, hugely inspired by it. I went back to South Africa and used those lessons in one of my first buildings, a business school. So I'm not going to dwell on that. I'll, I'll leap into the presentation. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about Korea and influence where I can in the middle, because I think that's part of the, the context of my visit, is the legacy of, of Korea. OK, so can I um, move to the? OK, so this is the, this is the, the team working. And it's the way we work. We hated COVID. Uh, we work very actively with models and drawings. It's a very analog way of working. Um, and we redo things. We craft. Uh, and I've used the word craft. And people say, what's the difference between craft and design? I think it's very specific in terms of understanding material. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that have gone, I think, missing in architecture because of the, di the digital age, the, the actual tactile quality. So the, the building is actually the one that I'm going to be focusing on that one that you saw there. Just in terms of, of um, where the building is located, uh, this is South Africa, obviously, on the continent. Uh, and there's a city called, it's actually a town. They call it a city because it's the capital of one of the states in South Africa, uh, Kimberley. It's known for the discovery of diamonds. Um, so there was the big diamond rush. And it, but it's a very remote city uh, in, the, in the greater context. So once the diamond rush was over, the interest sort of dissipated in terms of that town and it went into decline. But just in terms of, of your understanding of climate and context and sustainability issues, uh, if you look at this image, it sits in that area of South Africa, which is comparable to your Rajasthan in India, hot, dry climate. So we've got those parallels. But we've, I, we, I've been talking to quite a few people yesterday at a wonderful dinner um, uh, out um, on, on, uh, on a farm outside Pune um, about these climate uh, zones being very similar. We've got sub, a subtropical zone which sits there, which is where Durban is. Uh, then you've got the high felt there, which is moderate, which is like Bangalore. Then you've got the, the dry zone there with, with a lot of sun. And then you've got a Mediterranean, Mediterranean zone, which you don't have. But So the similarities are, are quite substantial. And when I work across these areas, my design changed quite a bit. Um, and I'm not from Cape Town. I'm based there now. I, I studied and grew up in that part and that part. So I know the country quite well, and my work has been scattered all over um, South Africa. Just again, in terms of the population, few people in that location. So this is the density mapping, really, of South Africa, of where the urban populations are. And those of you, that, of you that follow cricket, the Wanderers is there in Johannesburg. Then there's Kingsmead in Durban, Jonty Roads. And then there's the, the Newlands in, in Cape Town. Um, that is what we've got that sort of <laughs> legacy in common. Um, so if you look at the rain, very little rain, 
just to give you some more context in that zone where the building is. And then the extremes of, of, of climate, hot days and very cold nights. And you have to, you have to negotiate by, between those, those two extremes. Um, so, it's, uh, so I can't go into the detail, but you can see the seasons there and, and, and the rain. It's not humid at all. It's actually hot and dry, the climate. Um, and so if you look at, if, if, you, if you add those up, how would you design if you've got lots of sun, little rain, few plants, few people? So that is actually the, the context. Again, very simple concepts to work with, not very theoretical. Um, and that's what the landscape looks like. So you can see, I mean, if, if I had to ask you, how would you explain this terrain? You would say hot, dry, no trees, few people. This is exactly what the photo says. So if a town gets established here, what would that response be if you didn't have all these influences that come into architecture that we con constantly get bombarded with? And again, just going back to the legacy of, of Korea that people mentioned before, the reflectiveness and the, and, the, and the sort of reverting back to the past. And what would the vernacular be? What would the original response be with the local use of the lo local materials? And in that context, this is it. <clears throat> so if you go to the Northern Cape and you will find these structures and you can almost imagine it's the sort of climate where very scarce resources, you spend a lot of your time outside the structure. It's so hot that you want to escape into this thing. It's the inverse of an igloo, um, which you'd find in the, on the North Pole, so it becomes the inverse. And so it's cool inside and, and these thick walls. And that's a very nice metaphor to work with as an architect. And how do you build in a contemporary fashion with what's available today and the skills available in that context? And also in this heat, if it's really hot, you'll go and sit in the shadow on the other side. If it's a cold winter morning, you sit against this wall with heat from the previous day radiating out from the wall. So the use of mass is something, again, that I think we've got in common in the way we build in South Africa to the way that you, will, you, you build in India. You work with the solid and the void, as Nandan just mentioned. So that, that is a very sort of specific way of, of approaching it. And yet you can see a, a later development, but also this is a sort of a, a stone construction um, in that context. So if I had to simplify it in a, in a Charles Correa manner, I suppose, you would say thick walls, cool inside, shade outside, and, that's, and small openings. The smaller those openings, the better. So you actually just escape the severe um, uh, extreme conditions. It's not the way people build in South Africa today because what we have are, are building regulations and architects tend to just conform to the minimum that's required in terms of the regulations. So they will build the minimum thickness of the wall. And then we get back to Louis Kahn and his statement, what does the wall want to be? So that mass becomes a, 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 a principle that we start off with. This is just a, a, an image of a collection of, of other projects that, that I've been involved with throughout my career and the sort of consciousness of light, but also, you know, if one uses the term minimalist, it's not, everything is not pristine white. It's just, again, reductive, the essence, and then the, and the very conscious use of light in, in these projects. Uh, this, is, uh, this is in Kimberley and Laurie Baker, those openings, you may recognize them. It's like a stencil actually cast onto that wall. So the influence has also been through Baker. Um, this is a, I'm specifically including this slide because it, de it deals with the principle of imperfection. And again, if you work in a developing world country, you can't polish everything. You can't keep on polishing everything every week um, in use. You have to design for the, um, it has to be rigorous. And in fact, these buildings like the ashram that uh, Nandan showed just earlier, it just becomes more beautiful with time. If you visit a La Corbusier building in, in France, it just gets but, um, nicer in time. So you can see these sort of qualities now on the building. It's a detail. I'm starting with a detail, but you can see the brickwork, the concrete work, and the imperfection there um, in, in a sort of a detail within the building before I go into uh, zoom out again. Um, everybody rushed into Kimberley at some point with the discovery of diamonds, and they dug this massive hole, which you may have seen. And, and as you can see, you can if you want to, you can move the Chrysler building in there. Um, so, um, but it's amazing what happened there. From 1870 to 1924, they dug a hole which is 240 meters deep, essentially people with their hands in this mad rush for, for diamonds uh, in the time of Cecil John Rhodes. Um, 
And that's, that's what it looked like. And it's quite amazing as an architect to look at an image like that, the cubism, the shadow and light, what is actually possible in architecture through people's own involvement with their hands in digging these holes. And the reason why it's got these abstract forms because everybody had a, a square uh, patch that they were allocated. It's like a claim. And so everybody, we, some people went further down. So Nandan is up there. He takes eight, eight years, sorry. And somebody else takes much longer. And so that you can see the speed at which people dig, almost the level of greed, I suppose, to get to, get to the diamonds. Um, and then they ended up with that massive hole. But what I then said as a concept, it's a bit like the scale concept that Sachin spoke about earlier, a very simple concept. Why don't we build in a way where we take the earth and carve exactly like they did with, with a big hole? How do we do that with buildings? Um, so, and that is city building. It's the void again, saying take that solid, cut back into it. What are those possibilities for an architect to work with? And uh, we take that, uh, our practice takes that seriously as a, as a point of departure. So you look at that hole there, Lots of development then happened across, around it in 1937. So the focus of development was there, and then you, you got the car. So that was the rush to 2010, fairly dense. Then it became this dissipated, almost American-style environment. And so what happened with, with the competition for a new campus, they said, let's try and reverse it. And so they, they identified a piece of land, and there was an urban design framework done. We didn't do the framework. There was a competition, and we got involved in building. So I'm going to be focusing on that building. So you can see how that mass becomes the, the context of doing a new building, which is a really nice opportunity for us to work in something that we believe in as, as urban designer architects. So the context is then there, linked to that system. And in future, sorry, this is going a bit fast. Um, so that's the incremental development of the campus itself. And you can see the buildings going from 2013 as a process. That's got stuck again. Oh, there we go. Okay, and then you see the building in its context. So what you do is you respond to the town or the city and you respond to the figure ground or the figure or the, of the buildings that are developed around your um, building that you're involved with. So by the time we did our buildings, most of the other, other buildings had been established and some of them are still to come. So you, you can work in a very responsive way within, within a framework. Okay, so stereotomic, the, the term that we use for working with a solid, is so, so you start with a mass and then you, you sort of fashion that. That's related to the, to the vernaculars and you see that model then um, developing and, and the, the sun is very big disproportionately big in the image because that's the reality. You try to hide from that thing hanging in the sky there in the, in the way that you uh, design the buildings. It's almost North African as well. This drawing, I collated all the plans of the other architects' as buildings and did this knowledge map type drawing. And it shows our building is actually just part of a group of buildings. It's not more important than those buildings. It's all about the collective. And how do you support the collective in the way you design. So that's the frame of the clay that's been carved out. And then you see the footprint of the building we designed. And it's really about that responsiveness. And again, very simple concepts in terms of how you work. It's not very theoretical. It's just the form response and you work with the, with the climate. Sorry, it's not moving. Oof. Okay, so you see the, the building there. Uh, inside that building, it's, uh, it's an auditorium building on the lower levels, and then there's a sort of um, office space at the top. But it was, it's interesting that the framework, the form that we were given, was in a way sacrosanct. We were told we have to fit the functions into it, and if, if it didn't fit, they would put those functions somewhere else. It, so it's the inverse of, a, of how buildings are often built, where the brief is developed by a client, and you do your utmost to fit everything in the building. So it was quite forgiving in that instance because the framework and the development of the campus was the important thing. The sacrosanct thing was the whole system. And every piece actually then fits into that, in the, into that total system. And ultimately, this is what the campus is about. It's this life between classes. How do you move between classes? And how does every building support that? And it, it starts showing 
for instance, on this image where the auditoriums are, where the gathering spaces is the main square, and how this building be becomes part of a sequence of, of scale hierarchies, where you zoom in, you zoom out. You're always conscious about movement on the larger campus. And so the essence of this is, um, and we get to the form response, um, and I also think that good design seems as if it's effortless, um, precisely because it was a lot of effort to distill and bring it back to its, its, its simplicity. Uh, but also the way that we communicate, and this is for the, as I said, for the World Architecture Festival, you actually build models sometimes to communicate things for a specific purpose. So in a way, we've been reflecting on our work by building models post-completion. So this model was done post-completion, after all the mess and refinement of what happened in the studio during very, a very long period of, of designing the building. So you can see that, uh, again, in context. And you can, what's interesting about the image on the right here is that this was a very early uh, model built by the different architects coming to a meeting in Kimberley with their first ideas. So the f this is, you can see the framework below, and you can see all the different architects arriving there with their one to 200 scale models. So the debate was from the first day about the collective, not about the individual building. And then in terms of developing the buildings, you can see how these models are iterations, starting with something like that. But we do these things regardless. We, we're not rushing towards a, a, a presentation. It's the, it's the enjoyment of working with proportion, scale, movement, and all of that. So, so the craft for us sits, sits in this, um, working with that solid. And, and also then obviously in terms of structure, uh, this is the engineer. Uh, in terms of, of the structure in that, and that's for us hugely sort of enjoyable part of the design process. So if you look at that, again, you've got the solid, and you can almost imagine how would you carve into that solid, hard landscape in a way that they built that, or they dug that big hole um, in Kimberley over time. So this is on the, on the roof of our building with my assistant. Um, and then what we did is we built this model to show how you actually would then unpack it. And I also believe in uh, that good architecture is very difficult to photograph. You have to experience it. Uh, so the best you can do to understand buildings are to build models like these. And again, as I say, these are post-rationalized models. But you can see that how the form actually is sort of deconstructed to try and explain what happens inside a very complex um, interior. So if you look at the plans, um, Louis Kahn's explanation of servant and servant spaces, that's what this is about. So you can see the dock is the um, uh, servant spa servants and that's the served space and how that sort of whole thing hangs together. So that, I mean, they're, they're obviously then there are services in those spaces here. Yeah. And fitting the auditorium into a triangle was quite tricky. Usually you would like that to be like this space and so you can see how the shift create tensions in the plan, but also opportunities. Um, so you see there the auditorium sitting there, and these then become the semi-public spaces in there, but they're linked um, to, to the public spaces outside. So you go from public to semi-public to semi-private to private at the top. So you've got four layers um, in that sequence going up. Okay, so I'm just going to take you through a quick walk. This is the main square, which is now completed. And you've now seen the framework. And you can see, well, this is amazing how the spaces are actually being used now by people. Talking about pedestrians coming back into it. There's not a single car on campus. It's not built for, for cars. And then you can see our building appearing there. And you'll see the influences there of Khan in that work and Korea and the in influences that I picked up in India many, many years ago is actually vested in the building. So you come down that spine, a different time of day, appearing on the, on the left there. And you start looking at this sort of portal in there. And we call the, this building a, a cool cave. It's like those other images. It's cool, sort of cut out void space. Looking back. This was taken in COVID, so that's why there are no people there. <clears throat> but the hierarchy of space, and you've now picked it up on the model, and in a way the model should do a lot of the explanation. Uh, this is a, I think this is a video. Um, 
Was it the next one? Yeah, this is a video. Can we play the video? I was just asked to indicate. These doors can open at, at times, so that transparency, but you'll see students now moving through it, and they go into the auditorium um, in that fashion, uh, fashion in there. Has it stopped? That's fine, we can go to the next one. This is a four minutes, we don't have time for that, so we can, we can carry on to the next one. Okay, um, under construction, that's the small door, you can see that there. A bit of a, this is a more recent photograph, that's where you enter the building. It's a bit like the Frank, Frank, Roy, Frank Lloyd Wright principle too, you, you pinch it and you close down and then you open up again. This is at the back of the building. The openings on the on the uh, uh, western facade of the building, which is a very sort of sun-exposed facade, and the cutouts to bring the light in. You can see the thick walls there. That's the cool cave. Um, how am I doing for time? Sorry, let me just uh, check on that. Okay, that's fine. So we've cut open the model there. And you can see the sequence of space on the model going from the outside to the foyer space to the auditorium space. So they're all interlocked into a sequence of spaces that we, that we crafted. And we worked on this project just for interest. We worked on this project probably for eight years because we were asked to do another building first and some people would have seen the other building, a much bigger building. And they put this building on hold. And it was one of those joys. It's like a Carlos Carapa type opportunity. You've got eight years to craft something. Um, and it's, uh, in terms of my career, by far the most sort of um, time we've had to do any building. Um, so you see that space on the inside. You've, you will now recognize from the photographs. Um, and that's the stair going up into the auditorium there. And then the indirect use of light coming in from, from the top in, into that um, semi-private semi space. Okay, you can go with it. Let me just go to the next one. That's now through the auditorium. And these pockets of bringing light in, you can see on all the sides. Okay, this is a video. Can we play this one? That's fine, we can move on. Okay, I'm just going to skip this one. So that's what it's all about. So that's the scale of the drawing that you saw on a bigger scale repeats at this scale of the movement of people. So it's actually a public space, a, a building becoming a small city at the scale of the building. I think it's stuck again. And the introduction of the, the yellow, you'll see that coming into play now, which is part of the history of the tram system that served the mines. So the yellow appears in the sequence of spaces. And you can also see the imperfection that I spoke about earlier on the surfaces, surfaces and the indirect use of natural light. So you're looking up into that void space now. That's a very narrow slot cut there, and you can see the effect of that. As the sun moves over from east to west, that's always changing. So the sun comes, you've seen those openings on that facade. This is the effect of the light, the indirect light bouncing into it like that. It's such a joy to work with light as something that one can just become more and more proficient with over time, um, if you're aware of that ability uh, to work with light. And debate it in the office, test it with models as we do. So 
through. I'm just flashing through because there's another. Uh, this is a shutter that opens to bring in light. So if it's if if there's a, there are power cuts, you can open the shutter and you can bring in the light that comes through that opening, and you can see that opening there, and this is then um, able able to open and close it. Can we play this one? Okay, next one. Go forward. Sorry, it's hanging a bit. So that's that space. Again, it's very simple. It's very straightforward, uh, tr uh, unpretentious. And that's where the term in our framework, minimalism, comes in. And then you go up into the spaces at the top there where the offices are. So this is for the World Architecture Festival. There's just one um, video I want to show of one house that we did and, that did and then I'm done, um, which is a um, fairly well-published house, um, which is in the Western Cape. So this is the white architecture of the Mediterranean zone. Um, and it's quite a nice video done recently for a television program. Um, and it shows that um, it's almost a, a villa uh, sitting in the in the landscape, but it's the same principles of a very sort of tightly controlled box with light coming into it, um, and so it's the, the the focus in this case is out. The house that we visited last night is also like that. So you, it's like an aperture that you sit in uh, and you enjoy the views from there. This is a magnificent landscape that we live in in the Western Cape, um, and so to be given a site like this to to work on is just incredible. Um, to work with that context and the tension. Uh, of the two hills in this case that anchors the anchors the house and then as I said earlier in time it just becomes better because of the landscape invading it it becomes like a ruin um, and much of it for us is in that too that you, you you're not precious about the architecture and you allow the landscape to invade it but um, the purpose I showed this is that it's consistent whether you work on a house for a single client whether you, whether you work on a campus building, those same principles apply. And it's also like the small city because there's an avenue, an axis running through the house in the middle of it. And that becomes the primary ordering device. And inside the volumes change. And it's very much like Korea in that sense. Very simple order, but very, very complex internal arrangement of, of spaces. Okay, so thank you very much. I um, hope it did justice to you. Um, coming all the way to India and the huge privilege of being here. Um, I'm here for another three weeks. I really look forward or, or so um, to many acquaintances and discussions. Thanks a lot for the organizers again. Uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, yeah, he mentioned he's here for three weeks. I, I believe he's uh, presenting in Bangalore somewhere in November, right? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, what uh, binded uh, the presentation was the conviction with which uh, you started your design ideas through sketches and those converted to models and those physically getting built. And uh, I've been following your um, Instagram uh, pages, uh, posts on the page, and uh, I believe the sketching has been a tool that has allowed you to uh, with conviction, present your ideas to uh, uh, and then get them built. So I think it's a good tool the students can take clue from. Uh, thank you, Henry, once again. Here we are going to break for 10 minutes, uh, less than that if possible, just a, a refreshing, uh, refresher break, and we'll come back in uh, less than 10 minutes again where uh, I'm going to uh, request uh, architect Sanjay Mohe to uh, introduce the brief of the competition to all of you. And then we begin with the student presentations. We have about four presentations before the lunch break. So it's a delayed lunch break. And then we have four presentations after the lunch break. That's how the day is planned. So I'm going to request all of you to be back as quickly as possible, ideally six minutes, so that we start at 11.30 back again. Thank you very much.
you so much for these three wonderful presentations. I, it was uh, it was absolute pleasure listening to all three of you. And uh, I think this whole idea of arranging uh, this competition is to learn. And uh, what we learned uh, today was really fabulous. Um, just to talk about the brief, um, this has been a seventh uh, edition, and uh, all the previous programs, uh, we tried to sort of restrict it in terms of uh, absolutely idea-oriented kind of thing, and uh, didn't want students to spend too much time on uh, gathering information and things like that. And for that, uh, uh, one of our, um, uh, one, competition in Mimar magazine long back, maybe some 25 years back, which Korea had set up that uh, uh, that competition. That had always been kind of one of my favorites where uh, there were two roads and he had defined the edges of the house. Um, and then they said there is this family of four with grandparents and one, one goat in the house. And then you have to work with that and all. And that that was kind of a, uh, you know, so you have so many restrictions and then you concentrate only on creating ideas within those restrictions. Uh, so that's how we started our first, uh, uh, first competition, uh, which was like with two streets and a house in between um, on this Tambatali. And, and from there it uh, started in uh, sort of developing. So this is the first time we <laughs> didn't have too many restrictions. And uh, that's where I always feel it's like if you have to design something like Ronsham Chapel, uh, what, what Corb did. So you have to design this chapel on the top of the hill and you can do anything. There are no restrictions. Literally, you could, you could, you could create anything and that's the toughest thing to do for any, uh, any architect to start. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a way, uh, this competition was a little difficult because uh, there were not too many restrictions. So. Um, but uh, the idea of uh, normally all of us in the office sit together and spend a lot of time trying to decide what kind of brief we should. Uh, and we, we spend almost like three, four weeks thinking about different uh, kind of topics and how, how do you sort of connect it to be able to connect with the students. But uh, this time uh, Shweta came up with this idea of memorial and suddenly all of us said, oh, this, is, this seems to be one of the best topics. And, Mainly because uh, Korea has been um, uh, probably one of the great teachers, whether he taught you directly or indirectly through his work, through his writings. And our whole generation, especially us, uh, we learned so much from people like Korea, Doshi, Bawa, uh, how to build in tropical context, how to respond to um, you know elements around. Uh, and we wanted the students to take a deep dive into his work and try to understand because that just that study would change your entire approach to uh, to how you would uh, work in future so that was one of the main idea and uh, uh, it's probably not about winning and or losing because uh, from my personal experience um, i can tell you that whenever we gave a entry into a competition uh, whether we won or lost, what what you see is yours is only one of the ways of handling, a, you know, coming to the uh, finding a solution. You suddenly realize that there are twenty different ways of solving the same problem, and suddenly, uh, you know, within a day you learn so much. Uh, you know, you know how to solve problem in twenty different ways. Uh, and that's what all of the students have to learn because this time there were more than 300 entries, which was phenomenal. Uh, so the amount of efforts really put in by Rohan team and all to just spread the information about it is absolutely wonderful. Um, so uh, we wanted to get the jurors who are who know um, you know Korea's work deeply. Uh, sort of very sensitive to his philosophies. And uh, that's why we finally uh, shortlisted on these three. Uh, so, so this whole process of, uh, I'm sure this shortlisted uh, students must be very tense uh, and have to face this jury. But 
look at it as a process of learning because you are going to learn a lot through through these uh, comments what they make and uh, um, just uh, uh, just to tell you about the brief which all of you know about but uh, uh, the idea why uh, goa was chosen because it's very rich cultural heritage uh, so much of art music tourism tourism history um, and and then this kalai academy when korea does it uh, next to the water he lifts it off the ground and then there is a whole axis which gets connected through this colonnade and gets connected to the water beyond and with this one uh, lighthouse and then there is a cluster of trees so you have you have this korea's building to respond to you have uh, creation of god on the other side with water uh, uh, you know entire uh, landscape then there is this tower and you have to place something which um, which you call it as uh, you know presence of absence or whatever you have to feel his presence or feel his absence when you uh, when you walk through that space and um, probably carry back those memory memories and then uh, you know sort of that becomes a inspiration for you and you come back and say oh i'm going to do some great work after so so that was that was the basic idea of creating this so it is like it's his 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 whole journey has been so phenomenal in terms of so many different aspects of his life and how do you really capture that it has to happen through layers it can't happen as a one statement so you keep discovering one layer after another after another it's almost like uh, you know listening to a classical uh, raga by bhimsen joshi you might just like it but as you know more about the music you discover different layers and less because it's all there but depending on how much you know about it you start discovering more and more so so we we want that memorial to have that quality where probably as a layman you will understand only part of it but as you go deeper and deeper you would probably learn finer and finer aspects of it just to give one small example um, uh almost like 20 years back this french architect henry siriani who had come to bangalore and uh, he was showing his work and uh, he had done one war memorial uh, uh, somewhere in uh, somewhere in france and uh, it's it's highly published one it's, it has this exposed concrete wall and he had put these projections almost cylindrical projections uh, on a grid and uh, when you take a photograph you get a deep shadows of all those projections in a in a kind of a perfect grid and he was connecting it with a war memorial and i didn't understand uh, what exactly he meant by that and then uh, almost after 10 years i was in pune um, uh, going past this uh, second world war memorial the the cemetery which is there and you see those plaques put in a grid and uh, there was that shadow which was cast on the ground and after 10 years i saw that just driving past and i could connect it with that building almost after 10 years and that's what that subtlety is you know what i was talking about you may not know it what durganan was talking about you may not know something what was told you on the second second year that you might know it yesterday you know so so those are those deep meanings what you really built into the thing and uh, uh, that's what we are looking for uh, and there have been wonderful response we got some very very nice entries and uh, i think now up to the jurors to take it forward thank you thank you very much a round of applause to the brief first uh because it's quite interesting and a round of applause to the IT team here who is doing a excellent job managing all of this i think they deserve a round of applause as well so yes uh more serious business now the drawing board 2022 has received tremendous response like i said in the morning and uh, abhishek uh, told you that 25 countries it's amazing 
So congratulations to all the participants first because it's a no mean task. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to work on an entry for a competition and send it across for somebody to review it. Uh, not getting it to top eight is uh, uh, it's it's okay. I think uh, you've uh, already achieved one level of uh, success for yourself is participation. But uh, then obviously there has to be top eight and the winners as well. So congratulations to all the finalists and a big thank you to more than 1,200 registrants of this uh, uh, Drawing Board 2022. And what has e made it even more special is the jury members that we have uh, this year. I take this opportunity to thank each one of them for having been so kind to take up this humongous task uh, of evaluating such wonderful entries and uh, obviously doing justice to all of them. Uh, I request all three jury members uh, to take stage uh, and uh, I'll call upon Sachin Akshikar, Professor Durganand Balsavar and Henry Comrie to take the stage. A round of applause for all of them please. We, whichever best chair you like to sit on. <laughs> so, uh, this is to the jury members as well. We've already uh, informed our uh, participants uh, about instructions that are regarding the presentation. They know their time limits as well. They know their sequence. And uh, most importantly, uh, they, they've been briefed about uh, the uh, process in which they have to go about presenting their uh, entry to all of you. So uh, a kind request to all the participants to stick to the format and the timing given today. It will be best that we keep time for all the presentations. And I'm going to invite the first team uh, on stage uh, to start their presentation. Uh, they are from the uh, Wadiyar School of Architecture, Mysuru. I request both of you to take stage. Kashish and Shubhanshi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll start with our presentation now. So our design process started out by questioning the brief. And the question that we asked was, leaving the quiet corner on the site was a conscious decision that Charles Correa made 50 years back. Would he have wanted to build on a site that he had once left purposefully empty? This question sort of stirred a conflict among ourselves. And so we referred back to the architect's work and his writing, especially the essay, The Snail Trail. And I quote, like the trail that the snail leaves in its wake as it inches forward. So over the years, an architect leaves behind a body of work. Uh, this essay introduced us to a few of the key principles that Korea has used in all of his projects. And uh, we'll now look at a few uh, interpretations that we made out of that. This is the first idea, the idea of the non-building. Here we talk about this idea of nothingness, where the built form becomes the background and the activity becomes the foreground. The second idea becomes the ritualistic pathway, is when a built form is experienced not as an object, but as a journey. And the last becomes the empty center, which, is em which emphasizes on the idea of having a contemplating void away from the whole activity of the whole building. We now come to our second question. What a memorial for an architect meant to us? For us, the memorial uh, lied in an amalgamation of the ideas of, an ar of the architect, both in his unbuilt, his or her unbuilt or built work. Yeah. Uh, coming closer to the context of the site, the immediate context of the site is the restaurant that overlooks the site. Uh, the restaurant is at the edge of the building, uh, uh, Kala Academy. 
Here we looked at four instances. The first one where uh, the ground has been left the way it is, uh, which is, uh, yeah, the way it is. The second instance is where uh, freestanding walls have been placed parallel. We're trying to look at a relationship between the built and how it would affect the view. So in this case, your view sort of narrows down. In the third instance, we are again looking at this idea of the freestanding wall. Um, of course, here the view hardly remains. The, four in the fourth instance that we look out is as an underground plane or a depressed plane. And I think this is something that we found the most appropriate as a reaction to the imaged context. So this is the proposed site. Uh, the grids extending from the Kala Academy to the site. Uh, the extension of this base plane from the restaurant to within the site. Yeah. Uh, again, we use this idea of sinking the base plane to continue with that view. Um, this is an extension to the first quote. So the other two quotes come in here. We see an interrelationship between the three quotes and then a connection to the vegetation around. Uh, this becomes an alternative pathway into the site and it's connected to an existing pathway that is moving towards the river. And now comes the built, which is defined by the uh, already existing open spaces. We now come to the master plan. We have seen our intervention um, as an extension to Kala Academy. And because Kala Academy already sort of had all the amphitheater, auditorium, and everything what a Kala Academy needs, we thought, how about providing a buffer space or an empty center, what uh, Korea calls it, uh, to, to, add an ex to add as an extension to the whole building. Uh, there is this seamless transition uh, between the two intervention and the Kala Academy that could be particularly seen from the restaurant. Um, upon entering court one uh, from the restaurant, the, uh, the visitor could go to cascade down to the two courts, which we were talking about before, and then that could access the multivalent space, which could provide for, uh, which could provide as a multi-purpose space as well, which could be used as a display. Uh, and because Goa is so culturally rich, and uh, uh, m probably students could come there and perform or just watch a movie in the space. So the plan on the left, which is taken at the level of the restaurant, uh, shows the extension of the restaurant into the site, uh, into the first court through a series of plinths. So the plinths can be used as a seating space, as an extension to the restaurant. Uh, this court one further uh, goes down into the other two courts, uh, which are connected with a pathway. Uh, these two courts then open out into the multivalent space, as she was mentioning. And over the multivalent space sits a terrace that again opens you out towards the view. Uh, here uh, we look at the various levels and how they are accessed. We also look at how the uh, intervention sits within the site and how it sort of seamlessly blends in with the context of the Kala Academy. Uh, coming to the sections, uh, so this is an overall section extended right to the river. Uh, again, we look at this idea of how the quotes sort of um, spill into each other and then look towards the river. Uh, this idea of the open and the enclosed spaces both um, sort of giving different views uh, to the context. We come to the other section where we can see that the enclosed spaces sort of frame the view outside in a very different form, whereas uh, the open, open court sort of sit, sits next to it. Um, in the next section, we can see how there's this transition from uh, the, the restaurant above and how one person can cascade down to the enclosed space uh, uh, with, a pa with a passageway in the middle. So similarly, this connection between the courts and the open. So the courts slightly transform into a series of plinths that then open out towards the side of the vegetation. Uh, similarly, in the section below, section 5, we look at how uh, the enclosed space itself opens out towards the view. Uh, we now look at a few details of how, uh, even in the smaller scale of a project, 
a simple detail could make such a huge difference of how a recessed wall uh, could act as a seating or even as a display area for the people. And we have looked at the walls as open exposed laterate walls to give it the more exposed nature of it. Um, again, similar way, we have used uh, another wall as a uh, seating, recessed seating again, where um, the wall could act as a seating in two levels, two different levels, uh, one in the court one and another one in the passage. This is just a simple railing detail that we've looked at, and this is the staircase which, staircase which accesses the roof. Uh, yeah, this is the detail that we're looking at as an interface between the enclosed and the open. So there is a small slope created there with uh, the plants and uh, the amount of water that flows down that slope uh, first gets absorbed by those uh, by the ground there and then either flows down into the drain. Uh, and uh, we're also looking at the subtle detail of the chain uh, for the water to drip down uh, from the roof. Um, to understand the nature of the space, uh, we tried sketching out a few uh, views from the project itself and how it could actually feel like when uh, probably used. Um, so this is from inside the multivalent space where it frames the outside and how the walls could be used as a display area probably. And uh, this is again from the multivalent space looking inside towards uh, uh, the two courts on both these sides. Um, this view is from both the courts uh, on the second level, where uh, there's this pass passageway that connects what we were talking about before, and how, again, th these courts could be used in multiple nature. Yeah, these are uh, two views from outside the site, the first one being the restaurant, and uh, we basically wanted to show how this sort of intervention has uh, allowed for the views to uh, remain intact. Uh, yeah. Here we again look at how the space would be used uh, throughout the day or throughout a week, and uh, yeah, how the space allows for various activities to take place. Um, so when we look at Kala Academy, our first um, sort of observation was how there are these different degrees of enclosure that we can talk about how there's this uh, free-flowing uh, semi-open space in the middle, which sort of uh, is like an in-between space to these uh, highly enclosed spaces. Uh, and a similar language is sort of carried on to our project and in, into our intervention. Uh, similarly, when a visitor enters the Kala Academy, there's this shift of access that can be seen uh, in the whole project throughout the whole building and which is again carried forward to our intervention. Uh, here are a couple of post-analysis diagrams. We're looking at uh, things like the building edge. So there is a, uh, where there's a lot of similarity between the building edge that is formed by the Kala Academy and in between our intervention. We're looking at this idea of framing the views. So how the enclosed and the open spaces both let out views um, that are very, uh, that are different. Um, we look at the idea of circulation, how one steps down into the first court and then onto the enclosed space, and then they have the option of moving towards the river. Similarly, we're looking at ideas such as the extension uh, to the existing. So all the courts extend out either towards the view uh, or the vegetation or the existing building. We're looking at ideas of negotiating with the trees. So wherever a tree is there, um, the building sort of folds to create uh, space for the tree. Uh, similarly, the idea of repetition in the scale of the quotes. Um, yeah, those are the key ideas we're, we've highlighted here. Um, we are also talking about the hierarchy of the building, which is again continued from uh, the idea of Kala Academy, where uh, the spaces which are extending outwards are higher in hierarchy. These are two views that we've taken. One is the view from before, from the restaurant, and how that was an open space, and what uh, the intervention uh, makes it look like. So yeah, we're mainly focusing on how the view has remained intact. 
this diagram is to show how the mode of the space works and how uh, the whole intervention sort of sits uh, seamlessly in the whole context and how um, when we are talking about memorial for a Korea, it doesn't have to be a statue of him. Rather, uh, it, it's the journey one takes from these places that could remind one person of him. Um, and I think now we can take a, uh, take a liberty of saying that this small meandering complex is experienced not as an object, but as a pathway, sometimes covered, sometimes open, sometimes semi-open to sky, and sometimes open to sky completely. Uh, and one can experience this while moving along through the whole project. And I think that, and we think that reminds, uh, could remind a person of Charles Correa himself. Our process started out by a couple of questions, primarily triggered by the brief's provocation for us to build in a place that was consciously left unbuilt. After the process, for us, uh, to answer the conflict, whether to build or to not build, I think lies in the idea of the non-building. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to ask the first question. It's a real honor. Um, you did those very nice diagrams in the beginning and then you opted for the non-building. My question to you is in perspective, if you look down at your non-building, don't the other aspects also appear in your design? Just because of the fact in perspective, in section maybe you've opted for the non-building but through your views, like the last Im the, the, the image just before this that you showed looking out, it becomes something different. So that, that's my question, is the, how much of the other components are there in terms of the memory? So I think in some way we've tried to look at this whole idea of the ritualistic pathway as well. Um, but the, I think the idea of the non-building remains key and just a result, as a result of the non-building, the idea of the pathway uh, has come in, wherein we're looking at uh, how a person circulates from the open to the enclosed, and then how you probably connect it with the um, vegetation or with the view. So I think that's where those ideas come in. Um, and uh, even while designing, I think uh, one of our key process was to how, how do we get to a building without actually coming to the form? And, um, through the process, I think uh, there was this whole idea of non not building and having the courts, which were also a key idea from Korea. And that sort of led us to this whole part of the building itself. That was the whole process of it. And um, even though uh, if it is reflected or not, but uh, there was always this process of the whole thing, that the three key ideas that we have put in. Um, and also, if you uh, no, Maya, you can also look at the model for understanding the section and the levels of it. Um, yeah, it was it was a nice presentation, and I like the drawings also. They have hand hand drawn drawings, which is very nice. Um, uh, my question is, uh, uh, you have used arches, and you used. Um, you know, maybe laterite stone because it sort of matches with the other buildings, but you've also introduced arches. Uh, any reason for that? Any particular reason for, because uh, I don't think Charles used arches anywhere in, you know, as far as I remember, but uh, why was it, why was the language changed all of a sudden? Um, I think we were not looking at, uh, let's say, uh, copying his style, we were looking at how we can take the idea and abstract it through the process. We were not looking at what he uses as a building material as such, or what he, he uses as a building element as such, but we were looking at how the idea of the whole building comes along. And I think it was the process which led us to this building, and I think I, uh, even for Charles Correa, I think the process really mattered. So. Yes, but uh, yeah. the context also matters. So since this is a, even if you call it a non-building, it's a building finally. Yes. And it's located in, uh, within the co complex. So how does it match with the 
rest of the complex i think in in some aspects um if you look at the kala academy there is a sense of grid and proportion mm. um and uh, there is some sort of similarity that we see with with the courts being um, in a similar proportion um again then we were talking about those post analysis diagrams we touched upon the idea of the building edge i think those similarities sort of get carried forward in the design uh, and uh, this whole idea of the circulation uh, within the academy and that circulation then getting forward carried forward to our building uh, so yeah like she mentioned the concern was of um, whether we should build or not build in that uh, be, should it be a built form or should we look at the idea of non building and that's where we got introduced to his ideas and that's why it's reflected in the design okay and uh, one last question is the the top of this roof um matching with the level of the restaurant the yeah. cafe yes sir they are at the same level so okay. uh yeah there's no visual interruption okay so how how much lower have you gone so uh from the uh restaurant we've gone another uh 3 meters below from the level of the restaurant um so the first court so the first court is a meter below the the two courts are 2 meters below and the third court is 3 meters below okay uh and it also sort of uh, complements the contours that were provided to us mm -hmm. and uh, the whole block sort of um were made the whole courts were sort of made with respect to what the contours the contours sort of provoked us to so it's sloping towards the yes. river yes. so that's how we got light into that uh, yes. building yes thank you thank you for a, a very thoughtful presentation and both as the idea and <coughs> thinking about how the drawings or the representation happens right up to the detail and uh, this is not really a question answer we're just raising certain things because we're trying to uh, introspect or reflect on uh, what a memorial could contain you know what a member if for a <coughs> for an architect like charles kurir so I, the one thought that came across here and uh, this is more to that if there was a pattern now this is not part of the brief huh? we're just discussing to see what what is the possibility of something that happens if there was a pattern and there was a need that this memorial had to grow yes. yeah because one idea that probably charles square looked at in most of his buildings was that the finiteness would always be challenged whether of gandhi ashram the fine bharat bhavan the finiteness so you cannot that in any uh, design he was working in or any project he was working there was always a anticipation or a promise that it may grow and yeah, bring an issue there um, so if one was suddenly the the client were to come and say it has to grow that can be very functional reason why a client but then charles square would really make it more metaphysical and take it at another level it was not we need to add three more rooms so we need to add four more it was not in that tone you know um, since you have <coughs> um put in and immerse so much i was wondering whether just spontaneous um, what how would it if that demand came to grow or the demand came to reconnect with the river in some new way um what would one just spontaneous it's not part of your, so look at the how would one test the boundary of what one has drawn to make it more uh moving towards the infinite rather than drawing it as a yeah. finite set of three courts and very purposefully there's a what could have happened this can you respond yeah. to it just spontaneous it's not there's not a question and answer i'll go to the master plan so uh, first thoughts what come let's discuss yes. you know there's no um so i think uh, 
even while looking at Kala Academy, the first thought, we didn't even think of adding something to the place which was left purposefully unbuilt. But uh, if, in fact, we could add it, I think uh, there is always this um, whole extension to the whole building that could be added again, because uh, these are, again, very modular sort of quotes. Uh, which is uh, repeated from repeated as in with respect to the scale. So uh, if probably wanted, then we could al always sort of extend it towards that. The, our restriction was uh, only with respect to the site and the trees and the boundaries. So I think um, if uh, someday the boundaries are removed, maybe the whole site could extend towards the river itself. And I think that would answer your question. Okay, this is just a spontaneous. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, team Wadiar School of Architecture, Mysuru. I think uh, they were brilliant uh, with uh, their confidence about answering questions. I'm sure the jury agrees. Uh, we, from Mysuru, we come to Pune. Uh, we come to team two, and we're going to have a team from D.Y. Patil School of Architecture, Lohegao, come up and present their idea of the memorial. Pratamesh and Aniket are here. So I'll request Pratamesh and Aniket to begin their presentation and keep up to the time. Thank you. A very good morning to all the jury members and all the people present over here. It's an honor to be present here and be selected for the finals. Our UID number is 239, and here we'll start with our presentation. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we hereby present our design entry, Charles Correa Memorial, uh, Kalak Academy, Goa. Our site is located in uh, Panjami, uh, Panjim, Goa, at the banks of Mandobi River. Uh, we studied a few structures of same requirement like bha Bharat Bhavan, Sabarmati Ashram and Jawaharlal Kala Kendra and along with that we referred to some of India's traditional architecture and its element like kun, traditional columns, step wells which enhance the spaces by correlating the aesthetic purpose without compromising functionality. Our other idea was to use Korea's designing strategies to get the minimal design by using minimum colors and materials to highlight a highlight or create a focal point to enhance a particular element which creates an image identity. So going to the concept, the idea of the memorial is to design a space derived from the ancient Indian river fronts and Korea's work. The memorial was designed with respect to the site surrounding and climate responsive strategies were used. Open courtyards and semi-open corridors were given to tackle humidity in the afternoon time and cool breeze from the river cools down the overall temperature inside the memorial. We also worked on managing the public flow from the Kala Academy. So this is the uh, form evolution diagram. So here we have developed, we, uh, in the stage one, we developed, uh, developed symmetrical planning of certain levels around the Samadhi Stal. Creating two parallel connecting passages towards the monument was the stage two, and stage three was creating a plaza around the corridor passage. Stage 4 was creating the seat-outs and the recreational spaces around the plazas. Demarcating spaces with some architectural elements and the structure was the stage 5. And the stage 6 is the overall view of the memorial. So, in coming to the site plan, we followed the symmetrical planning throughout the site plan. The crowd management or the crowd flow is along the periphery of the site to avoid congestion and overcrowding. Multiple sub-corridors to the site was given to avoid the congestion and over uh, overcrowding and multiple sub-corridors were given to maintain the flow of users. We have used sculptures in the corridors which are positioned in such a way that it creates light and shadow patterns on the pathway and also it creates the barrier between two spaces. In the center, we have placed the Samadhi Stal, which will be highlighted from all the corners of the site due to its great height. Along with that, we have placed the water body along the Samadhi Stal so that it, it not only brings the temperature down, but also gives a user a calming experience while walking along the Pradakshina Marg. Talking about the space planning, the existing trees were kept, it, 
kept as it is and, and the design was manipulated according the requirements so that uh, 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 so we designed a kun seat out so the steps were also given to connect ground level to the weaving deck so that a user can get the view of the overall campus the semi private areas like toilet blocks are given in the corner which are not that much used as compared to other spaces and also to maintain the privacy the dead wall is placed right in front of the toilet block food court is placed near the exit point as the user firstly after entering the site they speculate the site and in the end when they are tired and exhausted they search for the food so this psychology of a human being was kept in the mind so the food places uh, was kept in the uh, uh, the 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 location of the food court was given accordingly after a short break and freshen up mind people will be again ready to speculate a little bit so the gallery space is placed right near the exit so that the final experience hits the person mind and he remembers the experience for the lifetime uh, open courtyards are also used as the recreational spaces along with that they also serve as the cooling agent for the structure so we'll go to the next slide yeah so this is these are the sections uh talking about the about the section aa after the entry we have corridors and in that we have series of column that and then we have a level chain so that people who are engrossed in their own thoughts can like uh give attention to the nearby spaces so by doing this we are extracting a person's attention towards the internal space coming to the feature wall the dead wall was used as a aesthetical view of point so here we try to play with the human psychology uh there's a change in the level so if a person is walking on the plain surface so he would be engrossed in his like tensions or all the thoughts he has when he comes to the kala academy but by doing by giving the level differences so his mind and his focus will be on oh there is a level change so we have to like his brain will function and accordingly the attention will be given to all the spaces uh in which he is walking so this was a psychology which we tried to uh tackle so talking about the section bb we have shown the connectivity from the recreational areas to the weaving deck change of uh, levels are highlighted and the opening under the steps are the connecting agents to corridors to manage the crowd in case there's overcrowding there are multiple entries and exit to manage the crowd after that is the sin kuta uh, is the kun seat out which acts as the seating arrangement so uh this is the section cc uh it is cut along the monument dead walls are exposed concrete which highlights the water sprout so the the basic idea was the about this was the concrete is uh, like uh, <coughs> a monochromatic color and the um uh and the water water feature it gets highlighted uh, due to the monochromatic uh, uh, uh texture so so coming forward to the monument area where we have pradakshina mark after that we have kun seat out and semi open spaces which are placed behind the monuments which helps in circulating warm air in uh, outside and letting the fresh cool breeze inside uh, coming to section dd green plaza is this green space which users can use and get the nature's touch after that we come to pradakshina mark through entry entry way and get to the food court through steps and exit ways so talking about the key features of our design consideration uh we can see the entrance gate uh <coughs> was th this was inspired from the charles coria's previous designs then coming to the semi open corridor while walking through the corridors there are series of column and steps which create a bit of illusion uh talking about the open corridors uh, we tried to create a conversation between the user and space by creating level differences in corridors sculpture dead walls uh, these are used as sculptures also which created a barrier between two spaces and provided aesthetical purpose so coming to the uh, next page uh, texture and red sand face texture wall demarcates internal area of the memorial of uh, uh, featured wall in recreational areas the walls are designed in such a way that it indicated astrological symbols which is influenced from the ancient hindu temples 
At the end of the corridors, we have dead walls, which are bold in color, which, in, which indicates the dead end. Uh, traditional elements, traditional columns enhancing the beauty of spaces. So this was the, one of the key features which we used. And also MS rolled steel beam. It is used for roofing purposes in gallery space and toilet block. Monument spaces, the external walls of memorial are made up of with exposed concrete, finished internal, in, uh, eternal walls, and in red sand face texture. Existing landscape, all of those spaces are created along the existing landscape. Open courtyard used as a communal and recreational spaces. Precast concrete box used as a seating in recreational spaces. Landscape elements, earthen pots enhances the beauty of landscape areas which are influenced from the tradition of India. Uh, openings like created large openings for natural light and ventilation inside the memorial. Kund and seat out which is inspired from the traditional ghats of India. And light and shadow patterns created by using MS pergolas which act as in semi-open spaces. So this was the, uh, this is the material mood board. Uh, exposed concrete and sand faced plaster, co uh, cobblestone, mud pots, bold colors and precast concrete seating and lawn. The construction techniques, techniques which we used was the MS roll steel beam supporting to the roofing. Uh, uh, this is the detail of this. Uh, and these are the views of the Samadhi Stal, Kun sit outs, food court, entrance gate, steps, and production amag. So, this is the block model which we created. And thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I, there's a high level of refinement in the work, and it was quite nice to see the model at the end as well um, you, into it, put into it. Um, in terms of, um, uh, there was a comment made in one of the talks by Professor Balsawar about the void. Um, if you look at the, 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 the proposal, there's a lot of elements that you've taken through your references and understanding of Indian culture and, and architecture in it, uh, all those elements. 
a, a challenge that I would like to pose you in, in terms of an answer. If you had to reduce the elements by 50%, mm -hmm. would it still be a successful scheme, spatially as far as you're concerned? Because the references are quite wide that you've inclu included. So it's complete, but at the same time it creates uh, uh, lots of objects that appear in the scheme. Um, so it's that void versus um, yeah. you know, uh, solid um, concept. And the, the second question, I mean, if you can just remember that one, the second one is the way you uh, enter the building, or the, not the building, it's a memorial, um, it, it's off axis. So you turn, you turn the, the, the visitor on axis 90 degrees yeah. at the furthest point from, from the existing Kala Academy, yes. and then you come back. My question to you is, could could the sequence be reversed because of the way that you've conceived the scheme? And why, and, and how would you read that in perspective as the entrance? Meaning, meaning, in other words, if you come from the academy down towards the river, how would you be able to read that as the entrance without somebody saying to you, I know there's a big portal there, but I mean, that's the second question. So, because your, your exit is actually closer to the Carlisle Academy, am I correct? Uh, yeah, no, uh, the entry is from the, uh, yes. that side, one, yeah. Yes, yes. And the exit is the, the opposite end. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. But I'm, I'm done with my questions, so uh, I'll ask uh, Sachin to ask about the arches. Have you drawn a section through this, uh, a horizontal section through yes, this? Yes, sir. Which is passing through the building? Uh, the yes, existing sir. building? Uh, no, existing building, no. Because uh, what am I going to see from that cafeteria which is there? I mean, am I going to see a blank wall? Uh, no, sir. Actually, uh, we have uh, given a deck, a weaving deck, which is at the height of 2.4 meter, and also we have given the samadhi stall. So, uh, no, I mean, when I'm in the existing cafeteria, what am I going to see? Uh, sir, we will have the overall. We have kept the height till 2.4 meter. So, uh, uh, from uh, from if you see from the uh, cafe's point of view, then we will be having the entire uh, view of the this all uh, Kala Academy, because it is created on the contours. It is at the lower level, so definitely will be having an access to all, the whole site. Well, it would have helped if you had drawn a section through the existing building yes, and yes, your uh, memorial, because I feel I mean I think you have a food court or something which yes, is sir. facing the existing cafeteria. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe that was not required. I mean, they could have just walked into the existing building and uh, toilets and all that. So it, seem, it seemed to be not uh, in sync with the existing building, or uh, ignoring the programs which are there in the uh, existing building. And it's very close to the existing building. Yes, sir. Also, I, I mean, uh, it's not a question, but I'm just telling you what I felt about this. I mean, there were too many things happening here. I mean, uh, if it is meant to uh, revoke your memories about what Charles has done. I mean, this the, there were too many things happening, and mm -hmm. probably uh, you would get confused by the time you come out. You know, so like uh, Henry said, I mean, you should not only cut down by 50 percent. I would say cut down by 75 percent, and leave only 25 percent, uh, if at all. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, um, in terms of um, axes or things like that, uh, elements and all, um, you, I mean, uh, you should have uh, actually not uh, created another building like this. It's, it, it, though it's open, I mean, it, it looks like a huge building on that plot. And uh, I do not see any um, uh, reference to the trees, which are, you know, which are the existing trees. I don't know whether the, the, there seems to be a big tree somewhere, right? Yeah, we have back. big trees around so, our side. Uh, so uh, one of the trees was right uh, very close or almost into the plot, and uh, which you should have made use of, I think, uh, which I do not see. I don't know whether it's still there. Um, so we have created pots and uh, we have created a weaving deck. So uh, actually, that we didn't want to wanted to disturb the tree. So we already re uh, uh, raised the, our uh, the s height of the structure to 2.4 meters so that trees branches can go on uh, like they are at the higher level. So it would be also c uh, creating a shadow on the weaving deck. But also and at the same time we are not harming or we are not uh, compromising the tree. So in this way we tried to manipulate our design. And yeah, the use of the trees was, was also tried, uh, we also used to, uh, we also tried to use the uh, tree in our design. Yeah, but I don't see the big tree, which is, I think, in somewhere between five and six. Yes, uh, actually, we, uh, we 
we have it. put it in the walk through sir okay so i couldn't make out where yeah, it is yes. and how those steps are you know going around it or something is not an i think in terms of responding to a memorial um, it's not an easy design process so yes sir whatever we are raising is more so that we go back and think it's not like there's a final you know we are raising it more and uh, i'd probably raise hypothetical questions through all the not directly on your project but let's assume that somebody saw this design mm -hmm. and uh, not yet built it somebody saw it and someone from amdabad had landed up here and they saw this design and suddenly decided because they saw in this design that maybe the water body in have you all seen gandhi ashram yes sir amdabad that water body in the middle needed a stamba where you write satyameva jayate or whatever uh, ragupati ragava a stamba you know a solid one because otherwise a water body and they ask all whether it should be done not be done um, what would your response be to that so our response would be uh, like if taking consideration the climatic uh, conditions also like here we have given the water body as panjan no, in gandhi ashram there's already okay. the water body yeah, yeah 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 in the middle but there's nothing in the middle okay they see this and decide okay there is a stump here in okay. the middle that that's uh, they decide the client decide this is hypothetical okay. that you know i think this kind of a solid good stump good. and with you know writing of what mathmas or some they come in suggest it you all are the architects invited what would your response be there's no right or wrong in this and these are all spontaneous responses because this is an intuitive process what would your response be let's say let's add a column like can you go to that stump that you all and one is commendable that you all made a model like this to look at it and this kind of a stump you know they okay. they decide that maybe that was can be added it will add some in the sabarmati ashram seeing here what is your spontaneous response so my spontaneous response would be if it adds the meaning to the structure no you tell me whether it adds meaning or not not if it adds <laughs> does it add meaning if it adds meaning in what way do you see it as adding meaning because each one of us is carrying different memories and uh, thoughts so we'll never align you know yes sir but what kind of meaning does it add will it add um and how will one you know interpret or experience it so there is a void and now you know they say and then they say if it is working in sabarmati ashram let's put that same column in jawar kala kendra also this he left it as a circle maybe let us add one stump there right in the middle uh, the chief minister says you know whoever it is and uh, what would you what would your response be I mean, this is more uh, more as a response you know they put a stump there jawar kala kendra then because this can become a new uh, method they may see i'm saying yeah. they may see what would your response be so if it's the client's wish then uh, we would like clients very strong wish okay then we'll try to respect that wish and we'll try to incorporate and we'll try to find out more meanings we'll try to like if there uh, like you said uh, there is a quote or uh, the ragupati ragava rajaram like that so we'll try to incorporate those things in our design and uh, we'll try to make it and uh, make it as a one and a unique character so that it not only gives the meaning to all the uh, whole area but also it uh, enhances it aesthetically gives it a rightful meaning and also it has an impact on the psychology of the users which are present in the uh, our, our area and or our design okay i'll i'll take that but this is just open ended i'll connect with two other issues this is because the others also present let's assume that this was sunk you know there's there are quite a few projects sunk it or let's say in bharat bhavan uh Charles Courier decides let's go with the topography and really sink mm -hmm. it and open it into the lake you know 
and uh, what Korea would generally say is that if if he had not sunk it, you know, and hmm. let's say it placed it like this, not sunk it, as an architectural gesture, and I think that's what uh, <coughs> they were discussing as an architectural gesture. The minute you raise a building on to the ground, hmm. uh, it creates a back. You cannot escape the back. So, do you think now that you raised it, there is a back and if you are given one more month to work on it and say now remove the back because maybe there should not be a back, this is just a, uh, what would your response be? One, do you sense that the minute a building is brought up, if in Bharat Bhavan that's what Korea realized that if that building had surfaced, there is a back. And handling that back or whether that back is really programmatically required became a new dilemma. Uh, now this is surfacing and it's generating how would you handle that back? How would you handle inside outside? Because as a, as a memorial it's, you know, there are, then whether someone says too many elements, less elements, that's a, you know, that's an area to ponder. But here now there is a back. How would you handle that? Or if you want to give your own interpretation of no, the back is required, uh, let's say why. Either way, there is a back, you raised it. So that's what uh, architect Sachin also brought up that what you're going to see, how does it react, and rarely would Charles Korea create that kind of a back, you know, it's because very difficult to handle it, architect. What would you do? Because it's commendable, you did a model, we are able to see it, you know. Others wouldn't have seen it. No, now sir. there is a back happening, what would you do? Uh, sir, uh, if we are talking about creating the back, so, sir, it would be like, we'll try to uh, tackle that uh, situation with using of the level differences uh, by uh, like adding more steps or ramps. So, uh, yeah, this is one way by which we can like uh, tackle the situation and also sir there could be many more things done like uh, if we consider the same situation around the stump so there is a like a corridor uh, around it so we can give a circular or the peripheral ramp or the steps which would be creating different levels so by uh, by doing that we can also reach the required or the desired uh, back or the level which we are uh, like uh, trying to achieve Okay, good. So, I would say think in that line. Okay. Because the back starts denying a relationship which yes, were, sir. imagine the jury had decided we'll turn our chairs and sit that way. <laughs> We've seen the sheets. There'll be another kind of conversation. No? Here we are sitting this way. It would look yes, a little. So, think over, do buildings do that? Does it generate a back? Because as human beings, we connect, you know, there's a forward, back, we're very clear. In a building, it needs a little more reading on what can, and I think that was where Sachin's question came yes, from. Sir. Yes, sir. There is that handling which is necessary, you know. And the parallel I can say is the jury decides now we will turn this way and look that way and let the jury go. On. Then then you'll realize, oh, there is something here which needed to be, you know, looked into. It's not a serious thing, but looked into. Okay, yeah? sir. So I would say it's a commendable job, not an easy project to kind of condense all of Korea's and yes, I think again going back to 50 and 70 percent, um, one notion may be restraint. What does restraint mean in architecture? You know, this, I'm just raising the question. What does restraint mean? Does it take away or does it add value? You know, so that is just a thought I'm raising. So even if a client is asking you not to be restrained and if you see a meaning is getting tested in the lack of that restraint, you know. So I think as an architect, we can start thinking, uh, what is an architect's role in in conveying it to an, even a very strong client in conveying it, you know, then what unfolds is a separate thing. So commendable job. I just thought because these issues came up, I was kind of tempted to bring it up before, you know, the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Thank you all the juries and the members for all your valuable comments. Uh, thank you, jury members. Uh, thank you, uh, Prathamesh and Aniket. That was team two uh, from D.Y. Patel School of Architecture, Lohegao, Pune. We move to... Right. Some technical glitch, that's all right. So we move to uh, team three. Uh, from uh, Pune, we go to Vijayawada, School of Planning and Architecture, Vijayawada, team three. Uh, Nimit and Ruthwick will be presenting their entry. Jury members to note uh, this is team 3 from SPA Vijayawada. They have some printouts to uh, hand over to the jury members. I would uh, request you to go through the printouts. Yes. Yeah, good afternoon everyone. Uh, myself Nimit and uh, my friend Ruthwek, we would like to begin our presentation. And so I would start with the thought that I would often find myself in endless discussion with my colleagues and friends on what it takes to be a good architect or is architecture really impactful? Does it create any difference in our lives? This would range from issues of innovation in practice, vision for the future, vernacular contribution or cost effective practices which are involved in a project or sometimes about clients' aspirations as well. Being a young architect, you would always want someone to look up to. And there was no one who would fit the bill better than late Charles Coria. Charles sums up everything that we define as being a contemporary architect, or to be specific, a contemporary Indian architect. So, uh, in order to understand the rainbow, we need to first know about the rain. This initial part of the presentation would talk more about Charles Coria's journey as we understood it. So we analyzed Coria's journey in three phases as per our viewpoint. Uh, this is purely our understanding of what Coria, because we have never met him, we have just seen his works and read about him. So first belongs to his phase of exploration. Then comes the part where realization and self-actualization happens. And then somewhere around it begins the journey of sharing wisdom and inspiring people. Although it was happening uh, usually, but this is the time when he proactively engaged into it. So he was born in Sikandrabad, lived in Mumbai, and belonged to a village named Moira in Goa. And the best part is he never strayed away from his homeland. Uh, you, uh, he, he was called as a Bomoikar, Bombay Goan in Konkani, we call it. So Korea did his schooling in Mumbai and then went to America in initial formatic years of his architectural voyage. All this was happening, like uh, this is just to set up the context of who he was. All this was happening parallel to the freedom movement in India. After coming back to an independent young India in 1958, he started his practice called Charles Korea and Associates. Then he embarks on a journey or a search for Indianness, as we would like to call it. He redefines the architecture of post-independence era through his critical understanding of the nuances found in our culture. Even though he was schooled in the West, he was not interested in international style modernism which was too much proactive about using glass and all, all that. So he has always placed a higher value in traditional or vernacular architecture while working towards his design language. Initial projects like Sabarmati Ashram, National Crafts Museum all shows about dealing with the context across the country. Then, when I talk about his research part, he was appointed as an urban planner in late 1960s for designing the plan of Navi Mumbai. Slowly, he started engaging in the realm of research and analysis of design strategy for the future of India by compiling an exhibition of Indian architecture known as Vistara. This is very prominent. Setting up institutes like UDRI, uh, which is Urban Design Research Institute, and heading the National Commission on Urbanization for India and multiple other research-oriented works. He was also awarded Padma Shri, Reba Gold Medal, Aga Khan, and Padma Vibhushan Award. So, the prominent part which we took out while researching about this design entry and all that was Vistara, the book, uh, the exhibition book. And few of such works, uh, so, so, in a way, when he mentioned this idea of man and the context in the exhibition Vistara, which boils down that fundamentally the man and his functioning 
does not change whereas the context in which he perceives himself changes significantly the idea of human and cosmic this complex ambiguous and interesting relationship between the man and the cosmos has always been central to the indian architecture he mentioned in vistara since the beginning of time that man has sensed the existence of a non manifested world take the example of pyramids look at the idea of that building it was a building made by a pharaoh during his entire life just to rest in the afterlife like how beliefs drives the way architecture is perceived for example look at ziggurats in mesopotamian civilization it's a stepped pyramid to reach to the heaven or for example look at hindu religion or jain religion they have entire practices to look at after life of human so this is the way how non manifested impacts but what happens is we as young designers don't consider this aspect of metaphysical reality much when we approach our design process we are entangled too much into bylaws placing infrastructure and policies in place that we forget the beauty of intangibles which exist around us and this can be very much uh, you know uh, be seen by religion philosophy arts and architecture that celebrate the idea that can celebrate the idea of non manifested so now we would like to take you uh, to journey of charles coria through his works the way how he did addressing the duality indian notion of existence is about addressing bipolarity where opposites reinforce each other may it be the purusha or uh, prakriti or light and darkness solid and void they are mutually defining aspects one shapes and gives validity to the existence of the other hence apparent extremes coexist in the architecture of korea look at the building typologies which he did belapur housing is purely about incremental mixed income housing which is low rise and high density in nature and look at the kanchenjunga apart apartment which is about high rise and high income group and that building is purely like a sculpture then comes the second point which is about simplifying the complexity korea had this neck of breaking the complex topics like navagraha mandal or uh, for that matter panch tatva into simple elegant looking architectural form uh, sorry Uh, most of his works are complex to understand but effortless if we engage in the building then comes the third point which is about celebrating the context climate and context are given major importance in all of the korea's buildings context when i say it is not just limited to the site it's also limited to the culture people arts and other things of the place or the region both these buildings are the clear example of celebration of the water bodies near them one is bharat bhavan bhopal and the other one is champali mod center in lisbon then comes the interesting part that how people engages with his architecture which is sensed by the use of colors and forms as a visual metaphor korea's buildings are significantly different from any other modern piece of architecture they are visible differently due to its balanced forms and interestingly stark colors then comes the meaningful transition space which he brings in transition spaces are keys to korea's building as he used to stress too much upon the use of verandas thematic courtyards as well as every building used to have a sense of journey the transition in korea's building is really intriguing and engaging so we specifically are fascinated by the diversity and amount of work produced in different genres he has done projects ranging from a hotel cultural center memorial low cost housing to urban design and planning one thing is sure from his works that architecture is not about going back in time and doing the same things again it's about reinventing the values in a vocabulary or syntax which is relevant as per the current context so from here uh, we 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 go back we go to the context so a brief understanding of the context because i know all of you have known it since the previous presentation so this is basically a building for the pedestrians which is blending with the landscape with a very human friendly scale and a perfect place to declutter the mind for people living nearby the place so how our approach to design started was we named our design project as manthan manthan aims at providing the spaces which facilitates the exploration of new vistaras vistaras is nothing but uh, the avenues for the expansion of knowledge like you gather in a community and talk about different topics taking inspiration from the man who believed in the architecture should represent the truth of the place we designed a memorial keeping in mind the accidental walks of people through kala academy 
which brings them to the cafeteria and then delights them with the visual of Mandovi River. So, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. So, uh, when we say Manthan and Vistara, we, we use this idea of uh, raised platforms and sunken courtyards and then uh, ritualistic pathway and empty center which are very prominent uh, things in Korea's architecture. Uh, so now come to the design development process. The, like the way I approach the site, the site is about the uh, Goa's and Korea's connect. It's about the culture of East and West, the place of art, music, architecture and literature. It's the place of great teachers as a Korea puts it. Goan architecture is a result of layering of multiple cultures and diversities. The context includes the Kala Academy, which is the symbol of Sir Charles Korea legacy. The, the river Mandovi, along with the lighthouse near the site, provides a visual anchor or a sense of direction. And the existing trees on the site, which just makes the design process more empathetic. They were taken as a major cues for a design. After that, we did some uh, visual explorations and found out the existing public movement pattern around the site. This helped us to optimize the zoning for the project. View 1 was considered the most delightful views as per us because it gives the panoramic view with the backdrop of Kala Academy and the infinite view of Mondovi River. Memorial design is about the user experience and do it architecturally. Design is a uh, designing a journey is very important. We classified the site in the three zones. The zone of approach, the zone of engagement and the lastly, the like the zone of consciousness. The zone of approach that creates the sense of curiosity to engage with the building. Zone of engagement the consisting of a pause points and creates the possibility of accidental conversations. The zone of consciousness, the final point of the journey where a user reflects on the experiences. Approach. Approach is provided through the multiple entryways, which gives a sense of freedom to choose. Zone of engagement is defined by race platform and sunken courtyards, which makes the journey playful. And the last stage is about the solid and void. It consists of a closed exhibition space with a green roof for a lingering. The trees provides the shade, whereas the domical element on the roof provides the light. Opposite, reinforcing each other again. The courtyard are themed with the different color, and we gave them name as a different yantras. As the yantras are the geometric depictions of the cosmic order. They are used as a aids to meditation. So now, coming, coming to the floor plans, basically the floor plans would show you the complex arrangement of spaces like a maze, which includes multiple seating and lingering spaces. The use of space is left to the choice of people or hopefully the communities which will be formed by the people while using the courts. We didn't want to assign the function to any of the courts. The idea was to extend all the functions which Kala Academy already has and give them a beautiful space. The plan at 1.5 meter level clearly shows you the relationship between the poche and the usable space. When I say poche, it's basically the solid mass between the walls. Nothing is relevant without the presence of the other. Also, the exhibition space to become uh, aims to become a place of celebrating and archiving wor works of Indian architecture. As I heard that Charles Correa in his speech to Reba uh, mentioned that there was very less facilities for archiving methods of Indian architecture. So this is just a mere attempt to add to it. This would initiate the, uh, this, these views shows some shots of strategically placed elements which creates a visual appeal in the minds of the visitor. Like the first one is about the entrance, the second one is about the nine grade coat which we put it in the middle and the third one is about the performance spaces and the fourth one is also a transitional coat and a performance space. So when he says about the idea of uh, ritualistic pathway and an uh, empty center, Going through this entire memorial center, a user engages in a journey of conscious ups and downs, which we named as Vistar Path and Manthan Path. So Vistar Path lets you engage to the infinite views of the surrounding and Manthan Paths are sunken courtyards, which, which gives you a sense of confinement and dives deeper into the uh, introspective thinking of a user. So during all this, a user uh, sorry, 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 uh, a user engages in a journey of conscious ups and downs, which leads to an indoor exhibition space and then to the roof, which is a place to relax and merge with the nature around. But during all this, a user takes a production of the nine grid court unintentionally. The nine grid court with an empty center is a symbolic representation of Sir Charles Correa's legacy and as a homage from our side. 
the elevation is more sort of uh, the elements which we put and at the same time the play of people around along the different spaces so this is the place where we wanted to highlight the user as well into it and when we look at the section this section again signifies the idea of duality which we focused uh, very much with its level difference open and shaded spaces and definitely by the play of cyography on walls then coming to the another section this shows the care for the existing contours on the site and doing minimum change for the process of design so uh, while coming to the views this is basically sir the view from uh, the right from the co uh, cafeteria you engage into this and you see the colors of uh, korea lying there and a small water body where you guys can sit and just relax then comes uh, the last part uh, if if we if we climb on the top this is known as zone of consciousness there are these domical elements and here from here you can see the mandovi river along with the existing kala academy sorry along with the existing kala academy and when we sit here these domical elements also provide a visual direction to engage with the views then coming on to the journey part the colors which we have assigned to the courtyards always appeals a user to engage into the other courtyard like inside the journey when we are into one space we want to travel into the other space and these kind of uh, steps are created for the user to engage the ramps are also provided kya ho raha hai okay sorry so the ramps are also provided to connect multiple floors and the floors the upper path is raised 1.5 meter above the ground and the lower parts are uh, sunken below 1.5 meter so charles kuria's work is a representation of the lyrical qualities of light and shadow the beauty that can be found in humble materials the power of color and the joy of woven narratives in space the memorial is not just a remembrance to the master but an humble effort to revive and spread the ideas of what charles believed in which is the expansion into the space is also simultaneously a journey inward into our own selves and coming to the video the kala academy the memorial and at the same time the mandovi river but it doesn't obstruct the view so uh charles was someone the next slide charles was someone uh, sir charles was someone who has that rare capacity to give physical form to something as intangible as culture or society and his work is therefore critical aesthetically sociologically and culturally i request we should all strive to learn for it thank you Thank you. Um, firstly, I think you've what I can see in the work. You, you've enjoyed doing the competition. Yeah, definitely. Firstly, <laughs> so congratulations on that. Um, and there's a high level of refinement. So I can see that you really probably started early. You gave yourself time, and you 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 ended up with a with a 
a presentation which is very sophisticated and I can see behind it there's a lot of thinking and changing and crafting. Um, and the way that you've dealt with, uh, so it's a comment the, with the site, the fact that we can see the context completely, the existing building, the, the, the river on the other side, um, and uh, um, the reduction, you know, the, the fact that you've distilled the, 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 the product. Um, the one thing that I would comment on is in terms of you, you um, maybe I've listened to Charles Correa twice, I had the, the privilege of listening to him. You would have presented it in a much calmer way. You know, so you, uh, you were so uh, sort of uh, excited about your own project that you, uh, maybe you could have done that in a different way. But you know, just I'll highlight the points because my feeling was when I saw the document um, earlier, we, we got it beforehand, uh, is that it was really nice to see a, a project that is uh, accessible, legible, and uh, I mean, we spoke about background and foreground and void and solid and so on, um, and, the, and the sense of humor in it. Um, I also think it's the sort of uh, design where you, um, you've got these spaces of different types and you can almost sense the suspense as you go through those gateways um, into the next space. So I think that was also, and the, and the route isn't that obvious. You know, the route seems to be fairly serendipitous. Uh, and I think serendipity is a very specific concept and a principle right. in Correa's work, which is not linear, it's not anchored by axes, specifically about exploration. always yeah so it's you step off the line and so on um just a, a question in terms of your decision because you as i said you it was so dense in terms of your presentation your idea to tilt up spatially hmm. the landscape on the right Maybe. i found an interesting concept because what you're doing is you you in a way saying the color academy is is an edge it's a it's a space defining component this this structure has the potential to do something and in a way enhance it by, but you also create a blinker towards the right. Um, so, I mean, that's a, that's a question because you didn't answer, you didn't talk about that specifically. And the, th the other one would be your accessible roof space and the nuisance of creating health and safety. There's just a practical question yeah. because I wouldn't like to see rails either. I you know, like it the way it is, abstracted. But I mean, as, a, as arch architecturally, how do you deal with it? Because it becomes a nuisance. And, uh, so to have rails up there, and that's not the way you presented it. I mean, because everywhere you look at, you know, you just see the abstracted form. But it's a reality yeah. that you know, people are going to be moving on those spaces. So that's a practical question. But you can answer those. I've, maybe I shouldn't do the, make the same mistake going on to for, for too long. You can, <laughs> you can answer my questions. Thanks. Sir, uh, uh, starting from the part where you mentioned about the slope roof, uh, like it was a very conscious decision to put it slope because when we term it as the zone of consciousness. The first one is about engagement. Then when we see the courtyards, it's about, uh, sorry, the first one is about uh, zone of approach. Then comes the zone of engagement. When we say engagement, it's about those maze-like courtyards which, which keeps you engaged. And then when you reach that point where zone of consciousness comes in, the very slope tells you to mind your step. And when you say mind your step, and also along with it, there is this trees which gives a shade to the lingering space and at the same time those domical elements. So majorly the slope part was also to create a sense of uh, open air theatre or a seating platform to view the river and the context which we were focusing on. And your uh, second question was about uh, the safety part. To be very honest, we also realized at a later point but then we don't want to give a huge bulky kind of balustrades and all. So possibly if it gets built or something, we'll provide some very sleek kind of rails just to not hinder the view and also to provide safety. I would like to see the rails either, but I, I yeah, would but definitely, say. <laughs> Thanks. Mm, very, very nice presentation. Um, I like the drawings because of the clarity, uh, you know, the way it was presented, the use of colors and all that. Um, and uh, definitely very attractive presentation. You couldn't miss it. Uh, I also like the idea of you placing that uh, structure where, with the sloping roof at the back, I mean, far away from the structure, and uh, also the idea of sitting there and looking back at the building and the view and all that was very nice. Celebrating. Yes, that was really nice. Uh, again, I mean, I did not see any sections which, are, which was passing through the building and the existing building. Uh, 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 what was the view from the cafeteria? Because it's again very close to the... Sir, if you, if, you, if you specifically look at this view, we have consciously created that window 
to just have a linear view but i agree that this is to a certain point and when we analyze those google earth images right now at the site there are so many shrubs which are there which are almost at the height of 1.5 so anyways from the cafeteria we are not able to look at it that's why we raised it 1.5 meter to actually engage with the river yeah i mean uh, i agree that from the cafeteria you can't see the river yeah but there is a feeling of openness you know which is very nice uh, when you sit there and that's the most popular spot i would say in kala academy where you sit outside now probably you will see this right yeah so uh, that's why we created this manthan plaza <laughs> yeah but anyway i mean that's uh, that's something which one has to keep in mind when you building uh, especially in front of a uh, front of an existing building and um, what i also liked was um, uh, that um, uh, the way the spaces are connected with each other but again i mean my question is would you really uh, is there a need for having so many uh, courtyards i mean like 7 okay, or 8 so i don't know 9 you said you mentioned 9 right no sir the uh, the uh, central courtyard is named as 9 like grid courtyard okay but 7 or 5 there are 5 courtyards in total mm. so we basically created there is no certain reason for creating 5 but then we wanted to create a sense of journey that was the initial idea and these courtyards also are not given any specific function the whole intent is that the user will come in engage and make communities and do their own function in the space so it's 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 not at all about doing one thing it's more about celebrating the values of charles korea which was about exploring new avenues when i say exploring new avenues it could be about space exploration and at the same time if they are sunken down it keeps you intact to the root and gives you a sense of that confinement or introspection if we if i put it that way yeah but now in those terms i would also warn you that you should look at the size of the courtyards because in some cases i see they are very small That's you know so when i say a courtyard it doesn't mean it always works you know right. there has to be a certain size depending on the height of the building also and that is very important uh, element Scale. which you need to learn from his drawing i i know like you said in the beginning that unfortunately you haven't met the person and uh, and you've been actually trying to find the uh, the reasons why he had done certain things and all that from the books but um, one very important thing for you a piece of advice i would say that when you show a courtyard of course you have to draw many sections to them and you have to realize that Scale. is this size okay for a courtyard drawing just a square or a rectangle doesn't always work so remember that and also the purpose of it like is this I mean right now I mean uh, you cannot pause there I would say it's more like you know there are too many openings so people just have to walk through one courtyard to another but if I have to really sit and enjoy the courtyard it might be too small so yeah. you have to be very careful when you're designing courtyard it's not the easiest thing to have a courtyard so how do you find the optimized size for a courtyard like it's it's always that uh, we'll discuss some other time okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> but otherwise it was a nice uh, presentation thank you sir Yeah I think this was a commendable presentation not easy to bring in all the layers from the functional to the metaphysical and then try to combine and as Henry and Sachin were saying definitely it's a project I'll have enjoyed you know but again I come back to a very hypothetical question um if one looks at kala niket now you should look at the kala kendra academy Yeah, the academy and you will see how it tries to look at the horizon yeah now if one were to discern a certain pattern you know very hidden pattern in charles korea's work so i'm now i'm just off and after seeing this saying it let's say they had bharat bhavan it opened up and then suddenly opened up into the, the river river into the lake into the lake in bhopal and then here there's another kind of a gesture of very porous pavilions that want to connect with the sea and the horizon and then the project that sachin had worked on with uh, charles yes, in portugal yeah. uh, <coughs> i call it the institution or the availability of to the unknown yeah there again there is a connection with sea with horizon of a certain kind yeah 
and in all whereas let's say a project of voids that Charles Korea creates with uh, Jawar Kala okay. right yeah that's a hot arid um, region region a desert kind of a thing where the courtyard is there but kind of becomes introverted and builds into itself and maybe here and there some opening happens in that precinct to look out you know that the, but that's a very purposeful framing so in a very and then one will see the relationship between culture <coughs> way of life architecture that the way in which it's forming there's one which is saying you know let's it's let's go within because right. it's very hot let's go within let's look introverted the horizon may look too sharp or too and the other one where one wants to even charles square's own home the way it opens up it just opens you would sit there and you know really look at the mandavi river uh-huh. why would you and this is just spontaneous so why would you choose as something and now i'm speculating as when i see it i'm saying why would you choose something of the desert that looks in and gives a frame versus something that would I have said no let's <coughs> keep it open let's absorb and celebrate the river this is this is really a not a question to be asked um, but i'm asking it so it's not a it's just to get a spontaneous response because this is a very well done project you all have condensed all the issues with with a high level of complexity so i'm just it just a thought that crossed you know that sir uh, when we when we talk about courtyard specifically they are obviously the places of gathering and all those things but i've also read or somewhere listened in his one of his speeches that it opens up the entire sky in front of you so when we when when you are saying that it should be calm relaxed and open then then upper part is anyways open so you have the entire sky to engage with the surroundings right and also when we say about the heights these are not very much and also hot and humid climate is there so courtyards again plays an important role uh, in the in the day time or in the evening time and like that so no, for instance, i there's no i think i'll accept what you're saying i'm just saying let's say someone came and you're greeting that person like this right somebody has seen and you're greeting the person like this hmm is there a difference uh, that that's unless for open you know, right those are the kind of gestures one sees in a charles square that something is saying yes or something is saying you know, i need to ponder it, there is a courtyard and then that courtyard starts like in gandhi ashram the courtyard starts having like tension of yeah. wanting to do this but still says river you know there are all nuances to it. I just thought we'll bring it up, but this is a commendable project. I would say it's uh, it's not an easy project in what we'll have done. Sir, so uh, if, I, if I explain our journey, uh, it we just started with some sections and then we started taking cues from his design processes. And to be honest, we don't know how it all came to a sweet spot and settled in. We also were not able to figure that, like trace out the path. but then it somehow happened <laughs> thank you thank you thank you sir thank you jury members thank you nimit and ruthvik for the brutal honesty at the end uh, <laughs> i would uh, call up on stage uh, the fourth team of the day uh, this is the one that is before the lunch so i know you guys are hungry but i think what has been shown is uh, far interesting than the hunger uh, nikunj and kaustup from uh, priyadarshan institute of architecture and design studies from nagpur are presenting they are our team four nikunj and kaustup i'll invite you on stage and request you to keep to the time thank you so first of all thank you rohan builders for this great opportunity uh, good after uh, good afternoon everyone so starting with our presentation certainly 
architecture is concerned with more than just its physical attributes. It is many layer things beneath and beyond the strata of function and structure, material and texture lie the deepest and most, comp uh, most compulsive level of it. It is said by legendary architect Korea. The Charles, uh, uh, this memorial design here is to attain the portrait of outstanding works which are done uh, by Korea during his timeline. And every architectural, every architectural work is articulated in such a way that the visitors would get trenched in the memories of his philosophical, uh, philosophical work. Then coming to the concept, uh, we are inspired by the concept of uh, mandala and uh, which is also a uh, reference to the uh, system of organization where the center square is representing nothing or void but uh, in that nothing we have created our everything like if you see in this uh, the first uh, this illustration there is a green space at center and uh, uh, there are the uh, color image uh, color and uh, color pictures which are created around it that is the additional spaces we have carved out later on while uh, designing Korea's always assign a great power to the concept of empty center and that empty center has a uh, empty center can transform the values of nothingness into a epicenter of energy that is into meaningful spaces. So uh, sometimes it is also referred as a Brahman, which is also known as the central space. And uh, as you can see, this is a small illustration which shows that uh, a courtyard may act as a uh, multiple gathering activities. So uh, we mostly focus on the center square, which is representing nothing, but uh, which is everything. And then coming to this illustration, this is the view from the court, uh, which uh, states the Korea's famous uh, state that Korea's architecture is experience and uh, orchestral rhythm along his navigated pathway that strung together, covered, enclosed and open to sky spaces. Uh, then coming to the concept part, uh, we have uh, use our site in different levels according to the activities uh, like a sunken level is there uh, which is minus 3.25 from the ground level then dynamic level is there which is consist of ramp and wall of culture which was later explained by my partner uh, then ground level and raised level these are the basic level which uh, human can see then coming to the uh, material palette we are ma uh, we are used locally based material that is laterite on a larger scale as well as the amalgamation of color plaster, exposed brickwork, RCC, uh, natural uh, flooring materials, even laterite in somewhere used with the finishing of color, uh, color textures, which have been taken inspiration from his uh, memorial projects. Then uh, uh, as this illustration, which focus on the vision, uh, we have creating a, a series of uh, uh, random openings, small or big, uh, that creates a visual link uh, between inside and outside the spaces and also plays the interplay of light and shadow in that space. Uh, then we have uh, we have mostly de uh, designed according to the existing uh, trees with respect to the site that gives another dimension to our design and we are also focused on the uh, we uh, should balance the design in terms of built up and green area ratio so that uh, in our design we mostly uh, we mostly present our design uh, in uh, green spaces for public interaction and that also gives a feeling of uh, merging a nature matlab, surrounding uh, context. Coming to the ritualistic pathway, as you see in that red, uh, uh, red dotted line in that uh, top uh, right figure, that, uh, that said it's uh, unfold the dramatic quality of space in progression of moment and uh, time anchored with the center that is Brahman and tied the side context around it. Then the another element is site axis, like we have created different axis uh, that is uh, in reference to the lighthouse, in reference to the, uh, uh, there is a very bigger tree in the site uh, from the entry and there is another uh, axis which is uh, with reference to the uh, Mandovi river. Then the transition space also plays an important role while uh, moving from one place to another where we have reflecting the some Goan culture and the traditions as you see in the letter. Uh, then the, uh, this small openings have uh, already told that also act as a uh, creating a air movement in, the, in that courtyard and in the ramp area. This is small view from that, uh, that re uh, representing that uh, wall. Then coming to the visual axis, as you see, there are uh, we majorly play with the three axis. The red one is showing central uh, uh, visual axis, which will enter from the central court towards the public interaction space, that is central OAT, which is in the raised portion of the site. And then uh, there is a black we can see that is in the uh, design is, uh, with reference to the lighthouse axis. 
and then there is a yellow axis which is uh, designed in terms of uh, respecting the Mandovi River and the memorial is tied by a side by series of spaces by a particular view is frame and the sequence of spaces is presented. Then coming to the design development, as uh, in the first uh, diagram we have given this uh, side and we coming to the some after uh, brainstorming coming to the uh, basic zoning of the side, like there is a central space uh, which is uh, shown in the purple color that uh, act as the main uh, heart of the design and uh, then these are the another uh, stepping of the con like um, then we move forward the conceptual stage then intermediate stage and the final proposal have been made. Then I'd like to invite my partner for design for the design. So moving forward, uh, we, in master plan we have proposed entry. So here there is a master plan. We have uh, proposed entrance from the uh, Dayananda Bhandoka Marga, which is uh, denoted by red dash lines. And uh, this is uh, this is the main entrance to the Kala Academy. Then uh, we, uh, where there is an existing entrance to the Kala Academy. This is uh, then there is a Korea Tower, which is shown here. Uh, on uh, in this Korea Tower, there is a memorial cladded with the uh, black granite and highlighted with the Korea's life facts below it. It also has a small water body, welcoming water body, uh, which reflects the image image inside it. Then there is a view of the entrance point. Then uh, this is the site ex exploded view in which uh, ground floor level it consists of Korea Tower entrance area and then central OAT and interactive sitting space then view from uh, frame point and lawn area. After that there is a lower ground floor level which is at the minus 3.25 meter below ground which contains central open space, display gallery area and graffiti wall. Relationship inside and outside tied with the spaces to the site. Abstraction with the visual elements from his memorial projects. Then uh, the building is tied to the site by series of spaces by which a particular view is framed and the sequence of space is presented. Then uh, this is the section uh, which depicts the wall of culture. Uh, wall of culture depicts the rich culture of Goa, its local architecture and thus dedicated to the physically able people, old people as well as all people to experience the journey of uh, journey while walking in on the ramp. Wall of culture and aspiration, it designed concerning the local context of Goa, that is Goan culture, festival, street design and local architecture styles. There are different colors we have used, so they are the meaning of, uh, they are the meaning of Goan architecture. Then uh, there is a, another section, according to Korea, there are two kinds of beauty, that, are, uh, that is uh, inner beauty and outer beauty, which comes from something intangible from the organization behind the plan section from the inherent harmony of the whole. It is, not, it is not easily pursued except by those who can understand three dimensional relationships. The kaleidoscopic experience is created by a kit of parts by Korea. Then uh, moving towards uh, ground floor plan, we have uh, first we have entrance, entrance space, then on the second we have uh, Korea tower, then we have uh, steps uh, which leads us to the uh, Korea court. Then uh, we have uh, six subtopics that is uh, central interactive space, then uh, display gallery area and then C is uh, sit out sp spaces which are uh, around the court. Then D is graffiti wall which is shown here by pointer. Then uh, there is a, a view from balcony uh, at the top and then uh, there is a uh, ramp which is cultural, uh, cultural ramp. Uh, then uh, there is a... Uh, interactive OAT space, interactive OAT space, then after that uh, we have uh, open space on the left side uh, which has a frame point and uh, at the last last spot which is ninth uh, that is our map point. Then uh, there are two views that is bird eye level view of site and then sitting area uh, to view the uh, river side view, uh, to view the river side view. Then uh, we have a lower ground floor plan in which uh, on the lower uh, ground floor uh, plan, on the lower ground floor area, we have uh, we have steps crea we have created steps which was uh, inspiration from the Jawar Kala Kendra Jaipur uh, and Ayuka uh, Pune, which has, which are the abstract or uh, abstract representing the step well. Then also we have created green pockets at the steps 
to make it uh, more lively and we can sit around it then uh, we have wall of culture there are series of openings in the wall to help the supply air movement around it uh, then wall uh, wall punctures create visual axis with the existing lighthouse then we have section uh, through uh, korea court and display gallery and he here is the exploded view of ga gallery which has rcc shell roof with skylight then display of miniature models from memorable projects of korea uh, then uh, moving forward we have central oat interactive space uh, view and then uh, here we have played with the uh, horizontal planes uh, which will give us the uh, entrance entrance vista and there is a section bb dash which is cutting from the uh, central oat and interactive space and uh, korea court then uh, another section uh, from the ramp which is wall of culture and aspiration create a visual drama in the memorial complex then uh, another section from uh, graffiti wall which shows the graffiti wall and korea court sitting area and uh, central oat then here is the aerial view of memorial site during evening time then uh, there is a first view that is court view from balcony at the ground level then uh, second which is central open space view then third one is a view of lighthouse from visual frame uh, then chabutra sitting view charles korea said quality in architecture and planning is a result of understanding constraints and not ignoring and avoiding them how well a building is fit into its site and how inte intelligently deals with the hazard of climate what technology it use and how appropriately they are in term of cost and local availability then this is the view of central oat and interactive sitting area around existing trees design in respect of existing trees on site to make the public interactive space then bird eye level view of memorial an artist is remembered by their art and not by their ideas an architect must build beautiful and memorable buildings can you please start the walk through uh, before starting the walk through we'll acknowledge uh, the walk through is uh, the commentary in walk through in the voice of architect charles korea himself and a blessed art which is from a youtube channel please play the walk the reason the buildings might look more human is that i feel architecture is sculpture but it is sculpture used by human beings india's greatest architect that was the title given to charles korea when he was alive in a career spanning 5 decades he designed over 100 buildings with a design style that spoke to and of the people but perhaps his biggest contribution to society at large is a generation of architects that he inspired teaching them what modernism could mean for india but the legacy of this man goes much beyond just architecture so today let's uncover his story might look more human can you have the presentation please the complete architecture project serves as a tribute to the legendary architect of india architect charles korea articulated some of his architectural marvels which would serve as a torch of light for the budding architectural students as well thank you thank you
Thank you. Um, again, uh, congratulations on the amount of effort and the energy that you put into it. Uh, Thank you. Again, can see that you enjoyed it. I think some of the comments will start repeating now. I think that uh, it just shows how difficult this brief is. Uh, there was um, a lot of the entries up to now has used the references of Korea work and then integrated that into into a proposal. Um, my question, it's a it's a comment and a question, and it's, I mean, we've we made the comment before, again, the number of elements, because if you look at the, the, the spectrum of Korea work, on a building like the Kala Academy building, it's quite reductive on its own as a building. All the elements that appear in other buildings don't appear in the Kala Academy at the same time. They, you know, whether it's Bhopal or the Tower Bowling, those. So in context, he's got a selection of references that he that he uses that distinctly for his work. My question again is, um, doesn't if, if you do a memorial like this, doesn't this become the focus, not the Kala Academy? Meaning that the Kala Academy is a distilled version of a typical Korea building of a certain type where the context and the, and the river and the approach is, is what influenced him as much as... The brief now says, okay, do a, do a memorial. So, so the question is really, really, again, related to that the amount of elements that appear in one project. I mean, that's the, the first point or the first question. The second one is the, 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 the balance between mass and void. And it's interesting that it actually came out in the talks before we started, this void thing. Um, because my view of what you've done is, in that sense, not typical Korea, meaning it's a lot of components added up. So, so the mass to start off with doesn't is not that evident. It's it's more about the components and the elements that are combined and and stitched together. And with that comes a sense of incompleteness sometimes. Because, for instance, uh, a frame could be completed. In other words, a frame would have two shoulders and an axis and you go through it and that creates the calm. In this case, often it doesn't do that. You know, a, a, a wall leans against another wall. So the, the massing doesn't complete itself. So maybe these are unfair questions because you students, you're developing these things. It's sort of comments we always give to students in, in reviews. So I think that's the one, the completeness and also the, the thickness of elements. Because if you look at those walls, they're almost like canvases. Not, not only the canvases that are literally canvases, on that wall there where you've got those images. But the walls themselves start reading like canvases, which gives it a temporary feel. It, it, so it's so almost like the, the lack of weight makes it feel like more like, like an exposition that's temporary, that's only there for two years, and then it's gonna be taken away. So those things I read subjectively in, in, the, in the proposal. <coughs> Sorry, you can answer that before I, I pass on the, uh, the uh, Sir, according to our, matlab, our proposal, what we think is key, uh, as you uh, as your answer to first question that we uh, we all get uh, the architectural element from is different projects so some of the some of the elements we have visually can't uh, uh, we have to show visually like people go there and he can remember in while they are visualized that element like he is a Charles Korea we as an architect can relate through experience the space but a layman can cannot relate that thing so that's why we are putting that element uh, to add uh, additional feature for a layman that's why we are also adding a map point here so that they can understand ki what is the journey is meant for like uh, in terms of architect uh, korea's philosophy we we mostly uh, matlab, we, uh, we are giving the site respect in terms of visual connections to appreciate the site and uh, mandoi river we also give the we also design our uh, proposal in terms of uh, giving a clear uh, frame view for the visitors, they can enjoy that area. So yeah, like uh, the dead wall also can, uh, like I didn't get your second question properly. So but in uh, according to me, ki, uh, this graffiti wall is uh, there because of uh, uh, when the person visited, it is it is in Goa, so he can get us uh, some glimpse of it. Like it might be refined after some uh, further uh, stages. But it's just a uh, graphical and abstract representation of Goa, its culture, its tourism, its architectural monument. And... Uh, sir, asking about the thickness of the wall that are left there, which do not have any, anything on them. Are they, they serve as canvases and people will think they are temporary. They are not there to stay longer. Okay. Because no. the ones that do not have a graphic. Okay, okay. And that act as an enclosure, like 
मतलब वी थॉट लाइक इट एक्ट एज एनक्लोजर लाइक यू टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस वॉल्स ना लाइक दिस Yes, I'm talking about if you look at the plan, all the all the walls are the same same weight, which is the same weight as the canvas wall. So there's no distinction between the permanent and the temporary. Uh, what is exhibition and is was what is built form, uh, and maybe it comes back to the idea of a a good building makes a good ruin. So so what I'm saying is that because it, because of the weight, it doesn't give the sense that it'll make a good ruin. It, it'll be it'll be blown away by the wind. Uh, because of the of the weight of the of the material, so I don't want to give a lecture. I'm just uh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, that's that's the point, and so I just want to reinforce that. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you for the suggestion. We'll thank you. Good. Yeah. Um, now I don't want to repeat those uh, <laughs> questions about sections and all that. I mean, um, uh, even here I saw that the funnel was very close to the cafeteria, existing cafeteria. Uh, also, I thought the reason why you're going down uh, is basically because you do not want to show the building, yeah. uh, right? Or you do not want an object which is in front of the existing building. But at the same time, you have raised those walls all around. You know, so the purpose of going down doesn't seem to have served because again, these walls are sticking out above the ground, and they are blocking the view of the cafeteria, uh, which you. Said that it is for graffiti and all those things, but still, I mean, whether it is required or not required, it's a separate question. But imagine if this, these walls were not there above the ground level, and you see only the ramp going down, and you come to uh, this central courtyard, and even these staircases which come down, I mean, they are not projecting into the courtyard, but they were ending at the face of the courtyard. It would have been a much simpler plan. and once you come down and this gallery which has which is like a dark space i know you have a skylight on top but right now it's got a tiny door which leads to the gallery but imagine if that whole face of the gallery was open looking into the courtyard and you had three walls to display whatever you had i feel it would have been a much nicer space you know rather than trying to build around it so uh, the initial thought which i thought was a uh, which i think is this one courtyard one proper prominent element which is sunken courtyard and the gallery which is on one side of it um, which is also sunken was a very nice thing i also like the gesture of the ramp going down which was also very nice but i would have preferred if it did not have all these walls around it and it was just a ramp going down and um, uh, yeah and then unfortunately i mean the tree even though the staircase is like leading towards the tree uh, it seems to be secluded it's not part of the uh, courtyard you know like uh, i mean if if you see i mean uh, all his sections he always used to draw a tree in the courtyard now imagine if this whole courtyard was somewhere there and if this big tree was part of the courtyard and you have a gallery which is facing into the courtyard you have steps around it and i am going down probably it would have been a simpler nicer project than uh, you know going overboard i mean i felt that this was a little bit overboard even uh, and um, i mean that was my feeling about it when i saw it so the uh, the the beginning was nice or the initial thoughts were nice i mean i like this plan also but when i see three dimensionally it has gone a little haywire sir actually uh, sorry to interrupt you actually why we are raising the walls above the ground there is a reason actually if a person if you see this ground floor plan na uh, if a person uh, like there is also interact uh, interactive sitting space area if a person can uh, go from here he don't want to Uh, see what is inside there like we uh, give people we encourage people to go there this is not only for physically able people or uh, old people like this uh, this uh, we term as a wall of culture and aspiration so we uh, give user uh, matlab we can provoke them ki they should experience the journey and that's why for a safety reasons we have to give this uh, wall in a particular height and to not blocking the view we are partially divided into the series of punches so that they can while walking on this they can see and enjoy in the view frame like uh, if you see in this view uh, this is the uh, punchers like of rank matlab uh, some small punchers some big punchers the person can see uh, see what is beyond that area and for uh, matlab that's why we are 
designing this. Yep. Thank you. I'll try to be as brief as possible. <coughs> now, I think, uh, like the earlier two projects, this is a commendable uh, one has looked at the elements and how <coughs> Charles Correa looked at those elements. And as Sachin was saying, in terms of the plant type or the meandering and, and in what Henry was saying, I think it, when we look at the plant type or we look at just certain components, um, there is a faint hope or there's a hope title of the project, instead of saying Charles Korea Memorial, they changed it to Charles Korea Exhibition Space. Would it have changed or would something have happened or it doesn't matter that memorial is exhibition space or the design would change? I'm just, I'm just wondering. Instead of saying Charles Korea Memorial, they said Charles Korea Exhibition Space. Would it have, I'm just, your spontaneous response to that. Um, like, sir, uh, as your question, ki why, I mean, why this is not an uh, exhibition space now? So, uh, as I uh, said, ki, uh, this would be a direct, uh, some of the elements need to be directly addressed, like his uh, commendable work will be displayed and people will get awareness among, among, uh, among themselves ki how architecture is served for the community as well. So to display directly, we have uh, designed such, we have carved out such spaces. The, the second to that would be that, okay, exhibition space would need to show the entire oeuvre or, you know, journey. and memorial may need to you have a reference in Gandhi Asha memorial we need to abstract for reflection and in the reflection the manner in which Charles Korea himself conveys the spirit of Gandhi is in a certain way there is an exhibition within that where one really gets all the details of Gandhiji's life and elements and language and you get it but it's contained within a larger essential frame which which does not start competing with the notion of the ritual path or you know that so that's the only reason so in that gradation maybe as architects we need to start looking at how does one contain this between an exhibition space and the idea of memory because one needs a certain kind of space for reflection essence of a building does evoke that reflection so that's the only thought in and it's not only your project there are about three or four projects which are doing this it's not easy but i just thought since several projects are doing this and we were we would be discussing that there are so many elements coming in and so the issue is not about all the elements coming in the issue is about how does an architect articulate those elements coming in because in Gandhi Ashram, you have everything of Gandhiji's life. There's nothing that he has not left yeah. out in the memorial. But when one goes in there, one sees an essential simplicity and the life detailing, you know, the language and, you know, of, of, uh, of Gandhiji becomes condensed so that I can absorb it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't sit in debate with the idea or the notion of the memorial. So I think that's something to look into. There's no clear answer on that. It's each architect would kind of express it in the way they see it. But it's an idea to think of. Yeah, sir, it needs to be re redefined. Yeah, because yeah. there's a memoriam, there's an exhibition. How do I convey that? You know, that's that's the only issue. I think well done, but it just that gradation something is, I'm just wondering. I, I was just thinking while Professor Bosso was talking, it's, it's how, is it a poem or is it an essay? You know, because if it's a if it's a poem, it's maybe more of a memorial than an essay. Because an essay tries to tell you everything that you possibly can. Maybe it's ten pages, whereas a poem is just a few paragraphs. 
And, and the difference is quite profound because you must think much more carefully when you write the poem. You've only got that one opportunity. Where in the essay, you can actually omit things and you can even have some typos in there. <laughs> and that's okay. Thanks. I'll just add to, since it's said poem, and then we close for lunch, unless the other. Mark Twain once wrote an 80 page letter to his friend. And he said, I'm extremely sorry I'm writing an 80 page letter to you because I had no time. <laughs> so it's like downloading from Google and submitting an, uh, a composition. Just think over it. I'm not saying this is right, wrong, you know. We, we come from a certain era. There are a lot of many eras. So we also, when we're listening, we are trying to learn from this. It's not, it's not saying this is the right or there's no right and wrong. But just to kind of nuance, where is this coming from? What did Korea try to express? And what is the value we are trying to connect back with Korea uh, in, in, in trying to manifest something like this? You know, Very well done. I think it's a well, yes. well thought. Thank you, sir, for your valuable comments. We definitely re redefine it according to time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Nikunj and Kostup. Uh, I think that energy was felt. Uh, I think uh, if I had to sum up uh, the first half of these presentations, um, though the elements part was uh, getting repeated and the sections were uh, missing, I think uh, more or less everybody was trying to capture the essence of Korea in uh, from a lens of a um, layman or a student more than uh, also uh, the designer's uh, perspective or lens. So I think a fairly a good job by all four teams uh, as a onlooker or an audience I would feel. So thank you all the four teams who presented. Thank you jury members for all your comments and uh, patience. Uh, we are on time and uh, in fact good timekeeping by all teams. So a round of applause to all four teams. Uh, we will uh, break now for lunch. Uh, Lunch is uh, arranged for all participants and volunteers uh, uh, and invitees uh, uh, downstairs near canteen and uh, uh, we will uh, take the jury member to the jury room as well. So uh, thank you everyone. Be back here at 2.30 sharp for team 5 to present who are join joining us from Poland online. So uh, we will let you know about it. So 2.30 p.m. we roll. Thank you so much.
uh, we would uh, start now. So uh, welcome to the third session of this uh, Drawing Board 2022 competition, Jury Day. We're going to move on to our fifth team, Michelle and uh, Mikhail and uh, Sebastian from uh, Poland joining us live. And uh, I hope you are able to hear me guys and you can start your presentation now. Jury to note, uh, team five uh, from Poland. Yes, we are. Uh, Good luck. Okay. We welcome you to the presentation of our project called The Roof, which is a memorial uh, to work of Charles Correa. Our names are Sebastian Skrzypkowski and Michał Ryplewicz. And we are from Poland, from Gdańsk University of Technology. In today's presentation, uh, we want to introduce you to our project called The Roof, like I said. We divided our presentation in seven important parts in which we will talk about inspiration, designing process, final plans and sections, accessibility features, uh, activity features, and uh, visualizations that we did for this project. Uh, we will work on axonometry, you can see by the side of the screen. Uh, the name uh, simply is just a reflection of what we did. It's just the roof over a park. Uh, and that's what we ended up when we uh, tried to work off something that would bring Charles Korea architecture to mind. We will start by bringing up inspiration that we feel like uh, mostly affected our work. First of all, we wanted to use round fillers that divide our architecture diagonally when we achieved our horizontal division by inspiring by the academy that sits nearby. Also, you can see that the thing inspired uh, us may maybe the most in the actual the architecture of Charles Correa were multiple square-shaped openings in different sizes. We decided uh, to create many modules of holes, like in the reference photo, and scattered them around the design, as well as show the differences and irregularity in the levels on which he was working on. We also referred to the shape of the academy uh, as the context. Now we will talk about design process that guided uh, us all the way through up to our finished project. We divided that process in sections to easily show how and why we did the things that are seen in our project today. Uh, so, firstly, uh, the site on which we are designing was leading us all the way. The terrain on which we are putting our roof had a little lean directed to the Man Mandavi River. Uh, one of the things that we focused on uh, was in our project was the nearby lighthouse that is located uh, behind the trees on the right, left house. And also we wanted to focus on the way the people use the site now, and or at least the way we think they use. Uh, the idea of connecting the lighthouse with the academy resonated strongly with simplicity of main paths. So in conclusion, the idea of the most important things nearby guided us to creating the paths in directions uh, that you can see in the slide. Uh, next, after, uh, the, after we acknowledged the way we think people move and the way we want them to move, uh, we started thinking about the public spaces. First of all, these spaces could be used for resting or even work in the fresh air. We decided to create two big public spaces, as you can see on the side. Uh, one is focused around the big tree that lives in the middle of the site. And the second one is also in the middle, where, when we later decided to place a water pond. Also during that stage, of thinking, we adjusted the freshly created paths to the topography of the terrain. Uh, not only we created two big and important public spaces, 
but also a collection of small that have the same usage but are far more intimate and personal while being used. Uh, when we thought about the location, we wanted to put them near to the main paths, but not too close. We wanted to give them some uh, of the atmosphere of the romantic places as we heard of. The next part is about shortcuts. Uh, we had in mind that it will be used by people as the shortest way of moving from one public space to another. Those shortcuts are just the answer to the known problem of modern world that people are always in a rush and all they want is to reach destination as soon as it is possible. Uh, next, we started shaping the monument. Uh, we start, started by creating rectangular roof as our main strong point with a horizontal division that would, would acknowledge the main aspect of the academy as well as give some of the space personality. We meant that it would create a little shadow or a place to stay and bust some of the aspects of the public spaces we talked before. We also adjusted its height to the Goa Academy itself. Uh, furthermore, we adjusted the volume to the existing greenery. We made some uh, in envisions in the structure to make all of the existing plants untouched, uh, to make them live flawless without any interruptions. Uh, we didn't want to let our roof be just as it is. That's why we wanted the structure to resonate something more, to not lose any of the space, and earn an, an effect of walking in the rooftops. That's why we connected the two levels by inserting stairs and also an elevator that could give an access to the second level to everyone. Uh, using the places in which we created public spaces, smaller and also the bigger ones, uh, we decided to let the light in by creating a system of holes that was before mentioned. Uh, it also gives a space for the new trees to grow through them. Uh, for us, the most important holes uh, are, of course, the two above the main public spaces mentioned before. Uh, these are the uh, ones that are the biggest amongst all, and also the ones that let, let in the most of the lights to the ground level. For us, the effect created by the holes at all looks like a light, light, light theater, which is constantly changing because of the different sun angles in, and intensivity. Uh, the last one thing that we decided to put an additional second level roof over one of the main public spaces, uh, the one with the pond, uh, covering it with an ele uh, which covered an elevator. We wanted to make it solid to create a possibility for people to enjoy the picturesque view without being exposed to strong sunlight. Uh, its location is also based on an axis between Goa Academy and the aforementioned lighthouse. And lastly, we didn't only want to adapt our project to the existing greenery, but also decided to make it even more in part with the nature. Uh, so that's why we added plants to the structure. Apart from the trees, we wanted to underline the bare concrete by adding hanging plants placed on the vertical surfaces. Now we will talk about the final project and uh, that creation we just described. Uh, we will start by showing you plans that show the things we just talked about and more. On those plans, you can clearly see that our main public spaces are located on the ground level around pond and a tree, like mentioned earlier. Each of the public spaces is located on a different height. Mm -hmm. That's because we wanted to adjust our design to the topography as much as possible without losing the functions of the pavements. 
on the plan of the roof, you can also see the specific locations of our openings and how it colorates with each other with the public spaces seen on the left. We also wanted to show some of the materials we used on the ground floor. On the sections, you can see that we decided to make our roof in opposition to site, which is very diverse and sloping. Uh, very sculpted. You can also see the way we let the light in and uh, let the trees grow out. One of the most important things we had in mind creating uh, was the accessibility to, to every level we had that uh, decided of our use of things you, uh, you can that can make a life simpler, not only for disabled, but uh, for ordinary people too. We created pavements with max incline of 6% to make sure everyone can take a walk there without having any troubles. Moreover, we added an elevator in the middle to make sure everyone can participate uh, in activity on the second floor. Activity uh, is one of the most important things that we know of, but the thing we wanted to encourage was activity in another way, using the public green space that we give people in order to achieve the peace of mind while working or resting uh, in the close uh, to the nature, not destroyed, distracted by things that are happening ne nearby. Here are symbolic ways of showing the way our holes works. Our main uh, feature of design are uh, those holes itself, so we wanted to make them as functional as it, it is possible. That's why, apart from bringing the light into the interior of structure, we also let new planted trees uh, flawless growth without any issues. That's what we talked about earlier. And for the people, we decided to suspend a net in some unused holes for nature uh, that makes a great space for relax as well as uh, creates another uniquely shaped shadows on the ground floor. So now we will show the visualization. Uh, while we are doing them, we had in mind to show the colorations between nature and people as well as the light coming in. As you can see, the integration of the uh, greenery from the inside and outside of our pro uh, building architecture and how it works with the concrete, which is our main material. As you can see, integration of greenery from the inside and outside uh, is very important for our project. It makes the second floor look like a field or path between the treetops, which uh, we wanted to make accessible as possible. And here you can see uh, the only uh, two stories high column located in the middle of our design that brings some of the freshness and allows us to use it uh, a place uh, perfect for the ivy to climb or uh, hanging the additional greenery. Uh, that's probably it for it, but uh, now we will show you the uh, movie we created in a model which could uh, help you understand more of our project.
Okay. Now we thank you for everything. That's everything. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail and Sebastian. Uh, I hope you're able to hear me. Uh, wonderful presentation. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to request the jury members here to ask you questions. And uh, you can listen to them carefully and then answer. Over to you, jury members. I, I don't know what time it is in Poland, but welcome to India. It's, um, I think that the, the project in its abstractness needs to be evaluated on its own terms as a, as a uh, concept. Um, we'll just try and uh, check if the audio could be... Uh, Can you hear us? Sebastian, uh, Mikhail, are you able to hear us? Uh, I'm not hearing exactly perfect the, the questions. Now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, brilliant. Okay, yeah, what, I, what I was saying to the audience locally, welcome to, to India from Poland. It's, uh, it's nice to see you guys um, online. Uh, the, the comment I want to make is I think the, the abstraction that you've brought to your project or your proposal um, and the abstraction is something that was pre-selected by um, the committee before we came um, on board as the jury. And I think the, uh, the beauty of it um, was, was recognized by them. Uh, my, mine, my, mine would only be a comment, really, um, is that because of its abstraction, you've taken a very sort of uh, discrete element of Correa's work and you've integrated that in an abstraction and that became your roof and that became the structure and then you carved away and it became an artifact which is independent in its own right. So that's my comment on it. Um, but maybe my question to you would be, it also has the sense of an inc incomplete building. Like you would, you'd, you'd travel in Greece, for instance, and you would see columns and slabs of incompleted structures. You see that all over the world. <clears throat> that, that incompleteness, um, is, is that conscious? Or is that something that just came out of the abstraction of the principles? So the fact that it reads like uh, a, an incomplete structure with, which misses walls, for instance, because in the work of Correa, if one has to look at it literally, it's very much about the wall, not about the roof. Um, and you've created the roof. So it's, an, it's almost an inverse of the principles. So it's a combination of questions and, and, and comments. If you can just respond, and then I can move on to the next uh, jury member. It, it was conscious. I guess we wanted to, uh, because we feel like our roof is so much uh, I don't know how to say it. It's similar to the academy that's nearby, and we wanted to make uh, them talk with each other, with the differences they have and the things they have each other in common. We just wanted to make make the, a dialogue work. I mean, it's it's and the thing about unfinished, it's it's also consciousness because as we didn't put walls in it or uh, didn't close it. I mean, we left it completely open for the usage, like a park or something where you can walk in every, every time. We wanted to uh, also, because we don't have walls, we don't, also we doesn't, we didn't want it to use any material than concrete just to show how rough uh, the, it works with the nature. Okay, thank you for that. I, don't, we, I think we also accept that it's the sort of structure that will probably become more beautiful in time. And we've been talking about uh, Charles Correa as one of his first projects, the Gandhi Smarak, which is, a, for me, a, a more beautiful structure now than it was when it was built um, because of the, of the layering and the patina on the, on the, uh, on the structure. Thanks a lot. I'll, I'll uh, hand you over to uh, Sachin. Thanks, sir. Yeah, hi. Um, it was a nice presentation. Thank you uh, very much. Um, can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much, too. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, yeah, from what I saw, yes, it does resemble the, the existing building, and it does look like an extension of the existing building. 
though I was not very sure how uh, exactly it is going to um, uh, make people remember Charles Korea, uh, especially people who come there who have no idea about Charles Korea. So uh, how is it that uh, this building is going to uh, work as a memorial? I mean, I have really not understood. So any thoughts on that? We also, we didn't want to make a, like a, like to say that, uh, I understand the questions, but we didn't make, we wanted to make a sign that says uh, just uh, memorial to Charles Scalia. We wanted to uh, acknowledge his work and uh, to create something that someone who would knew of Charles Scalia would uh, understand that uh, is standing there. But um, I mean, it's, we didn't, I just want, like I said, we didn't uh, want to make it like a big sign that says it's a memorial for Charles Korea, but we wanted to use, make something functional for the people that learn at Goa Academy that you could use it and in this way, uh, memo, uh, uh, just uh, memo, uh, let the memory of Charles Korea live in them, I guess that's what I wanted to say by using the thing that would bring uh, their mind to it. Okay, thank you. I'll hand over the mic to Durganan. Yeah, I... <clears throat> Is it audible? Uh, yes. Okay. See, I would... Uh, it, it has been a complex... Uh, design project. Yeah, it's not all that straightforward. And uh, taking from what Henry was saying, uh, we would, in this project, traverse through your interpretation of a memorial. Yeah, we, we, we are, let's begin that we accept this as uh, a very distilled, abstract uh, artifact or fragment um, that calls upon a memory of a profound architect. You know, I'm just restating it in a certain way. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, and, uh, and this is not about question answer. This is about uh, spontaneously responding to what comes to mind, you know, when I'm bringing this up. At the same time, there has been what one may call the crisis of the modern artifact, if I can name it. You know, there's a crisis where it may have been termed the international style or the, the kind of abstractness that concrete brought while it was powerful at one level. Uh, I think architect Charles Korea himself began to recognize some point in time. I mean, in Bangalore, he had done the uh, Vishweshara uh, tower, again very powerful, but he began to somewhere reflect upon the fact that uh, it needed a certain rooting in a, in a certain vibrancy of the culture. This is just a thought that uh, Charles Correa probably brought up in the late 70s and mid 80s. So even in Kala, uh, <coughs> the academy there, you will see that the wall gets animated uh, with a kind of a De Chirico painting and it, or there is Mies, it gets animated, there's an animated wall. This is just for a, a counter, huh? this is for a counter. We accept your abstraction. I think it's wonderfully done and I'll just qualify how I saw the abstraction uh, so that it just doesn't look like. Uh, but there was an unfolding of time from those 60s the need to return to something very essential to, let's say when he comes to Jawar Kala Kendra and his later projects really begin to uh, revel in a certain understanding of life which absorbs the cultural, whereas maybe the early work with a stronger impact of uh, the modern language uh, may not have, may not have, I'm just keeping it open may not have had the felicity or ability to absorb 
the cultural context in which it uh, was born. You know, so that's one. Having said that, I would say let's let's commend your abstraction brilliantly. Whether you're conscious of it completely, not conscious is not the issue. Uh, like for instance, the first time a round column had to sit on the earth, and even today, architects uh, may not or may see that abstraction. Uh, when Kubuzia was designing Villa Savoy, he realized that it had to sit in grass, not on a paved. So I, I did see a certain um, expression where a few columns are sitting on made uh, ground, and certain columns are sitting on what one may call raw or wild ground. So th there are different meanings that if a column came and sat into the grass, it means something else, like it's, it's, uh, it could be a fragment, an incomplete fragment. There are a lot of other readings that come uh, of that. And at the same time, incidentally, incidentally, because I don't think in an abstraction like this, we would discuss functionality, activity, because that, that's really for each uh, citizen who goes there to enact and perform what they need within that space. It, it's as open-ended that each one can enact and occupy and appropriate the space in the manner they want. And yet it gives a kind of a structure. And the, I think the double roof uh, provides that kind of uh, anchoring. Whether the elements uh, are in agreement, not agreement, uh, one is not getting into that kind of a discussion. So this is where the abstraction. So I would like to know your view or perspective. Why is it that the layers after the 60s that Korea is so deeply immersed in, uh, whether it was Jawar Kala Kendra, the need to activate a building, the need to respond to with certain elements, the vitality of those elements. Why would in a memoriam uh, that those, that sequence of Korea's oeuvre uh, not see uh, an expression? Why would one fixate a Charles Korea of the 1960s for the memoriam? Because even in the Kala Academy building, he has taken it much more beyond that, that phase of the Vishweshwara Tower. Why would you then go to a stage before that? Commendable abstraction, all that accepted, this is a question beyond that. You know, why would you, would you ponder on that? Would you see its cultural location? Would you see it uh, or as abstract that context doesn't matter anymore? It's a memoriam, context doesn't matter. You know, would, it, would you see it that way? I mean, it's a little bit influenced by uh, the most famous, I guess, buildings of Korea in our part of the world. And uh, a lit I think a lot of more, uh, a lot of uh, which we picked uh, to create it, uh, it might come off as, as co coincidental, but I think context had something to do with it. I mean, the academy, and uh, I think even a lot that we focused on this period. But, but I don't know how to exactly describe it, unfortunately. No, I think I, I get what uh, you're suggesting and, and I, I accept what you're saying that the, the context here becomes uh, the academy and yes, I think the abstraction does respond to the academy, so I have to accept it. It's just an open-ended question that when an architect's oeuvre unfolds much more than his early work, why would a memoriam uh, restrict itself to an early work? It's just a thought. I don't think there's an uh, answer we expect or an answer is even possible. It's just a thought. You know, since you have taken it to that level of abstraction, I think there's a lot of thought gone in into how the, how the structure situates, how the voids are cut, the symbolism that conveys in the double roof. Uh, I think there is, there is a lot of, uh, that, that, that column doesn't 
kind of connect with the s slab and moves into the void and uh, comes down in a certain way. I think there is there is a lot of thought on that. It's just a, and <coughs> of course you're trying to read a context in very quick time from Poland. So there are there are uh, cultural complexities also which which are not easily available to you all. So in that context, I think it's a commendable work. It's just these are thoughts that come up, you know, which you may ponder over, because in this project, it's become an intercultural uh, exploration. Yeah, with the other students, they're they're kind of immersed and soaked in that culture. With y'all, it's an intercultural exploration. You are doing a reading of a certain kind, but this was more to think over it, you know, because at the abstraction level. Yes, I think it's a commendable work at the cultural routing level. And by cultural routing, I don't mean a uh, place of seven idols of some deity or, you know, talk about some... Uh, that's not what one is discussing. Because Charles, Charles Korea, Korea secularized, secularized the culture. The culture. He didn't, he didn't, he, he, I doubt he ever spoke about the Brahman in the way we discussed it. He secularized it. He saw deeper meanings in it or he saw more abstract meanings. So those abstract meanings of what does mean? What does the absence of a periphery mean? What does the notion of a pavilion of forests mean? And I think that level of conversation that Charles Corey had engaged in, uh, I was trying to see whether we could uh, see an exchange. This is intercultural, it's a very short time, but I think it's a commendable work. It's just an open-ended question on why this doesn't accrue into that project yeah so thank you very much if you have something to say please respond this is just uh... i mean i have just one thing last to say the abstraction per se it's not how i want you to see it it's just how you see it it's uh, about the perspective of the person that absorbs it absorbs it of the observator which is more important than what I had in mind creating, what we had in mind creating this project. But we wanted in our presentation just to show you how we ended up where we where we are, I guess, without uh, that much time. No, I think it's a wonderful uh, exploration that you'll have attempted within the genre and process that you'll have uh, kind of set for yourself. You know? So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Surely deserves a round of applause. Uh, Sebastian, Mikhail, thank you so much. Uh, uh, it was a pleasure listening to you. Uh, and thank you for joining in from Poland Live. And uh, we look forward to your participation. All right, moving on. From one country that makes good wine to one city that makes good wine. From Polish wine to Nasek wine. <laughs> yes, uh, no, they do make good wine. I've uh, had tasted Polish wine as well. So we have team six uh, from um, MVP Cans Nasek. Uh, I'll request uh, Shireen and Sayukta to come on stage and make the presentation. And of course, adhere to the time so that we are on, on our mark towards our uh, schedule. You want to check something? All right, have we disconnected that audio? Rolling right? Great, superb. So over to Shireen and Sayukta, uh, team number six from Nasik. Good afternoon to the honorable jury members and all the audience gathered here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the name of the memorial is Involved Void, that is the interrelation between, the, between volume and void, which has been derived from the conceptual development, which will be further elaborated. The site has a great river frontage of River Mandovi and the point which beautifies the Rathen site is the, the presence of Kala Academy done by the Sir Architect Charles Korea itself. 
After looking at the site, we came up with the idea of maintaining the transparency and purity of the site and keeping it untouched, yet including the three princip principles, uh, namely, that is the play of volume, courtyard, and astronomy, which has been uh, seen in the structures of Charles Correa. Uh, the structure was made for Sir Architect Charles Correa and not by Sir Architect Charles Correa. Hence, the abstraction of his structure are taken into consideration. The Gandhi Ashram emphasizes on the emotion of spaces. The spaces portray emotions and was minimally maintained with the grid. We abstracted the central body, uh, water body, which acted as a central core in the ashram. As water represents calmness, so was the emotion of Gandhiji and the space design. Then the construction of Kanchanjanga, a high-rise structure, was a very out-of-the-box thinking of Charles Correa, as he was well known for his low-rise structures. The main highlight was the, uh, highlight was the vertical connection in the structure. We abstracted the same in our design and created a void so that the person walking through the structure can experience the change in the volumes. Uh, the main concept behind... I'm sorry. The main concept behind Jawar Kala Kendra was based on the astronomy. He presented the Navagraha and the tilted block represented the fortified wall of Jaipur. We abstracted the form of Navagraha and the tilted block representing as Shani, which is a graha which stands out, hence connects with the other grahas. After, after transferring the After transferring the structure into pure void, we place it on the site according to the timeline of the structure with existing contours. The journey starts from the Sabarmati Ashram at the front of the site, which is accessible by the two entries, that is one from the Kala Academy and other from the outside road. Further, it goes to the void of Kanchanjanga, experiencing the volume of play of volume by the variation of height in space, which get more exaggerated due to existing contours. Then it turns to the Jawahar Kala Kendra void, passing through the tilted cube, representing the astronomical component of Saturn having ph physiological meaning, standing out alone yet connecting others. The lastly journey ends on the memorial wall of uh, memorial wall having the portrait of Charles Correa, Sir Architects Charles Correa. The wall is constructed of laterite, locally available stone in Goa. Then asphalt stone is used to show the circulation pattern of the pathways, which has the covering of bamboo, which can again is a sustainable material, showing the local kokani context of Goa, giving the transparency and maintaining the purity of the site. One another benefit of using bamboo as a main material is we can keep the site untouched without going underground. We have incorporated the flower, flowering plants on the site, beautifying the space with colors which replicates the Goan culture. Not only the colors are taken into consideration, but also the factor of fragrance is considered, giving pleasantness to the environment. The entrances are having pergolas which guide the path. We have provided seating with paved areas, looking towards the structure connecting visually to the space. Initially, we adopted the tra traditional preservation method of bamboo. So initially, we adopted the for we adopted traditional preservation method of bamboo which lasts up to 5 to 10 years which was quite less hence we shifted to the chemical preservation method which increased the lifespan of bamboo lasting for 20 to 30 years the whole preservation process includes 16 steps but i have jotted down into three steps and would like to grow, go through it quickly Initially, the bamboo is cut and clean. Then the 10% of borax boric acid solution is poured into it. Keeping one end closed within the iron rod inserted into it, this preserved bamboo from fungus and insect. For the joinery, we have studied two types of the two types of joinery, that is threading and nailing. In threading method, the bamboo are tied, and in the nailing method, the bamboo are hammered with the nails. As the site is in Goa, 
there is there are heavy rains in monsoon so to collect that rain water we have provided drainage along to the pathways collecting the rain water and storing it into the rain water harvesting tank the same water is used for the landscape purpose as to show the philosophy of blessing of sky we have kept the site open but as to respond to the climate we have provided two alternatives one is to provide bamboo straw panels which can be act as a roof and partition and the second one is the using colorful fabric showing goan culture the space is so flexible that the space can be used to meditate and the same space can be used for party this flexibility is achieved by using bamboo the memorial can be functionally used as a gathering space for community playing area for children and for exhibition space now we have a small walk through video and would like to present it we have created an unbuilt space and experience which can blend in with kala academy so thank you for giving this golden opportunity thank you Um, firstly, my, my ignorance is um, well. Thanks for the presentation. Is is boom, uh, bamboo a, a indigenous sort of a locally available material in Goa? So it's a it's a common material. Okay. Um, my uh, my um, impression of the of the proposal. What's quite nice of the of the video at the end. I could see the enclosure created by the trees. I think it's the first proposal that sees that as the dominant order. The trees actually create the foil, and there's this delicate insertion. But at the same time, my question is, um, you know, knowing bamboo and the way, maybe it's the way you presented it, um, it's very flimsy. It's almost like the, it's underscaled just in the way it's presented. And what that then creates, it's very difficult to read the order that you've created on plan. I mean, you've conceptualized this using the grid and then it relates to this and then this emerges from it. Because your connections with bamboo, for instance, how you connect bamboo is quite... It's quite obvious how bamboo connects, how two pieces of bamboo connects, like some of the images you showed earlier. So in the way that you've presented it, it's very diagrammatic. So it's almost like it's a, it's a schematic thing, which is not, it still has to be replaced by the real thing. So it's just in the way it's been communicated. Um, and I think if, if that was done, you know, you would have probably read these as, as uh, more as rooms. And then the, 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 the final point is, since you've started with a landscape-driven approach, I mean, you've, you've, you've even specified the plants and so on, uh, wouldn't there be um, a reason to manipulate the landscape? You know, in other words, not just have things put onto the lawn, because again, it brings us back to some of the earlier comments that you will have heard, saying that it has this feel of a, a temporary uh, installation amongst the trees. Um, and, and it, that's exactly what you're saying. Uh, that's the contradiction in your reasoning around using bamboo, pushing the lifetime to what you said, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. so, so there is an intent to create permanence. But that permanence relates back to, for instance, how the bamboo gets fixed to the ground. You know, because this almost looks like it's a peg 
mm. and it's been temporarily, like you would put up a tent. You know, it's like a very temporary, because in reality, if this is going to be there for 20 years, within the first uh, period of its life, life, uh, life span, it will become damaged. You know, people will just literally push it over, in, just in the way that's drawn. So, so maybe what I'm trying to say, it's quite difficult to read the spaces that you've created with quite a bit of care, you know, the way that you've evolved the plan. And the last thing that I just want to mention, I think the abstraction in, I mean, that pattern, it's typical of Korea pattern of his housing developments on the left there. Um, that is quite an interesting thing that you've used. I don't know if you've speci specifically mentioned that, but uh, I mean, the use of that. Uh, so you've been selective in what you took from Korea's work. And it's maybe, and we've, we've been speculating, you know, which of these proposals would have um, uh, offended Korea and which of them would have sort of made him, you know, very happy. Um, and I think in that sense it's benign. I mean, what I'm saying is it's not something, it's, it's actually t uh, treading a very fine path between becoming a monument in the traditional sense and maybe the installation on the other side. So it's somewhere in between the two. So it's, it's more a comment. But in terms of the permanence, maybe you should just answer that question in terms of the bamboo and the sense of, because you know, often the perception of bamboo, it's used for scaffolding, it's used for temporary stuff. And that's, it, that's obviously not the intention, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we wanted to create a structure which could be blended with the Kala Academy. So we used bamboo. And for the stability, like uh, we thought of uh, after we pro uh, thought about providing these installations, like yeah, these are the joint pieces. Uh, we thought about providing this installation so that it could make a bamboo a little bit stronger and also could act as an exhibition space later on. So you said like it was not flexible, right? So uh, this was an alternative, so we can provide that according. To you. Okay, I just uh, just an, a, a comment on that because if you go back to your your previous image. Uh, no, the one that the perspective drawing. Um, because obviously if, you, if, if the elements are this thin, you would need to start having cross pricing and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, as an experienced architect one, in a way your, your, your understanding of tectonics, how things are made, s says to you there's something missing in it. Either the bamboo needs to be thicker yeah. and the joints need to be more rigid where they meet, mm -hmm. or you need to cross brace it. Mm -hmm. you, you only have two options. Yeah. It's either rigid, connection points where, they, where the bamboo meets at the top or in between there needs to be a sort of a, a cross pricing structure. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the te technical uh, sort of comment. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, this proposal was quite different from the others, I think. I mean, uh, it was a fresh approach, a uh, completely new approach, uh, quite unexpected even for us um, to raise questions actually. Uh, one good thing is that probably this is so far this is the one entry which has not blocked any views and uh, also not created uh, water issues i mean drainage issues which we have not questioned as yet but i'm sure you know uh, all those sunken proposals i mean the thought always comes to our mind that what is what's going to happen when it goes, when it rains in goa uh, but we thought this was a competition so we shouldn't touch that sensitive part uh, sensitive question, but uh, yeah, like uh, Henry said, I mean, it, it does look a little weak. Um, it was a good start, but it doesn't have that, um, uh, you know, presence or the uh, idea which you are trying to uh, convey. I mean, you can't, you can barely see it. Uh, what I liked was the abstract thing which you've done at the bottom, which is, which I suppose is like seating, right? I mean, like a bench or something, but it's it's in the form of plan, and probably you could use those um, in many ways, uh, you know, which was a nice idea, which was subtly trying to uh, r make us remember about what he has done. and uh, You know, it's like an imprint of his uh, drawings, uh, which was nice. Um, so I, uh, very frankly, I do not know as of now, maybe I'll have to think uh, how to comment on this proposal, but uh, yes, it was a fresh, very fresh and new uh, proposal for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, continuing from, in the last few years of, when I saw this, I was remembering, in the last few years of Charles Correa's life, um, and that's when the foundation was happening and the archives were happening. He was looking back 
at the entire unfolding, you know, from his early age, and he himself was looking back. And during that time, he did come down to Chennai at that time, and the Mahindra Center was on. I think Sachin worked on it for the Mahindra Center was on. I live very close by. But what interested him more at that time was uh, the Golconda house in Pondicherry mm. and the bamboo in Oroville. So he did travel to Oroville, have a look at the bamboo, have a look at uh, water recycling, have a look at ecology. He was so he was very concerned. You know, while I'm not sure he wrote anything about it, mm. but. If one interviews a few Aurovillians, you'll see the interest that he had to return, to look at an architecture that does not exist. Mm. So when I saw this, I just thought this was a brave attempt not to take uh, Charles Courier's elements and directly put it, but keep something which is almost beyond the non-building. No? What I would have then, so at, I think as as the seed of an idea, mm. this is a brilliant idea, as a seed of an idea. Mm. But then you raise our expectations so high with the seed that we want to now see the entire forest. What do I mean by that? I don't mean populate this, mm. but as a design process, uh, maybe introspect on you know, one, one way of a memorandum, now these are certain, I'm not saying these are the ways to, there are many ways, I'm just throwing a few ways, mm -hmm. that there has to be some element of specificity, mm -hmm. some element of linking. Mm -hmm. Now let's say Picasso was doing uh, Dora Mar, you know, the, the, or he was doing Guernica or whatever his paintings. After he deconstructs them or, you know, fragments them mm -hmm. and you look at that painting, you can say this is Dora Mar. He's not mm -hmm. literally painted it, mm -hmm. but when you look at it, so he has, so similarly in a memoriam, if one is stretching it to a very high level of abstraction, I think then one searches for certain clues mm -hmm. where it resonates with a search that Korea was immersed in. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it becomes neutral, now there's a difference between neutral and abstraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Neutral can mean that there is a structure, mm -hmm. but was does that structure resonate with certain uh, ideas, explorations, thoughts uh, that, that <coughs> Korea carried with him, you know, and I think that's that's the area where mm. one could have gone back and looked. And then, yes, the clues lie in the tectonics of it, how it is made, how would you have seen it, how would you have expressed it, mm -hmm. uh, what would have, because then you always have, the minute you set this up, whether you have walls, no walls, you set up some kind of a center, you set up some kind of going there, you set up some kind of relationship with the river, you set up some kind of arriving or kind of, you know, conversing with that uh, artifact or installation or whatever one wants to call it, a non-building. So I think at that level, you know, at the level of the resonating with what this memoriam can condense and invite, uh, I'm a little searching. But I think at the seed level, mm -hmm. it's a very powerful seed. And it's completely antithetical to the idea of, or if I can say in the context of this, the fetish of architects to build something beyond their lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, why build the pyramids? Why, you know, for what? Uh, a bird builds a nest and not too worried whether there's a memorial on the nest or an exhibition space. And, but it builds a nest that, you know, the twigs fall off, it builds the next nest, we move on. So there, there's another way, you know, and where somewhere human thought and architects in particular decided that there has to be a fetish of permanence mm -hmm. when everything on this planet actually decays. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw this, I said that could be something that, and that, that used to 
intrigue and charm Charles Courier. So it was within his repertoire to to kind of engage with this kind of a conversation of permanence and uh, impermanence and something that vanishes and decays. And so it was within that. Mm -hmm. But I'm I think in the manner it got structured, or mm -hmm. I I would say there's a promise, and not that if you if you have the energy, I would say continue working on this. Yeah. There was a date given, which is an arbitrary date, which is today. Uh, but continue working on this and see where it will go, you know, as a memoriam to Charles Corey. It could just become a live project tomorrow. I don't know. It's the way it's gaining momentum. Yeah. And it may just give a certain very antithetical statement, mm -hmm. something that Korea was engaged with, mm -hmm. but now in the context of climate change in the context of, you know, but so it's not just climate change, so bamboo and, you know, it's not mm -hmm. that uh, lip service climate change. There, is, there are deeper metaphysical levels also mm -hmm. of decay permanence. Mm -hmm. I think if it can evoke that, there is really something that is existing in this project, you know. Okay. Yeah, so thank you very much. Okay. Do you have any responses? If you uh, yeah, sir, we surely work on that, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, jury members. Uh, thank you, Shireen. Thank you, Sayukta. Uh, very well presented. Strong idea. And like uh, Professor Balsawar said, uh, don't stop at this. You could uh, take this further. Moving from uh, Nasik Caves to the Robbers Cave in Dehradun, Ketan Gupta and uh, Vaibhavi Diman, School of Architecture, Planning and Design, DIT University, Dehradun. Team to uh, jury to note, team number seven from DIT Dehradun. Round of applause, guys. Very warm greetings to everyone present here. Uh, so before we begin our design, uh, we feel that it's important that we talk about architect Charles Coria life journey first. So, so he was born in 1913 Sikandrabad. Right after the independence in 1948, he went to study abroad. Uh, came back to India in 1958 to start his own practice here. And his works are not just limited to uh, designing buildings, but he had a significant contribution in designing, uh, in city planning as well. He has been recognized nationally and internationally um, because of his contribution to the society. Uh, but what made his architecture so special? Um, one may wonder. For that, let's go back in time and get a bigger context. So modernism was the design style that was prevalent those times. Uh, so while Korea was studying abroad, he learned from the pioneers of this style, that is modernism, which can be seen through these images. Um, so this, uh, we found this code uh, in one of Sami Padora's uh, speeches, uh, written by A.K. Ramanujan, that well describes about the mindset that people might be having at that time, that is there an Indian way of thinking? Because India is a mix of a lot of elements, and to find an Indian identity, one needs to be well versed with the Indian context, beliefs, cultures, and aspirations of the people. This is what we felt what was unique about Korea's work, that he was able to find an Indian identity. So we, uh, we feel that it was uh, done through some of these elements that are shown here, like the provision of uh, generous open to sky spaces that is even seen in tall buildings like Kanchan Jung apartments. Water was used as an element uh, to influence the microclimate of the area. Uh, use of pergolas and other shading devices was used to uh, not just provide a pattern of light and texture but also blocks the harsh sun. Also some landscape uh, features were introduced in the building that uh, breaks the visual monotony of the area and also provide spaces uh, where eyes can rest and you can pause and ponder over various aspects of the life. 
so uh, the flow of energy in and around the buildings is what korea calls as ritualistic pathway so it can either be in the form of a formal access as we can see in the uh, british council or it can be in the form of free flowing spaces that we can see in an handloom so his idea of non building uh, he tried to repress the objectiveness of the building yet he didn't erase the uh, monumental possibility of the structure completely so uh, what should be the memory of an architect so um these ideas not only uh, uh, made impact on the buildings but the legacy of this person goes on to inspire generation of architects to come so while designing a memorial uh, we felt that it's not just talk important to talk about his uh, work but also showcase his life so uh, while designing the program we started uh, collecting the elements of his personal as well as uh, professional life we through his journey we know that he was a visionary as he had a clarity of thoughts and he guided the architecture after the independence he was rooted in the sense that even after he studied abroad he came back to india to serve his country uh, he was sensitive as he designed the buildings keeping in mind the sensitivity of the context and the aspirations of the people he was compassionate as uh, through his learnings he gave back to the society by uh, doing low cost projects so these architecture elements like access light nature and water can be well seen in uh, ar architect charles coria's most of the projects so we tried taking the elements one from each end to frame a space out of it like um, in the first space the visionary space um, the space is uh, designed in a symmetrical layout and uh, the tapering walls focuses the attention of the user in a particular direction in the second space that is the rooted space uh, many punctures are given in the roof that allows filtered beams of lights to come that symbolically represents roots in the sensitive zone the area the space is curated by giving a uh, landscape rolling down from one end and in the fourth space that is the compassionate space uh, a cut out is given on the roof so that the light enters and reflects back to the what uh, reflects back reflects in the water back to the person that is seeing it thus giving back to the society um i think by now you all know the site very well let me quickly take you to th through the site so this is the site plan of the color academy where our site is located in the northwestern end uh, so the site has a presence of river along which a generous green space is provided there is a presence of a light pole as well so the building color academy has a goan street pattern envisioned in the center that opens up to a side there is a, a restaurant adjacent to a side that seamlessly blends with the landscape outside so we started uh, thinking of the ways in which we can build a new structure with without disrespecting the vision with with which these spaces were uh, envisioned so we came across these a uh, few design pr principles that we uh, develop for ourselves like we try to uh, maintain the visual connection between the building and the river by keeping the building uh, underground also the placement of the void that we generated that symbolically represents korea's absence is guided by three major axes of the site as we can see in the second illustration also the building was envisioned with uh, no trees harmed in the process also the site is made accessible to uh, everyone Uh, the interpretation of charles coria's life is done in two different levels the exploration level the exploration level uh, which will be at the uh, upper part uh, is where uh, the exploration level uh, which will be at the upper part is where uh, we get to know about the architecture of charles coria uh, which has strong geometric lines that are being referred from the existing building in the decoding level uh, there uh, will be sequence of meandering spaces that will uh, fair decoding and uh, understanding of uh, the architecture and life or, or the journey of charles coria will be shown the site plan shows that no trees were harmed uh, while designing this uh, the spaces and the arrangement is done 
keeping in the location of the trees. Next. Uh, the ramps have been designed with spaces provided at intermediate levels. Uh, water is our central element uh, uh, where the journey uh, starts and ends. We design the space in a way that one will not be able to, uh, that you will not be able to know what uh, succeeds uh, forward. Thus, the curiosity is maintained throughout the journey. The whole journey is divided into two segments. The first part, where, uh, which consists of the three exhibition spaces, where you get to know about the architecture, and the second part, which consists of the sequence of meandering spaces, where uh, you decode that architecture. The person moves from visionary to rooted to sensitive to uh, the reflect, uh, compassionate zone, and through a, com uh, a small uh, ramp, uh, we enter into a large open courtyard space. Uh, thus, uh, compression and release of uh, a person is done. So, uh, in the first uh, half of the journey, uh, so in the first half of this journey, we can see that the movement of the user is very linear uh, till exhibition three, where uh, we know the architect, we, we get to know about the architecture, and the second half, uh, we, where we explore the architecture and uh, the elements of the design, uh, the movement is very organic. From exhibition one, we can go back through the stairs to uh, the ground level where uh, around the central uh, main tree, a setting is provided where one can pause and ponder about various aspects of life. The triangular travel that is provided acts as a strong identifying element of Charles Correa's architecture. Uh, and then next. Uh, through the sections, uh, in the first section, we can see that uh, at different levels, uh, different kind of activities are provided. Uh, uh, when from the first ex uh, exhibition, when we go back to the uh, ground level, we can see that there's a setting uh, around which different kind of activities can happen, and uh, <coughs> the setting is placed there to enforce the uh, philosophy of uh, Charles Courier's uh, open to sky spaces. In the second section, uh, we can see that as one moves down, the experience of the users changes with change in level. Next. So uh, let us take us. You, uh, let us take you to the, some visual images uh, to understand the journey of this memorial. In the first image, uh, we can see uh, the user going down the ramp with water on one side and landscape buffer on the other end. Uh, soft element, uh, softscape elements are provided inside the architecture, like uh, Charles Correa did in most of his projects. Uh, one of his who, which example is given here. Um, these uh, elements are provided so that eyes don't rest on, uh, as you go down, eyes don't rest on uninviting blank walls. In the second image, we can see that a person reaches uh, at a height of uh, minus 1300 from ground level. So uh, the water comes up to the eye level, uh, which provides a seamless connect of the uh, person with the surrounding river. Uh, the second exhibition is a space where semi-open uh, area is provided with pergolas, uh, which add to the dynamism of the uh, space uh, by creating uh, different textures, patterns, uh, and rhythm of light and shadow. The second exhibition has a step sitting uh, below uh, which the exhibition is provided. The entry of light is done through the uh, risers of the step sitting. In the second, uh, in the last exhibition, uh, we can see that an, uh, yet another quality of light is there. So, in all the three, in all the three exhibitions, there is a different quality of life, uh, light. Hence, uh, hence, a uh, different kind of uh, experiences present in all the three exhibitions. In the visionary space, uh, a cutout is provided in the ceiling, uh, which directs the vision of the users uh, towards the central uh, uh, cutout. Uh, which can give you a glimpse of what is happening in the central space, but you can't directly access it. You can see the program uh, programmatic sketch that was done in the top left. Uh, and in the section, uh, we can see that there's a, a visual connect between all the three spaces. As, as one moves forward, uh, we enter the rooted space, where through the punctures, filtered beam of light enters, thus emphasizing the importance of light in a space. In the sensitive zone, the landscape is rolling down, with softscape elements provided inside, uh, thus uh, uh, pro, uh, emphasizing the importance of uh, natural elements and what influence they can do. 
the courtyard space is the last space uh, where as you enter uh, your vision is not only in the direct connection uh, with the visionary uh, space but also through the void you can see the main central tree next as the journey comes to a conclusion we can see uh, the vision of the uh, user is diverted towards the final product of the architect which is uh, the color card me itself which is also reflected on the water body thus we can say that the reflection is present on the water and the decoding is done in the lower level coming to a conclusion of our presentation we would like to quote charles coria uh, in a presentation in a seminar that he gave in 1959 can there be such a thing as indian architecture perhaps indian architecture will be like mozart a great a great lyricism and in the center a clear concise idea the house around the courtyard the clear statement the tree the shadow the texture providing rhythm and patterns and counterpoint thank you yeah thank you very much for the clarity i think from the beginning to the end it was very easy to follow so thanks for your rigor and the way that you've assembled everything and it's also one of those uh, proposals you know if i didn't have the brief if i could only see the, the the what you've done being completely ignorant about the brief i probably would have liked what i saw and what i saw in it is a level of finesse and refinement in the way that you've uh, resolved the design uh, also i think the articulation of elements the the way that the built form relates to the natural elements as well as the building i think is well resolved um my only comment or question would be if you had more time maybe the idea of a memorial um could be completely void of the notion of exhibition because what you've done is you've gone into the spaces and then you've got the posters of Correa's work on the wall and for me that's a bit disappointing and i think what you could really have thought of possibly if you could develop it further how do you abstract Correa's work um to make it more monument you know in the in the previous proposal there was that sort of seating area that looked like a uh, you refer to it a typical housing scheme so i think that is the that would have made it for me more profound as a monument but that's a small point you know because i think independently this the spaces seem to work quite well because what happens with exhibitions people get you go there once you've seen it um and then beyond that it should actually work on its own you not the second time you're not going to go there to look at the more the, the the posters you're going to there go there to just appreciate the space and because i think it's it's so well resolved at so many levels it's got that kimball art museum quality you know that sort of um uh, permanence uh, the way that you've resolved stuff and also the control of tectonics and we've spoken about tectonics all day uh, but i think at the end the very powerful idea of coming back and having the reflection of the Kala Academy in there to to really I mean that sort of holding up that sort of respect for Kara by saying this is a very subtle way of doing it by mirroring your building onto that surface um so well done at so many levels I really enjoyed your presentation thanks a lot but maybe you can just comment on the on the on the memorial versus exhibition thing because it's a recurring theme and I think maybe you've put your foot on to, into that as well you know since we on that theme thanks uh so for the question uh the idea was that if someone doesn't know korea that well and doesn't understand his architecture uh first they get to know what all kind of work they have done and after that only they'll be able to understand the elements that are uh there in his architecture so uh the process um, of while designing the building is shown in the later sequence but uh, for that to understand for to understand that properly you need to first i uh, see whether what kind of uh, things that he have actually made uh, for see the final product then decode it so that is why a uh, exhibition was given and then uh, the memorial part starts a bit in the later end yes ma'am yeah um it was, it was a nice presentation no doubt a um, lot of themes you had uh, the way the light comes in and all which was also very uh, nicely done and thought of um i like the way the tree has been used this time uh, and the pamphy theater is facing the tree so uh, i would give you uh, marks for that and i also like the uh, one of those views where you end the journey and you see the reflection of kala academy in the 
water body which was very nice also. Uh, though I did find that the whole journey through those spaces was uh, a little too much, too many shapes, too many curves, you know. Um, it was a little forceful, whereas uh, if you see Korea's work, it is the, these kind of journeys are very smooth, you know, and you don't, you're not forced into spaces, but automatically these spaces connect with each other, and uh, you sort of, you know, pass through them uh, just uh, automatically, and nothing really guides you that way. No walls there to guide you. Whereas in these cases, it was always enclosed spaces. Most of them were enclosed spaces, and you just made to walk through them. Um, and you're made to see how the light enters. But there'll be times when there may not be light. So during that time, what happens is something which you may have to think. Uh, and uh, also, why would people uh, keep going there and walk through all those spaces again and again? Uh, that is something uh, also you need to think because it's not a place where you would want to pause or sit and you know just relax because they all enclosed spaces, so it's not going to be comfortable uh, sitting in those spaces, you know, in Goa especially. So um, so you would rather sit outside uh, under those trees. So uh, um, it seemed to have started well and you have picked up a lot of things uh, minutely which was very well done i mean the way the light comes in and all that also the abstraction was very nice i mean you called those little holes as roots and the light coming in as roots and all which was really interesting uh, but you have to think about the climate as well and think about how hot it's going to be inside and uh, why would people keep moving inside every time you know, so those are things which you re really need to think about, uh, and everything is not about abstraction. So it has to be, um, in a way, functional also. And uh, spaces have to be woven together, I mean, very, uh, in, in such a way that you don't realize that you're forced to pass through those spaces, you know. But uh, overall, it was nice. Thank you. I would say it's a very um, well designed, composed uh, project that I'll have presented. I just have this one, uh, again, an open ended thought. On, if you look at the uh, your, your project, you know, and how you, you talked about, first of all, I think the fact that you attempted to personify, you know, take take elements of the persona and distill an architectural manifestation or element from it, I think is courageous. Uh, and then from there, try and build up, build up. And that's similar to a process that uh, Korea attempted in the ashram, you know, so that's one. Having said that, and I think the elements have come in, the basic functionality is uh, present, there's a nuance to the movement. What I would probably ask to reflect on is that there was something very unique when Charles Correa spoke about the ritual path, very unique. And what that ritual path was, because the ritual path in the medieval time or ancient time may have been canonical, prescribed, described, and you literally had to, you know, follow a ritual path for a certain, for the gods to be happy, you know, so if one has to say that. And in, in our contemporary times, the abs, now this is not as abstraction as abstract, the fact that you have to understand what a path does to a human being, you know, the way Yohani Palasma talks about it. It's a human experience. It is uh, both, maybe a religion may appropriate it, but it's still beyond a, a religion because every human being is uh, experiencing that path. Mm -hmm. The quality of that path becomes one that gets born from choice, not from purpose. And uh, so if you see in Gandhi Ashram or see any of it, even Jawar Kala Kendra, and 
there is no beginning there's no end but there may be a beginning and end it it uh, and and this kind of a expression in uh, even when in our colonial times if you read british readings of indian architecture or if you read uh, later european readings you know bauhaus readings of indian architecture they would call it confused and it's a perception they would call it confused because purposeful path was seen as clarity of an architect but i think charles courier was one of the few right from his first project uh, brought in this nuance of choice and the nuance of choice meant that if you wanted to neglect some element of that path you could neglect it if you want to kind of engage with it you could engage with it and i think that makes the path uh, so enriched that the people inhabiting wish to go back again and again and again through the seasons through different maybe in the evening in the morning and that's how you pull the return to a certain uh, memorial with 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 the fact that there is a choice you know and this is well articulated i would just say think about if this path could have escaped the burden of history because what happens is we carry the history we say memory we build it and we don't know when it's become a mountain on our head you know when you say indian identity or it becomes a huge mountain and if there was one thing about kobuzi or one thing about charles kore the two of them especially they would engage with it deeply and through the engagement transcend it and it would become so light that they're not carrying it as a burden they're carrying it in a way that you know it's a it's it's with a flair it's with a nuance but you know that it's engaged with deeply there is a rigor there's a discipline but this can be discussed it's not fair for me to discuss because this is a professional discussion um this can be discussed because of the effort immersion enjoyment that you all have put into this and brought it to that kind of a culmination you know? so i would just say think about that nuance of the path it's not all that simple but where a path begins to say i need my own freedom you know i am not yes. going to be controlled by an architect i am not going to be controlled on how i need to move to make sense of a path and that if i did anything i come out each time with a new experience you know mm-hmm. then i feel the return yeah so i think it's a great project very well done congratulations to you thank you thank you Thank you, jury members. Uh, thank you, Ketan and Vaibhavi. Uh, we come to the last presentation of the day, the eighth team to qualify into top eight, uh, presenting here today at Pune. So the last team is Pune. Uh, Amay Rathi and Tania Jose uh, from the SMEF's Brick School of Architecture, Pune. Round of applause. I request Amay and Tania to keep up to the time. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon everyone there have been a n- number of interesting presentations today and uh, i would now request the technical team to start with the video to give a glimpse of our design charles coria describes architecture as a piece of sculpture that moves us let's study the trail in order to learn about the snail and go through architecture that defined charles coria's journey a sequence of unforgettable scenes the unwinding journey following the trail and defining moments that shaped his career one of his first masterpieces of the gandhi ashram to his last the champali mod center for the unknown the casual meandering pattern of the trail found significance in his design beneath its layers of strata function texture and material lies something even deeper something that charles as a young architect sought out to capture in his quest to find an identity to indian architecture 
just like the sacred pilgrimage he ever so often mentioned in his structures, let's interpret the trail and express his philosophy in the built form. As the morning light hits the grand sculpture, arranged in a series of layers, giving glimpses into the unknown, eager to find your way in. The pedestrian-like path shifted its axis into a low-key built form, a non-building given scale principally by a flight of external stairs. Moving through the space, one can experience the journey, representing the phases in Charles Correa's life. As the ramp moves upward, the strain as if to signify the hardships in the course of his lifetime. The space feels cooler than before, and this can be credited to the roof section that is shaped so that the hot air rises and escapes from the top, making the air cooler. Finding orientation back to the empty center, relying on the instincts and inclinations for moving through the space. The drama created by the lights suddenly submerges. Within the silence of the space, feeling the presence of the water above. only to make way for the conscious to experience a 3D portal representing his built and unbuilt works and the work of cloth, the cloth depicting the kunbi pattern, lost within the spirals of time, filling the void between Goa and the memorial. Using art as a resource and creating a dialogue with Kala Academy, the cafeteria space opens up into the stepped seating, giving a view into the memorial. The diagram illustrating sacred, sa sacred geometrical arrangements in a symmetrical design of the seating space which emits positive energy curves the negative one. The passageway, the passageway opens out into a lively center with a giant tree waving in, in the wind. The guru sitting under a tree, the symbol of enlightenment in the Indian culture, finds its presence in the journey. wall punctured with large openings through which the outside is composed like picture frames. The photographs are not particularly aligned to each other but present a casually captured picture while wandering through the interstitial space along the wall. back and forth between the real and unreal spaces from public, private, in search of the sacred within. The descent into the earth is analogous to the furrowing of the fields for planting of seed as it symbolizes that architecture is rooted in the place it stands. There is a shift in materiality from rugged materials to the softer ones. The descent reminds of the warmth created by the mud and flowing water which with and flowing with water that was once above in is flowing under the symbolic of the depth reached. Moving ahead to walk to the reflection of the sky in the water, a tribute to in search of the known. It is dusk now, a wooden fishing boat slowly heads towards the mouth of the river where it will meet the Arabian Sea. It suddenly occurs. The greatest urban civilizations were built on this very nexus of rivers, seas and the ocean. Through them were traded fabrics, on only some of which survived to tell us of their past. The horizontal and the vertical lines embraces each other to form a sacred. The dialogue between these two components creates an ebb and flow of energy around the complex in what Korea described as a ritualistic pathway that defined the tracks of Korea, uh, Charles Korea, a journey winding back to, to the beginning, the tracks Hornby Rails, where the journey started and defined the paths to the identity of Charles Korea's masterpieces. Uh, can we move to the presentation? In search of. In 1950, a newly independent India began a search for its identity. As a nation, Charles Correa, a young architect, was a pioneer, pioneer in this movement to define contemporary India. 
Let's go through the process we follow to start the design. We started by defining the design objectives. After understanding Charles Coria, his philosophy, and the teachings, we came up with the considerations we wanted to incorporate. Non-building, form follows climate, dialogue with the context, Indian culture, empty centers and connecting axis, and framing the context. And the layers of water, nature, light, shadow, use interplay in, with each other to create a dialogue with the user, to depict symbolically the struggles in his life. The macro analysis and what we took from Goa. The Panjim market, the street connectivity and planning keep the language of the open streets within the built form. The segregation of public, private, and semi-public spaces, and hence studying the primary and secondary axes. The Mandovi River, Goa being a crossroads between the west and the east, hence studying and understanding the historical importance of Mandovi. Kala Academy, using art and culture as a resource. The first step is to listen to what the site has to say, the existing conditions, the ecology, the existing trees and vegetations on the site, the sun path and the wind direction, the contours and the soil condition, that is laterite soil. Zooming into the site, we understood the viewpoints. We understood the access points and the possible accesses, as well as the courtyards that could be formed. Second, architecture is culturally rooted in the place it stands, and hence drawing inspiration from Goa, the Kunbi cloth. Textile also has a major role in Charles's life, and hence the depiction in the design almost felt necessary. Touted to the oldest weave of the state, the sari is said to have a staple garment of women of the Kunbi tribe. The check pattern of Kunbi draws heavily from the creative forces of nature. The horizontal and vertical lines embrace each other to form a sacred block of space. Red denotes the buoyancy and the vitality that permeates Goa. We can also see in Mario Miranda's work the influence of red. As explained earlier, the internal streets inspired by the planning of the Panjim market, framing the silent waters of Mandovi and the context. Culminating this process, we understood the des design aspects we wanted to take forward. The ritualistic pathway, the empty center, giving back to society, framing context, form follows climate. We started out with using a human scale, a three by three grid, defining a trail within a series of empty centers. This defined the basic zoning that gave us a start point to, to design with. The diagram shows the demarcation of the pedestrian movement with open, closed spaces, as well as a universal accessibility. The center intentionally left open to absorb the built and the unbuilt. Moving ahead with the master plan and the site section. The primary and secondary approachways to the site, the, in, the site in the site section below, it can be observed that the site contours are modified according to the slope. On the left-hand side, we have tried to showcase the space allocation justification. The block massing is done such that the views to the Mandovi are not obstructed by keeping a low-key built form the cut and fill and the placement to take full advantage of the views. In the same way, to avoid obstructing the breezes in the color academy, the strategies that were observed were the northeast-southwest orientation of the built mass for the maximum sun shading and cross ventilation. The section that is shaped that hot air rises and escapes from the top and smaller openings in the southwest and the larger openings in the northeast again to passively cool the space. The water courtyard void right in the middle acts as a passive cooling strategy. The green pathway keeps in mind the trees in the site in order to avoid disrupting the ecology of the site. So moving ahead into the detailed design. Yeah, an uh, entry ramp leading down with perforations giving a glimpse of the inside. The second entry point the 
So moving ahead into the detailed design, uh, an entry ramp leading down with perforations giving a glimpse of inside. The second entry point stepping down along the shifting axis of the stairs to enter the visual gallery experience the work of Korea, uh, where one could feel the hardships along the way in the journey of his lifetime through his structures, entering, entering into the first empty center, the courtyard. The 3D gallery represents his built and unbuilt work and the work of cloth, the, the cloth depicting the kunbi patterns lost within the spirals of time. The dialogue plaza gives a glimpse from Kala Academy of the memorial acting as a spillover for the cafeteria. The raised steps as help the user to get the view of the Mandovi river. The secondary axis from the back of the site leading to the yantra, illustrating sacred geometrical arrangements, seating arrangements along the second empty center. The pathway leading, the, leading to the sacred courtyard, culminating journey with the walk to the known, the Mandovi. The views, these are few of the visual images of the sites. First, the visual gallery, second the sacred courtyard and third the dialogue plaza further ahead moving to the detailed section it shows the correlation between the spaces the first section helps to understand the correlation between the empty center the 3d gallery and the learning courtyard and the views depicting the same the second section, uh, the second section, the stills, the alley wall, and the opening, forming strong sense of connection between the between the visual gallery, sacred courtyard, and the learning courtyard, uh, ex ex explains the connection to the Mandovi. The third courtyard, which uh, in which explains the connection to the Mandovi, where the wooden deck leads to the walk to the known. Uh, moving ahead more into detail, the learning courtyard, the symbol of enlightenment, finds its presence in the journey. The detailed plan explains the entry from the Kala Academy, the Yantra, the, the learning courtyard, the pathway leading to the sacred courtyard. The section depicts the levels of the spaces mentioned. Moving ahead more into design, a grid of 450 by 450 is considered in variations of three materials, which is arranged keeping in mind the proportion of the positive and negative spaces derived from the meaning of yantra. This also acts as an extended seating for the learning courtyard, which can host small community gatherings. Isometric views shows the placement of the space on the site. The views. These are the these are few of the views highlighting the pathway leading to the sacred courtyard, uh, the yantra, and entry from Kala Academy. The sacred courtyard. The detailed plan. The detailed plan highlights the sacred courtyard, the three D gallery, the dialogue plaza, and the entry from the Kala Academy. Relating to uh, the, co the water courtyard relating to his first structures, the Gandhi Ashram. The brick jali wall pattern abstracts, the go abstracts Goa and the Kunbi pattern. Water falling from the top of the 3D gallery forms a play of light and shadow inside the gallery. The water above now is symbol below now is symbolic to the depth reached. And the four walls have a symbolic meaning of the reflection of his philosophies culture, climate, technology, and his aspirations. 
The section shows the following corresponding levels to the spaces. As explained earlier, respecting the wind direction, the roof profile is, def des is designed. Moving ahead, these are the views of the spaces. The 3D gallery, the sacred courtyard, and the visual gallery. The lighthouse symboliz symbolizes the end of a long journey for those going on long voyages across the sea. It is dusk now. A wooden fishing boat slowly heads towards the mouth of the river, where it will meet the Arabian Sea. It suddenly occurs. The greatest urban civilizations were built on the very nexus of rivers and seas and oceans. Through them were traded fabrics, only some of which survived to tell us of their past, as also of the inevitable circumstances of our present. The horizontal and vertical lines embrace each other to form a sacred form. India in the 1950 began a search for its identity, the day it was introduced, introduced to the West, to bring back the forgotten culture. So how can we go back to our roots, to our true self? Perhaps it is unleashed in the state of the subconscious. A glimpse of our design. The journey of a building relies on the instincts of a person moving through a space. The matter of accidents, discoveries, and encounters where we can truly find ourselves. So we can say that when we, we f finally search ourselves, when and uh, architecture truly moves us when it is rooted. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe I should start with that uh, phrase at the end, the instincts of persons moving through the space. My question to you would be, it's, uh, and it's a, very, it's a very complex project. Thanks for, for all the effort and, and the layers of information. And I think at the same time, it's quite difficult for me to access it because there's so much, of, much inf information that you've um, collated into the presentation. So in that vein, the question would be, um, maybe it's, it's linked to a comment that Sashin made a while back. Um, could, could, it be in, could, have, could, could you have written for yourself a simpler brief or a, 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 a shorter list of items? Because it's, it's quite extensive in terms of what it's trying to cover. So these, again, it's these barriers between exhibition, building, non-building, building. Because the risk is always there. You set out to do a non-building, but before you know it, through your own effort to try and cover as many bases as you possibly can, in terms of the brief, and your imagination too, because it's also, what is the limit of your own imagination? You can carry on forever. So the question really is, if, if you were asked to halve the size of the, the project and lower it more, would it be a lesser project? I mean, that's, that's the, the question, because for me to try and imagine the quality of those spaces, although I think you've done a great job. I mean, you've done all those images, you've taken us through all those spaces, but that, that in instinctive thing, as an observer that's seeing it for the first time, that instinctive experience, I feel I can only really do when, I, when it's built and I'm in the space. So in the way it's presented and conceived, maybe the question is, just to summarize that, is could it, could it have worked as a, as a lesser building or a smaller building? And is it really a non-building? Because I mean, that is one of your key elements, do uh, you still see it as a, as, as a non-building, what you ended up with? Um, so I think we started out with uh, researching about Charles Korea, and to give justice to all of his projects, we wanted to make sure that we can incorporate that in our design. So I think uh, if we reduce the design brief that we started out with, I think for us, we wouldn't be able to justify uh, the amount of work that he has given in his lifetime. So in a memorial, I think it's important that all these aspects, that uh, the, um, the design objectives that we started out with were taken care of. So, um, and the part about the non-building, uh, when we were reading, we understood that non-building is the experience of that space. So you, you don't see it as a structure that overpowers you. So um, 
that is what we wanted to take from non-building. Apart from taking it uh, using the site and the context, we wanted to make sure that when the person moves through the space, they experience it not in a way that it's uh, overboarding you with a lot of things. You're gradually moving through the site, and that trail is what we wanted to signify, like his entire life. So um, yeah, that's the answer to the question. Yeah, maybe you can just add on to it. My uh, understanding of Korea's work and his whole body of work, and I, I hope to get to Bhopal, but I'm not going to be able to fit it in, because he called that a non-building, and he followed through on doing a non-building. Whereas if you added other buildings of Korea to it, would he have defined it as a non-building then? At what point would he have reached that threshold of it not? So I'm just hammering on the one point, but I think, because I think it's a significant point to set out to do a non-building and then to say, but you, you're not doing that justice to Korea by not putting the other things. So it's a contra contradiction that comes into your own brief that you wrote for yourself or developed yourself. So th I, you don't have to answer. That's just my, my comment on it. Thanks. Well, um, I can see that you've tried to uh, incorporate as much as possible, like you said just now. Uh, but the problem is that uh, you know the one of his strengths, or rather the key strength, was the simplicity in his design or anything he did, and the clarity. He wrote very clearly. He spoke very clearly, and uh, even his designs were very clear and simple. So, uh, I fo found it very difficult to understand your plan because I did not see a proper plan with black walls and white spaces or something, but I found it extremely difficult to understand what this proposal was, which part was open to sky and which part was enclosed. Um, so I had real problems understanding uh, the proposal in a very short time. So um, I think uh, your presentation should also focus on how to make your drawings readable Views are not the only thing, but you know, even your plans and sections have to be extremely clear and readable. So um, that would have helped us. I'm sure even he is having a problem understanding what exactly was done, uh, because even these part plans were not helping us because we don't have a key plan to know where it is, or you know, maybe I can't see it. But uh, uh, these were not really helping us to understand the proposal. And um, there were too many things happening. Um, Maybe you wanted to show everything, but too many things happening. So if you could keep it very simple, you know, and uh, this is not only for Korea's memorial, but any project you do in future, if you try to uh, maintain that simplicity and clarity in whatever you're doing, it will definitely work. Otherwise, you will get entangled into all those things. And, you know, I mean, uh, the person who's actually looking at it will be even more confused. So um, just keep that in mind, I would say. Um, this is the last presentation, right? So, yeah. So I would I would say that what was commendable about the project is that you all flew into this project from the sea. Yeah, in your in your animation. So I think that was an inversion of others who were seeing the project from the land. And I think you flew in and then threw us back into the sea, you know. And that that kind of fascinated me. So there is one fact that in a reflection we're not only looking out, but there is another inversion of looking in again. So at all that, I would say even the research that you'll have done, extensive research of Charles Curry, if you could take it on, I don't know if your school opens it up, but if you could take it on now to make it as a taxonomy of Charles Curry, you know, rather than a memorial, uh, a taxonomy. And you create this taxonomy and your understanding of that taxonomy, I think through this competition, it will benefit a lot of other schools because the extent of your uh, trying to grapple with the elements, you know, whether it's non-building, whether it's void, whether it's at the elemental level, I would say has been uh, rigorous enough search for a final year. You know, there's, there's been that whole... Having said that, 
again coming back to the next, you know. Uh, let's say Sachin said clarity or simplicity, you know, you know, and abstraction. Now these are three words which kind of haunt the modern architect, you know, they haunt. Because every time you try to abstract, every time you try to simplify, you think you have lost out on some detail. That, that's where the grab, it's not a simple process because every time you remove something and you want to abstract, someone may say it's so reductive that it doesn't address the vibrancy and the celebration of the whole, you know. And to that extent, probably Charles Correa was one of the few architects who had, who courageously engaged with color as against a lot of the first generation architects. I thought I'd bring it up because he engaged with color. He engaged with artifact. He engaged with, in Jawar Kala Kendra, with, uh, with a whole diverse range of elements. Now that's a very, very uh, complex task because um, if I, if the architect at that moment doesn't situate the detail. Now what do I mean by situate the detail? It means that there is, when I am meandering through a city, let's assume a city, when I'm meandering through a city, a good city still has legibility. Yeah, if I'm going through Jaipur or let's say Florence or how does it get legibility? It gets legibility in the sense that the monuments and the dome, let's say in Florence, the dome of the four domes of those churches give you a sense of the four quarters of the church. So even when I'm in the labyrinth, I have a reference that brings clarity on the overall structure. Yeah? So there is an overall structure which one sees, which allows the human or citizen to meander versus let's say the labyrinth of uh, you know these i don't know there are, there must be enough of these new games where you get into a labyrinth and someone shoots and jumps and you know all those kind of other labyrinths in the metaverse which don't give you clues which don't give you anchors but they're just a set of paths that run through and that kind of a labyrinth can become a uh, uh, scary you know unless that can that can be an intent of an architect to generate fear but i don't think that was the case here but those kind of labyrinths disorient, you know, because of the detail, not because of excess detail, because most of the detail are presented at the same level of, uh, uh, same level of power. So an architect would say, okay, I have this level of detail to present. How do I subdue the detail, which is going to be a sub part? How do I accentuate the detail that is going to give me the idea of the ritual and the anchoring of reflection? And how do I, uh, so sometimes the detail is taken to such a filigree level that I miss it the first time. I come back the second time and I say, hey, I missed this the second time. And then it's really, you know, uh, if you go to all the shrines and across all religions, you'll see that you can go back you'll see some text, you'll miss the text. So the idea is not to make everything legible at the same time, but the idea is that you come back, return and return. It's like a good film, you know, if a good film is cinematographed well, you would see it, you would say, no, I didn't catch that other part, I'll come back again. Or one song haunts you, one song, and I can become obsessive and return back. That's a separate story, that's not what I'm discussing. I'm saying you come back because the nuance of the detail, the filigree, the large, that you will, you know, make something strong. So I would say here I see a taxonomy, a dictionary. How now does one convert the taxonomy and dictionary into this prioritization of filigree and strength? You know, and I, I think that was the power of Charles Courier. The detail was there. Nobody could say it's reductive and it's just some... Uh, he combined it with a certain sense of clarity where he would accentuate and, you know, take something to a very minor detail which you really need to nuance, know the building, go back. And 
I don't think he was too concerned whether everyone understood what he did. You return the fifth time and you say, oh, that's how he's done the, um, <coughs> you know, that's how he's done the form work or, you know, any of the detail or how it, how the building sat, how it touched the ground. It was, it was an inner reflection to himself. I've seen many of this he didn't even wish to discuss. He didn't even have the urge to discuss. So it was not about doing a building, discussing it with everyone, saying this is the detail. He didn't even have the urge. It was an inner search at one level. So even in that, there's a detailing that he does. You know, There's one that he may convey and a lot more that he would make so incidental and not convey. But if somebody else picked it up and spoke to him, he would, he would be really elated and you can have 10 days of conversation with him after that. If you didn't, you get 10 days of blasting also. So I think one has to know that that's what is the fragility of that balance. You know? So if I can say that this is what my response was to this, that there is an understanding, I can see the elements. Uh, I think in the formulation of the elements and all that, a little more restraint or a balance. And this is really at a professional level. I'm, I'm, I'm discussing as if you all are architects now. This is not a student competition. Uh, all the eight have almost done as if they were young practicing architects to me. So I, I took the liberty to discuss, it's not fair, but I took that liberty to discuss at that level, you know. So if you go back and look at this, create a taxonomy, and then say from this competition there's a taxonomy, I think 450 schools in India will really relook at what is this taxonomy. Then a new game can open up on what do I subdue? What do I accentuate? Where does it situate? Do I replace it? How does it connect with the river? What does it connection with the river mean? You know, why do I look out into the horizon? Why did you fly in from the sea? You know, and that's how the uh, ships were flying in, which Korea often talks about, and the connection with the actual building. Because now this gives you a chance to say it's a memoriam for a profound architect which now exists at one plane. It is a conversation on uh, the architecture of the subcontinent, which is not really related to this site also. Uh, it is also an extension to an existing building, which today is a 20th century uh, heritage monument. So it's a complex project. There are so many layers, you know. So I think where it could have seen more is in the aspect of the location and the extent of the detail. If that could have been controlled or you know, played with, I think there's a great project. This is a great project. The seeds are there. Again, like I would say all eight, take it further if you'll have the time. It's come to that uh, brink. There was a date set. I know there was Diwali. So I'm saying after Diwali. I'm not saying work during Diwali. Uh, after Diwali, if you can take it up, push it, and maybe see what comes out for you all. You know. Thank you very much. If you have some response, you can respond. Thank you so much. Thank you, jury members. Uh, with that, we came to the end of the eight presentations from Mesur, Pune, Vijaywada, Nagpur, Poland, Nasik, Dehradun, Pune again. I think it's been quite interesting, insightful, and uh, most importantly, engaging. Um, like Professor Balsawar mentioned, and uh, in the morning, uh, Henry also mentioned that um, to look at this uh, from the student's perspective, this is uh, beyond the student effort, all of these presentations. They're young practicing architects almost. Uh, of course, all of them have different ways of looking uh, or absorbing the brief and then reflecting in, into a design. Uh, but one thing that I also found common as uh, an onlooker was um, <clears throat> everybody was trying to uh, justify uh, the brief in terms of an intervention, except the sixth entry probably, but everybody was trying to intervene in terms of giving it a product rather than uh, just uh, look at it as a uh, memorial, as a, uh, an intang intangible entity. But uh, all said and done, lovely presentations. Uh, so a round of applause to all eight teams. <laughs> and uh, 
I think uh, the essence of such competitions is uh, not winning or losing. Uh, it is the lesson we take home. Uh, as each one, the audience, the participants, the people who are watching this online, as uh, senior teachers, junior teachers, young designers, everybody has some lessons to take home. And um, I think uh, makes a lot of difference. Uh, that's why I think uh, kudos to TDB for consistently doing this for seven years. And uh, kudos to our jury members who've been here at it since morning after their presentations, patiently listening and commenting over all the uh, Eight entries, thank you very much. Uh, we are going to give you some time uh, to deliberate over the uh, results. So what we are going to do is, uh, it's uh, 4.55. We are going to break off for half an hour. 5.25, we gather here again, 5.25 sharp. We'll try and start the last segment of the evening at 5.25, wherein uh, we will have the official word of thanks, felicitations, and most importantly, and uh, what you would be waiting for, the winner's announcements. So uh, thank you very much. There's tea, coffee arranged. Uh, it might just take five more minutes to set it up, but you can just uh, uh, move around a little and uh, take a refresher until then. Uh, so 5.25, we'll all gather here. Thank you very much for being so patient. Thank you, jury members. See you all in a bit.
इस त्री शिक्षण संस्था डॉक्टर भानुबेन नानावटी कॉलेज ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर फॉर वुमेन पुणे एंड द फाउंडर प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर अनुराग कश्यप ही इज विथ अस एंड एज अ टोकन ऑफ अप्रिसिएशन एंड आर लव फॉर ऑल द पीपल हु बीन इन्वॉल्व विद टी डी बी टूडे वी वॉन्टेड टू एक्सप्रेस अ सेंस ऑफ ग्रैटिट्यूड एंड ऑल्सो अ स्मॉल मेमोरेबलिया नॉट अ बिग गिफ्ट ऑफ समथिंग but something as to cherish about being at mkss so i'm going to in invite dr anurag kashyap on stage here sir please yes um i'll request him to say a few words and then uh, we'll do a formal felicitation of uh, the five people we wish to felicitate here right now and then uh, we will move on to the formal vote of thanks thank you good evening at the outset let me first thank rohan builders for uh, giving us the opportunity to conduct this to provide the space an auditorium for the wonderful competition wonderful concept constituted by sanjay mohit sir and uh, i would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, sohas ji Sohas Lunkar ji, for introducing us to Sanjay Mohit sir, who is now the leading architect of India. I'm personally a fan of his designs, and uh, I also appreciate Rohan Builders for a very important reason that when most of the builders community in in uh, in Pune, at least, let me say. when they were up after mere business and statistics and profit rohan builders introduced the design awareness amongst uh, the punekars uh, with the help of sanjay mohit sir with wonderful designs and now rohan builders is the talk of the town so let me Uh, let us give a big hand to rohan builders for this cause <coughs> sohas and milin they are my friends and they have really done wonderful job including rucha our student ex student <laughs> <laughs> then actually i was supposed to be here in the morning but now let me welcome formally which is uh, pending here since uh, the morning so let me formally welcome uh, sachin akshikar sir and uh, i welcome him and i would like uh, now whatever names i will be taking here and uh, i will be welcoming here we would like to have a long term association with all of you here for the sake of our students okay so sachin uh, akshikar sir durga nand balsavar sir and henry comrie sir so we look forward to have a long term association because these are the um, uh, opportunities now rohan builder constituted uh, this award and it's an opportunity for all of us to come together and get introduced to each other so especially for the sake of my students i request all of you to please be associated on a long term basis we will work out that association and uh, i think i have given uh, enough uh, information about bnca during our lunch and kind enough for uh, giving uh, attention for what whatever information i have given and i also appeal if we get time today after this program we'd like you to personally visit whatever information i have given especially the wonderful digital fab lab first of its kind in india and kepal lab first of its kind in india only two labs are there one is with nid amdavat and the second is with us um, and the world map which shows 52 international collaborations our presence in the world so that we would like uh, i would like you to visit please so with these words i would like uh, mahesh to please uh, arrange the felicitations yes. from bnc side some token i would like to present you with thank you sir uh, i would like to call upon stage uh, swaraj ji lunkard and sanjay ji mohit uh, first uh, who have instituted this uh, 
कॉम्पिटिशन द ड्राइंग बोर्ड सुहास सर संजय सर रुचा प्लीज ज्वाइन अस ऑन स्टेज रुचा इज एन एलुमनाई ऑफ बी एन सी ए ग्रेजुएट ऑफ बी आर्च फ्रॉम बी एन सी ए एंड वी आर रियली प्राउड ऑफ हर बींग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस इनिशिएटिव होल एंड सोलली Uh, and and over okay <laughs> yes Moi sir yes round of applause and I'll, I'll also request uh, all three jury members to join us on stage uh, Sachin Akshikar Durganand ji Balsawar and Henry Comrie The jury has been very kind and patient uh, patient today all day Henry come right on up a plus <laughs> Professor Durganand Balsawar Thank you very much uh, Thank you Kashyap sir can we just have a quick group photos of six of you there yes please Yeah Rucha as well sir <laughs> all of you please Yes <laughs> A group photo please Thank you so much everyone. Thank you Kashyap sir. Now uh before we move on to the last bit of the awards announcement obviously a a very appropriate vote of thanks is due and I'm going to request uh, Rucha Lunkad to come up on stage and present the vote of thanks. Hello, hello everyone. uh i'm really really honored to be here today uh, with some of the finest minds in architecture and uh, during the seven uh, editions of the drawing board a lot of real world challenges have been understood uh, problems have been tackled but most importantly memories have been made i must begin by offering my special mention to all our jurors henry sir sachin sir and durganand sir uh, for giving their time and guidance to all the students your pr presentations were truly a treat to all of us A sincere thanks to all of our ecosystem partners. Sorry, Kashyap sir and Mahesh sir specifically for lending us your support each and every year. Anuj and Shreya uh, for creating wonderful comics for us each year. Uh, Matter for making all these amazing publications that we have uh, each year. And uh, Kedar for this year making some wonderful uh, podcast for us. You guys have really helped us reach and uh, reach. a wider uh, audience uh, this year a uh, special mention to my entire team that is waiting for this <laughs> last vote of thanks uh, my team prajakta vishal praveen ankur chandrashekar sandeep kanchan dipali darshana veena mamta yogesh mangesh and sagar madhushri vinayan alok i'm really grateful to have all of you here and support all of us uh, again uh you guys have really put your heart and soul into all of this a special thanks to shweta and everyone at mind space i wonder how you come up with such amazing briefs each year uh and finally sanjay moe sir and suhas lunkat sir you guys are legends and a true inspiration for so many of us we can't thank you enough for instituting and continuing to be so closely associated with the drawing board competition each year we will forever remain indebted to you thank you
All right. Thank, thank you so much, Rucha. We all thank you as well for doing the honors of presenting the vote of thanks. Uh, before we go on to the awards, uh, a thank you to the IT team and uh, both at BNC and the one working relentlessly since morning to stream this live. Uh, thank you to the broadcasters, the uh, uh, technical help and the photographers, videographers as well. Uh, special thanks to the catering guys. They provided some wonderful food. I, I'm sure you all enjoyed it. So thanks to all the agencies who were involved in making this evening possible, rather the whole day. And uh, we are going to have uh, four awards. So one is uh, the Viewer's Choice Award. Uh, we start with that. So to give away all the awards, I'm going to request uh, all uh, five people who are a while ago on stage to come up again on stage, uh, jury members and Sanjay Mohiji and uh, Swarji Lunkad, uh, could you please be on stage, uh, Sachin sir, uh, Henry Comrie and Durkananji. Okay, whoever the winners are, uh, pl we will give you a card to hold. Uh, that card is a congratulations card. You can leave that back here for the others to use it. So it's sustainable. Meanwhile, you'll get your trophy and the certificate. Don't worry. The, uh, that's we are not taking away. Meanwhile, those who do not get a prize, uh, you already are a finalist and you are a winner by a huge margin because there were about hundreds of entries and you they didn't make it to the top eight. So you making it to, to top eight is quite an achievement. So congratulations on a, all of you and a round of applause. So we move to uh, the Viewer's Choice Award uh, by a huge margin. Uh, they have their uh, networking too strong, uh, actually, uh, because when I first logged in to check uh, who's getting how many votes, they were already leading by double the margin. So uh, the winners are uh, Nimit Bhansari and Ruthwik Suhas Kokadwar from uh, SPA Vijaywada Viewers Choice Award with 625 votes as against the second one with 334 votes. So that sort of uh, uh, distance they won it by. So when we closed the voting, they had 625 votes. Team SPA Vijaywada, Nimit and Ruthwick. Round of applause, guys. You'll have to clap four times at least. So yeah. ahead so that it's for the photograph also easier and recording as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Once you receive your certificate and the book uh, as a gift, could you please also pose with that congratulations placard so that it looks nice in the photograph. <laughs> Lovely. All right then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Team SPA Vijayawada. Yes, waiting for friends to click photos. Thank you very much. Uh, if we move on to the third prize, not going to the first so easily, of course. The third prize winner, uh, I doubt it has happened in the uh, history of TDB. Uh, we are sharing the prize for the third prize unanimously by the jury's uh, what? So the third prize is shared by, I don't know, yeah. I really have no clue how to pronounce this name. We'll still pronounce it. I wish they were online here. Uh, Michelle and Sebastian from Poland. So round of applause to them. <laughs> and with them, Kashish Singh and Shubhanshi Anand from Wadiyar Center for Architecture, Mysuru. Kashish and Chubanshi from Wadia Center for Architecture, Mysuru, third joint prize for TDB 2022. Let there be some excitement, guys.
Yeah, could you pose with that congratulations? Yes. Why not? <laughs> yes. Lovely. If we had their friends sitting here, they would clap louder thinking, wow, they'll get some prize money, which will be for a treat. Don't worry, we can ask for a treat from them here. Yes. Th congratulations, Kashish Subhanshi. Thank you. The, so that's the shared prize between uh, Mysore and Poland. Wow, lovely. Uh, the second prize this evening, uh, they sure be treating us, Nimit and Ruthwick from SPA Vijayawada. Catch hold of them when they come out, okay? I was watching the YouTube live and their friends were hooting for them on the YouTube live chat also. I was like, wow, some influence Vijayawada has. Nimit and Ruthwick from SPA Vijayawada, round of applause guys. Second prize winner here at the TDB 2022. Thank you very much. Make sure your social media is on fire now. Yeah. And uh, I would mention this right away because Prajakta tells me, make sure everybody knows this. All books are signed by the three jury members. So that's a prize position. Years later, you can put it up for some Amazon antique price selling saying, three greats have signed it, buy it off me. <laughs> so the winners. TDB 2022, anybody wants to guess? Uh, we are equal, equally bad at guessing, let's forget it. The winners TDB 2022 by unanimous decision, Ketan Gupta and Vaibhavi Dhiman from DIT Dehradun. Many congratulations, guys. Uh, and I stay nearby, so we can go for a drink together, maybe. <laughs> Ketan and Vaibhavi from DIT Dehradun, School of Architecture and Planning and Design, DIT University. The winners at TDB 2022. Presented by Rowan Builders and Mindspace Architects. <laughs> Lovely, you can smile. Yeah. I'm smiling more than them thinking I'll get a treat maybe. Lovely, congratulations. Uh, and I'll request you to remain on stage. Can the other winners also quickly join in so that we do a gr group photograph? Are you certificate leak away? Flaunt it. And uh, all the other shortlisted entrants also be ready to come on the stage after this photograph. We'll do a family photograph as well. We have all possible combinations of winners now. Two girls, two guys, one guy, one girl, all set. All smiles. Round of applause. Lovely. I'll request uh, the finalists also to join on stage for a group photograph. All, the, all those of you who presented, please join on stage. Teams from Pune, team from Nagpur, Nasik. Yes, could you all move a little ahead so that it's uh, easy for the photograph as well. 
Maybe somebody wants to sit down or something. It's easier. It looked nice also. Maybe some of you can sit down. All right, smiles, yes, good. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. You all are a winner. Please take the message home and the lessons home as well. I request uh, the jury members to remain on stage, uh, and Moe sir and Suhas sir to remain on stage, please. We are doing a family photo again. Rohan family, could we have the Rohan family on stage quickly? and the Mindspace family. Madhapa sir, Shweta, Avi, all of you. Yes, ma'am, could you please join as well on stage? Yes. Of course, Rohan family is everything, huh? tech team and everyone, everyone, everyone. They are all one single big family. They were clapping the loudest when Rucha was saying thank you. Yes, Team Mindspace and Team Rohan. All the guys who put up the show. So a round of applause for all of them. Any event is most importantly a joint effort, a team effort, and has to be acknowledged that way. So good to see all of you together, yes. We can clap until they click a photograph, yes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, all right, they're done. Okay, thank you. Sorry, one more last photograph remains, and if I don't do it, I'll be get beaten up while going home. BNCA volunteers, would you please quickly run onto the stage without stamping me? The student volunteers, yeah, I'll join in. BNCA volunteers, would you please join in on stage? Uh, they've been the hands and legs for me to work around this morning till now. <laughs> so yes, all of the volunteers. Somebody was asking me, are you going to go to your college? I said, no, we don't have any work. Everything is done by the girls. We don't need guys, yeah. <laughs> all right, could you just sit down as well, guys, and move a little bit. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Anyway, we are short. <laughs> no, no, sit down. Please, some of you, couple of you go that side. All right, good. Leave some space for me to join in. But yeah, one photograph with just the volunteers, please. Let me join the photograph there. So thank you everyone. Don't forget to follow the drawing board on Instagram. Follow all our ecosystem partners. And I'll see you all at the drawing board 2023 where more, with more number of audience, more entries, and more stories to tell. Thank you very much. Good night.